for main engine start. We can hear our main engine start. Hello and welcome to the SSL Gold Cup qualifying series. It is the last round we are in today. It is the Asian African group we are going to fight in. My name is Thomas Bjorn Luthi and I'm going to be your host today, but I'm not going to be all alone because beside me, one of the SSL experts is here, Jan Dorset. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone, wherever you are in the world, whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to this final qualifying session uh, that we'll be having today and it's going to be a good one uh, we haven't seen these conditions yet and we are very excited uh, for you guys to be able to check this out and that's also meaning that we're going straight into the races after a small presentation so let's uh, go in and see today's um, match part of the qualifying series you can see we are in round number five we have group four, seven and group eight and both of them are the african asian groups and group seven is only having three teams with us today china couldn't make it to come here so india um malaysia and then south africa is in this group and that's where we're going to start today group eight uh, south korea singapore thailand and ukraine ukraine come in here because of another thing coming in and then you can see all the teams who already qualified they are with yellow they're going into the next round Jan. and the next round is the finals in bahrain Yes, that's right, Thomas. The next round is the finals in Bahrain. On the left-hand side of your screen right there, you're seeing the 32nd of the finals. And that's what all these teams are qualifying themselves to get themselves into this finals match board. You see here some of the other teams are already qualified for the 16th, 8th, and quarterfinals. And that has to do with their world ranking on the SSL ranking. So today there's a lot of fight for it's the day before the golden day there's two races coming up and here we have the race schedule we're starting with two races in group number seven so we're actually going to see a close close battle race four and race five in the first group and then we're going to have a small break where there's a shift of uh, of teams where group eight is coming in so i can just say to you the next five to six hours we're going to have a lot of fun on the water and with that, this said let's compare the teams we have here in the first round the first races this is the group coming in and jan you are our expert you know these guys quite well we have uh, three teams with us today yeah we have three teams uh right here that'll be competing there the first one's out on the water uh, we have team indian the indian tigers the ssl ranked number 40 and today team weight is going to be a very big deal because like we said we have uh conditions we haven't seen and that means that we have actually currently 16 knots of wind out on the water mm. our second team is team Team Malaysia, the monsoons, they are SSL ranked number 30. Their team weight is 721 kilos. And the last, but definitely not the last team, uh, the South Africa team Ubuntu. They have SSL ranked number 43, weighing in at 715 kilos. And with those things you said, and as Jan said, the weight, let's see how the score is right now, because you talked about the weight, Jan, to hear it, but before going into deep that, South Africa is in the lead with seven points, Malaysia with seven points, and Team India with four points. Today, they're going to raise for three points for victory. It's two points for second and one point for third. So Team India really needs to go up in speed and win these two races today, or at least get second places to have a chance on the golden day. Or Malaysia and South Africa can keep India out of it and then actually qualify to the next round of Bahrain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, today we'll be racing race number four and race number five. So two races uh, for uh, for these teams today. And uh, like you said, India needs to really uh, to step up their game in order to be able to come back. They still have a chance. They're still in it. Uh, they're three points behind right now. But let's see uh, how what happens out on the water. Let's see what happens on the water. And now let's have an interview with Team Malaysia. Okay, the first two days it was going well for us. We get uh, two seconds and one bullet. So, so far so good. We are, we are top tight point with South Africa. So today is the day, big day for us, two races. So we hope we go going out there and have a fun and try to win some race. So the plan is we try to make it simple. We try to win the starting. Try to keep our boat fast as possible. Try to, I mean, try to stay ahead of them and play the shift well. So yeah, that's the strategy, and let's see today. <laughs> 
I think the SSI pro, uh, Gold Cup program was very good for a country like us. Uh, I think we can promote more sailing in Malaysia. So with this live coverage today and tomorrow, I think more people in Malaysia will know sailing. They will understand more about sailing and I hope there are more people to join sailing in Malaysia. So And also I hope SSI Gold Cup can be one of the biggest uh, uh, comp competition uh, in sailing. Yeah. And what we like about Team Malaysia, let's have their lineup. Is he said this is a huge chance for Malaysia to go in to showcase sailing, and here we have the team, Jan. Yeah, that's right. We've got uh, a pretty a team that has got uh, some uh, Olympic experience. Uh, we see at the helm here we have. Uh, Kairul Nizam uh, at the helm. He's been three times to the Olympics. He was in uh, London, Rio, and uh, Tokyo. A little bit further forward, uh, just underneath, the only woman that's sailing uh, on this boat currently, uh, Nuraisha. Uh, she is. Uh, she's been uh, in, at the Tokyo Olympics in the 470 class, and we have another Olympian, uh, a youth Olympian. He was uh, seventh in uh, the 2014 lasers, and that's RC. Asman, who is the floater on the top right hand side of your screen. Yeah, and when you're lo looking at this team coverage, then let's jump into Team India coming in. And we really love that all these teams have these great partners supporting them. And here we have a great team. I met some of them at Kila uh, two weeks ago, and they have just been here for a week. Yeah, they've just been here for a week. Yeah, they've been practicing. We saw them uh, out on the water earlier uh, this week uh, for the first uh, three races. On uh, as a tactician, uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Naktar Johal. Uh, he was at the Beijing Olympics. Uh, middle of the boat uh, grinder on the top is uh, Vishnu Saravanan. He was at the uh, Tokyo Olympics in uh, the laser class. And we have uh, his sister, which is sailing on the boat, Ramya Saravanan, who is is uh, also a laser um, a laser sailor in the uh, radio class, or it's called Ilka 6 right now. She's on the bottom right as the floater. Wow, and with this team coming up here, then let's see the last team of the first two races today, Team South Africa. And um, I actually had a small talk with them this morning. They're really looking forward to come into these windy conditions because they're normally racing on open water like the other teams. Yeah, we've got a, quite a team here on Team South Africa. We start off with the tactician on the back of the boat. He was uh, seventh at the America's Cup. Um, and uh, he was uh, sailing right along with uh, Ian Ainsley, which is uh, at the helm right next to him here. Ian, uh, so uh, in the America's Cup. But also, Ian has been three times to the Olympics. He was in uh, Barcelona, Atlanta, and Sydney in the Olympics. Also beneath him, uh, we have Mr. Blackenberg. He uh, has been uh, twice to the Olympics, the Olympics in the laser class. He was ninth in the Sydney Olympics and fifth in the 2002 World Championship, laser world championship. Quite some experienced team we have. And um, with all that said, Jan, now we're going to the most important part, the national anthem. Let's have the national anthem of Team Malaysia.
Wow, <laughs> seeing Team Malaysia is so proud of being there. And one team that's very proud also of being here is Team India. And then last team we're going to see in today's groups in the first two races is Team South Africa. Wow, Jan, just seeing these national anthems, see how proud the team are. And when you were walking around them and you're talking with them all that, you can feel how proud they are representing their nation. Yeah, they're definitely, you know, very proud to be here. Uh, they've seen uh, what's been going on in the last couple of weeks. They know uh, that uh, they're going to have to uh, get their step their game up. And uh, they're definitely all trying to get qualified, you know, for this uh, first time ever. Uh, qualifying session, uh, first time ever that will be uh, in Bahrain uh, for the SSL Gold Cup, and this is really, you know, it's a really big deal. It's a big deal for everybody, and especially for for the teams here this week. Yeah. And with that said, let's hear Team South Africa what they have to say after bit today's races. Yeah, so far after two days, we very satisfied. Uh, we have a very good uh, spirit on the boat and uh, leading us on the water is Mark Sadler, the tactician, doing a great job of keeping us all calm and uh, going the same direction. So we're really happy learning every day and great competition. Yeah, I think the you know these boats are quite a handful for inexperienced teams as such. Um, like they're not used to handling these boats. So you got to not drop the spinnaker in the water, that's the first aim, and get nice tidy roundings. Um, yeah, and then like yesterday, we, it looked an easy win for us, but it was just the first cross, you know, if we were half a length less strong, we wouldn't have won. So it's small margins, the teams are really good that we compete against, and it's oh, it's lovely to sail against them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's SSL Gold Cup is a massive opportunity for the guys in South Africa. Um, it's and I imagine the other countries that are competing here at this event, um, it's uh, no way for a South African average guy to come and compete unless they already have a status of a international profile. Um, so it's a it's a massive opportunity, and uh, yeah, we would never be able to do this without the SSL. So it's it's really great. I really feel so proud of hearing what he's saying about the SSL Gold Cup. SSL Gold Cup is the football World Cup, but just in sailing. And these teams are fighting to go to the World Cup finals. But before we're going to talk more about that, let's go to Rachel on water and hear her. How is it out there today? 
Jonas, hello Jan, hello everybody watching from all over the world. There is a good representation of the world out here today for this round. We go from Asia to Africa to Europe uh, and they're all here today on Lake Neuchâtel with a beautiful day. So this is, I think, the four minutes flag up. Five. Um, it's a beautiful day, like I was saying, La Biz is blowing, so the classic wind from the north, and it's blowing strong, well above 12 knots. Uh, there's not one cloud in the sky, apart from maybe some fog up if you look up in the north but i think it's dissolving slowly and um we see the weekend uh, sailors so the um local sailors out on the water meaning that you know they know that the conditions are going to be are going to stay like this throughout the day so this is what we hope for this is what uh, the teams have come for and it's going to be a big day wavy choppy it's not going to be easy for the teams out, out here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rachel. That's really nice to hear that the conditions are with us today, Jan. But let's uh, explain a little bit about the race format. Before here, we're just seeing this is our tracking. It's called the 3D view, where we can see where the boats are. They're preparing for the start. But what are they preparing for? They're preparing for to race uh, what we call an LA2. They're going to race with heavy sails, Jan. And then they're going to race upwind to a top mark and downwind to a gate mark and then upwind once again. And this battle they're going to have in here, you can see they're just preparing for this stuff. So, Jan, you know a lot about this sailing. What are they preparing for? What, what are they testing? We have been seeing on the graphics, we have data in studio, they're racing above the starting line, downwind, and then now they're just going around here, we have to race. Yeah, here map. we go. So this yeah. is the uh, course that we'll be looking at here. You follow the little arrow. So they're going uh, twice around. They're going up to the windward mark and then to an offset mark. That's why there are two marks at the top. They then go back down through a gate right there. They can choose either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, depending on what their tactic or strategy is. They go then back around those two marks up at the top and down to the finishing line. Yeah. And just to have it one more time, you're just seeing what they're doing when they're going up. When if you new to sailing and you're following the team and, and you, you're actually cheering on your na national team, then you have to remember one thing that when you're going upwind, they is zigzagging. They're not just sail straight up against the wind like a motorboat. They need to zigzag what we're going to call tacking and when they're going da downwind, they're going to do what we're calling jibing. Yeah, and they're also zigzagging on their way down. But uh, Thomas here, we are, as you were saying earlier, we are in the starting procedure right now. Uh, we saw the race committee boat earlier with those two flags on there. The first one, when uh, Raquel was speaking, was uh, the five minute flag. And right next to it is a flag that is uh, blue with a white square. And that lets us know what the rule is going to be in the last minute. Right now, we have two minutes and 10 seconds left until the start. And we have everybody. There we go. Those are the flags right there. So, uh, the, and the orange flag, that is symbolizes the actual starting line between the race committee boat that we see here and the pin boat, which is slightly further to the right-hand side of your screen. We don't see it right now, but that, that doesn't really matter. What's important is all the teams, there's the pin boat right there. So that's the starting line between those two orange flags. Now we have all the teams that are close to the starting line, and that's really important. We have seen teams that weren't here on time yes. and cost them dearly in the previous qualifying sessions. 16 knots of wind. It's sunny out there. No clouds to steer after, so it's all about the feeling of the boat and feeling of the wind and watching for those waves on the water. Here we see two teams coming in. Uh, uh, we can see some uh, green jerseys out there. Uh, they're racing against each other. It looks like it's um, looks Malaysia like South and Africa. South Africa and the opposite side, India, is coming in. They are battling for position and there are some rules, right-of-way rules, which side to come from. And right now, they're getting ready to lay off. Here, look here, in a couple of seconds, we'll see that uh, P flag, the middle one, go down and that symbolizes uh, that we are within uh, the, the minute. There it is, it just went down. So now we have one minute left to the start. And this is really the moment where the teams are now battling for positions and setting themselves up. Um, this is really an important uh, time right now because uh, this basically lets your opponents know where you want to get a start and, and how you want to set yourself up with 40 seconds left before the start. 
Yeah, and let's see if we can see the boats because this is the battle. All three boats approaching the starting line. On the inside, we have Team South Africa. In the middle, we have Team um, uh, Malaysia and then India on the outside. And India can close the gap, but if they're coming too fast in to the starting line, they'll do a full start. So let's see if they can slow it down. It That's looks right. Like that they're trying to slow everybody down right there. They have a very powerful position. Remember, the leeward boat has the right of way, especially before the starting, uh, uh, starting gun goes, they can really luff. Here we go, South Africa, which is closest to us, they're really getting some speed. Oh. So India has blocked everybody off, but they're starting really slowly. As a matter of fact, they're not the first ones to cross the line. It looks like Malaysia will be starting across the line first, but it, I, I kind of have the feeling South Africa right there has the most amount of speed. Yeah, and actually it looks like they had a very slow start, South Africa, but, uh, but they were in distance for it. It's because they need speed to start this one. When you see normal sailing with other thingies, they're almost going to the start starting line and then they stop their boat and release the sails and then they can start on the spot but these big boats the SSL 47 you need to speed up to have a great start I know it's saying that the uh, Malaysia is in the lead uh, South Africa in second India in third but it looks like South Africa has the best start and they are controlling the two other boats right now here we have to start again you can almost see it, India losing momentum they were too fast at the starting line and well timed by the Malaysia, but see South Africa coming with speed. Great yeah, start. that's really what you want, because right now what's going to be happening is there's going to be a drag race. And you see how South Africa has room underneath them. So what they can do is they can bear away and, and, and really get their speed up in order to stay on top of their opponents and, and uh, you know, start to... Uh, uh, st start to be able to cast a wind shadow on them. So yeah. right now we're looking at a drag race. Uh, remember that we've just uh, started uh, this race. Um, so let's uh, let's see what's happening. And it looks like uh, looks like all three boats right there, as you can see, are very very close. Yeah, they're close to each other. But th the interesting part of sailing is it's like a game of chess. Right now the game of chess is saying that South Africa is covering up the two other boats. The two other boats they cannot zigzag or check to the opposite side they cannot change course because south africa is actually pressuring them to continue the course so the first team to to to, to do the course change could be south africa or they will pressure them all the way to the left hand side quite interesting what they're doing because we have some quite some rules out there rule number 10 right away rules starboard port side and we will go more into the deep of that yeah that's right if we look right here the two boats that are uh, sort of on on the upper side so malaysia in the middle and then india over on the left well, uh, if Malaysia were to attack right now, they would be on a port tack, and therefore they would not have the right of way over uh, South uh, South Africa. And therefore, they have two options: either they tack again, which would be useless because they just waste a lot of speed, or they'd have to duck behind. So right now, even though uh, they're all you know next to one another, South Africa right now is sort of leading the dance. They are leading the dance right now, but the teams are so close to each other. You can see the measurement in the top left corner, two meters, five meters towards the top mark. They're racing upwind. They're going to do four legs. This is leg number one. India couldn't be in a worse position. They want to win this race. They want to win this regatta. And right now they are caught on the inside of the two other boats, the two other teams. And they just need to keep India in the last position when they're finishing here in both races because then they almost qualified into the finals. So India, they need to find some solutions here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, India with three points behind right now. It's, I mean, this is the team to, to be watching. We The two teams that you're seeing, uh, you know, South Africa on your left, Malaysia in the middle right there, uh, they are tied for points currently. And uh, it looks uh, like if they keep on uh, getting out in front, they'll be qualifying themselves. Um, so in order for us to sort of uh, have a race here, we need to see India put in a really good race. Yeah, and today we are talking about before going uh, on the water here, while we are going uh, into the South African boat here, you can see how they are relaxing, <laughs> lying over the side. It's not because it's sunny. It's not because they're relaxing. What are they actually doing, Jan? Because there's quite some wind pressure out there, 15 knots of wind. Yeah, that's right, Thomas. I mean, they're definitely not lizarding or eating ice cream out there. You know, uh, they're hiking as hard as they can. And uh, it's, uh, you know, they're trying to keep that boat flat. If that boat is flat, 
then the, 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 the sail is going to be straighter up and it's going to catch more wind. If it catches more wind, it goes faster. And it's just, you know, it's a, it's a catch-22. You, you really need to, to have that boat um, flat in order to be able to go fast. And the faster you go, the more you can point into the wind and the faster you get to the windward mark. And talking about speed, right now we see Timinje is taking the lead. They are hiking much better, having also more weight on the boat than the rest of the team. So very good made by India. And they were also the heaviest team uh, in, in today's races. I know it's 20 kilos, but 20 kilos means something in these wind conditions. You can almost see how they speed it up, they change the angle a little bit, because these boats, when we have such a high breeze, they sail around 35 to 32 degrees upwind to have the best VMG, the best angle towards the mark. And when it's lighter wind, 45 degrees. And it looks like India is having that much better, but they are still caught, so they cannot just tack in front of the other boats. Then they will be caught in rule number 10, port side. Yeah, starboard. it looks kind of as though India right now, we're still in this drag race. So here goes Malaysia. Now, it looks as though India, yeah, India is casting a wind shadow on Malaysia. Oh. And we were talking about this earlier. Malaysia is going to tack and has to dive oh. behind South Africa. But now South Africa has decided to tack. Now this is very, very interesting. Uh, this means that South Africa actually has uh, an advantage right here because they are casting a windward wind shadow. So this is a little bit complicated, but right now, don't get me wrong, South Africa right here is in a very strong position to take out Malaysia, to be able to luff. If Malaysia is going to start falling behind South Africa, they're going to have to tack again. So really, uh, Malaysia is sort of stuck between India, getting ping-ponged around back and forth. And we have another rule in sailing. You can almost see it here. It's called the rule of the overlap. These boats are not overlap right now. But if um, the Malaysian team is getting a little bit closer to South Africa team, then they are overlap. And it's meaning that the boat on the leeward side, the side where the wind is leaving the sails, has to ride away and can laugh, as you said. But I'm actually curious why South Africa made a tack going with Malaysia in this case, because either they had too much room so Malaysia could have the right course, and then they need to tack away because they had to ride away already. Well, I think that uh, what's happening is that there's a sort of a right-hand shift, or, or, or the wind is, is a slightly more um, turning towards the right. It, for me, I mean, the only thing that makes sense is that uh, South Africa wanted to go to the right-hand side, and they just waited for that opportunity. Now, they knew that if, um, if, if, uh, if Malaysia were to go behind them and they would tack afterwards, they would be in that unfavorable position. You see Malaysia right there? We see them perfectly well. What's happening right now is they're in their wind shadow. Look at Malaysia. They're just going to keep bearing down. They're just going to slide down behind South Africa. And uh, they're going to have to tack at one point or another. They can't stay there in that wind shadow. That's exactly why South Africa tacked first and make sure they were in that strong position. But it's a game of chess out there on the water, and right now it couldn't be a better game for Team India because Malaysia and South Africa started to battling out and leaving Team India all by themselves. Uh, speaking with Johel before we were going on the water, he said, hey, the first two days, yeah, we had some challenges because we have not been able to practice that much. We only have practiced last week on these boats, and we are not, uh, this is the first time the team are sailing together. But today we are trying to race our own race, see if we can stay away from the fight with the two others. And I have to say, they're doing gr quite some job here, staying away from the fight. You can almost see the distance here on the graphic. But the battle we are watching right now is South Africa versus Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, remember, the point is to, you know, to win the war and not just the battle. So if these two are battling it out, it's leaving a whole door open for India to be able to, uh, to come in there. And, uh, and that's really what they want. So right now, India has got to be really focused on uh, you know getting their speed up there and catching up and being and staying out in front as uh, as leaders right now as uh, as we'll see right you know we'll have Malaysia I'm guessing they're just they're barely hanging in there which uh, they're doing a great job because the position they're in is a really a difficult one but for them to be able to stay in that position I, it seems to me like everybody wants to go to the right hand side of uh, of the track of the um, yeah of the race course, of the and race we can course, see here you. Team India how they are hiking up. 
they have one advantage if we're talking about the hard breeze and everything. They are a little bit heavier. You can also see see on the on the on the, the sailors, they're a little bit bigger than the two other teams. So today it might be an advantage for them. It, but again, it's all about boat handling. It's not all about weight and everything. You also need to handle that boat quite well. But hiking yeah. out like mm -hmm. this is giving them a big bigger wind absolutely. pressure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're head they're the heaviest team right now out there. Um and uh, that's really making them be able to go fast before they were at a 45 meter lead now they're at 62 so they are uh, they're getting out in there now remember now this is obviously an advantage to the uh, windward uh, on the uh, you know going upwind but uh, we are going to be in for quite a spectacle I assume as soon as we start seeing these boats uh, go downwind and uh, put the spinnakers up uh, it should be uh, very very exciting and uh, if you know, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm really looking forward to these downwinds. We should have some, some great images as well. Uh, we'll have the boats uh, surfing, planing. Um, uh, really exciting. Really exciting to see this. <laughs> We've been waiting for this for so long. If you guys could see Jan's eyes here in the studio, they are like shiny, like a baby <laughs> boy. <laughs> really looking forward to open that present coming in. But one thing we also need to look into is uh, we he heard Ian Aslin saying, hey, it's all about this spinnaker today. And one of the spinnaker issues is not dropping in the water when you're dropping it, and also launch it correctly, especially in these hard wind conditions. Until now, they've been launching the spinnaker in lighter wind conditions, meaning that today it's going to be much, much harder for them. That's right, exactly, and that's exactly what he said on that pre-race interview uh, right there. Here we go, there's Malaysia attacking over, yeah. so they fell behind uh, South Africa. This lasted quite a while in there, um, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, they they finally had to tack, uh, and uh, so yeah, so they're looking at another couple tacks uh, to try to get in there, uh, as they're getting uh, closer and closer to that windward mark. Yeah, man, and it's it's I have to say it's a pretty hard upwind lake for Team Malaysia. They are lighter team. They got caught behind uh, South Africa, and also they need to tack away early from rest of the fleet where they need to bear away behind South Africa. Uh, but South Africa followed them and covered them up. So now India, they are in the lead. South Africa, they are looking like going into second when they're coming to the top, mark, top mark. And Malaysia, they will, yeah, maybe 100 meters behind, but 100 meters in these wind conditions is nothing. A small mistake with that spinnaker, and they're back in the race. Yeah, I remember, I mean, uh, <laughs> M Malaysia, huh? the, 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 the Tigers, uh, as, as they call themselves, um, uh, you know, that uh, part of the tactics of the Tigers, right, is to stay behind and then just to pounce on your opponent as soon as you can. So maybe they're, they're setting themselves up here in a very strategic move to be able to, uh, to wait until somebody in front of them, uh, you know, uh, has an incident or messes up and then they can just uh, pounce on their opponent and, and take over. Uh, in any case, let's let's hope uh, let's hope that they can actually get back into it. But uh, we're coming here. We're getting closer and closer to the windward mark. We're about 320 meters away, 300 meters away, um, and uh, so we'll get to this uh, windward mark, and then they're going to bear away and go to the offset mark, where they will have uh, time to be able to uh, start getting their spinnakers out, and then we'll see how the what the hoist happens. It's really going to be all about teamwork. Uh, right now, it's just been a drag race to get to this first mark, and it looks like India uh, currently is doing a great job being out in front. And if you look at these two boats, India in the left side, or South Africa, they are outside of the ley line, tacking towards the mark. You can see the mark there. India approaching the mark. It's the yellow mark. You can see the, the yellow buoy there. That's uh, mark one, the, the top mark. Then they will round that one, going to the offset mark on the opposite side. And now you can see uh, Rachel, I don't know if you are up there. How does it look in, in these uh, map roundings at the moment? Well, it certainly looks good for Team India. It's the first time in this race they are crossing the, la the, the top mark ahead of the fleet. So, I mean, I can see they're happy. And I think these are their conditions because they're certainly a very heavy team. The big guys out there, uh, starting with the captain, Joao, is a very big fin sailor. Um, the conditions are amazing, as often it happens on Lake Neuchâtel on this race course. Up at the top mark, uh, it's, uh, there's a lot more pressure than down at the gate. Um, and what I see now is Team India getting ready for uh, hoisting the Jenneker. 
and um, maneuvering, I have to say, these past few days haven't been the best asset for Team India. So I'm really checking out if they're getting better. And it looks like everything is going smooth. Yeah, it's not it's not ready yet, but yeah, they did a, they did a well maneuver. So they're keeping their margin over Team South Africa, who is now rounding the offset and closing the fleet. We have Team uh, Malaysia dressed like a ti like tiger. It looks like they're tiger on board, and uh, no, everything is uh, uh, happy out here. Uh, the wind is blowing strong and stronger, and um, and we are seeing also kite surfers wing foil so it means it's really blowing and it's going to keep blowing like this throughout the day i hope yeah. thank you rachel great observation but jan now we are going in here in studio we can see malaysia they actually managed to win meters by tacking to the opposite side and then do a double tack towards the top mark and now they they launch the spinnaker just behind team south africa so this couldn't be better for team india or how do you look into it yeah, I mean, exactly. Just like Rachel said, um, you know, right now uh, India did a did a, a good uh, good job hoisting uh, their Jenniker and uh, as as they're going back down. So uh, really, what uh, South Africa needs to do right now is it would be to attack India, but uh, it looks more like uh, they are going to be attacked uh, by the Tigers. But now we are looking into some very, very important tactics. It's the angle towards the wind and when they're getting the wind pressure. Team India sailing 10.2 knots. Team South Africa sailing 10.8 knots. Team Malaysia sailing 10.6 knots of speed. And what does this mean? This means that right now Team South Africa is speeding up but they are sailing maybe a longer distance towards the mark because when we are watching uh, the meters up there, they are longer distance away from the from the gate mark. Yeah, they're a longer distance away, but you know, right now they're, they're not so much looking at, at the distance to the gate mark and, and things like that. They're more worried about their opponents right now, you know, trying to, uh, like we said, they're trying to come back and ambush them. So uh, really, um, right, remember, we're not even halfway through this this first race. There's two races that they need to do. So they, they really need to stay focused, work on their speed, and, and making sure that they fend off any attacks that are coming from behind. And fend off even attacks coming from behind. And it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see this battle because they are jiving downwind. And uh, when they're jiving downwind, we can see, uh, see how they will fight for it. Um, but India, they are really going into the lead, but according to our data, they are sailing a, a, a smaller angle towards the wind, where the other ones is opening more up for the wind. They are sailing faster, but India is sailing more straight towards the ley lines. They cannot sail straight down to the gate mark because it's an asymmetric uh, uh, spinnaker they have here. So yeah, that's right. They can't sail straight down because otherwise, uh, that's why we call them Jennikers, is because uh, they, they, they're attached at the front of the boat. And um, if they go straight down down with the wind on a, on a run, then uh, that, that uh, Jenniker wouldn't be flying anymore. It would, um, so, so basically what they have to do is, yes, they have to sort of zigzag on, on their way down. Um, they can get quite close to, to being on a run, especially when there's a lot of wind like today. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and so this was what makes it interesting. And now we're looking at all the teams. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we saw them going up on the right-hand side, uh, favoring the right-hand side uh, as they were going up. So tactically speaking, they should be uh, sailing on the left-hand side. And that's sort of what they're doing right now. Everybody's cruising down on that left-hand side. Now, let's explain a little something here. When, when we're talking about the right-hand side and the left-hand side of the race course, it's always as you're looking into the wind. So even if we're going downwind, like they are right now, they are sailing on the left-hand side. Uh, even though I, I guess if you were on the boat, it would sort of be on the right-hand side that you're sailing. But uh, we call it the left. Otherwise, it just gets too confusing and no one knows what we're talking about. And while saying all this, we see Team India is jiving in towards uh, the middle now. They are a little bit early jiving. Malaysia is going to follow them, going to jive in also. But South Africa has continued their way to the left-hand side right now. They, they are trying to find some wind pressure. So right now we see South Africa, they will win momentum in India, but will they lose on the long term because they are going closer and closer to the shoreline. And when we have such a windy condition as we have here today, 
is the wind then stronger at the shoreline or inside the middle of the race course? Well, there, there's a lot of things. Uh, it won't really make a big difference in terms of getting closer to the shoreline like we've seen thermic conditions in the past. In the middle of the race course, you're going to have bigger waves, so that could be an advantage if you can surf them. Another thing here, the big question is, now does South Africa keep going to the left-hand side to take an, a tactical advantage because they will be sailing less distance or are there or it does uh, or do they do like Malaysia and they come back to the center and they make sure that they're not leaving India getting out on their own so right now there's a bunch of different tactics that they can uh, decide to do and we're seeing a, a whole bunch of different stuff uh, obviously uh, India not taking too much risk coming back to the middle of the racing area Malaysia not letting India leave and South Africa trying to play the tactical game of going a little bit further left. So let's see what happens. Anything could uh, could happen. But here, look at these images. I mean, they are cruising right now. Uh, I'm, I'd love to see you know a little bit of the bow wave on those boats and uh, and, and uh, yeah, beautiful conditions. And now we see what we just spoke to a little bit about. South Africa is winning momentum Team India right now. Team India is in the middle of the race course. South Africa, they went a little bit further to the, to the left-hand side. And when we are talking about these tactical battles, chess battles, South Africa actually did a genius thing. They don't need, if they continue their angle towards the gate mark, they don't need to do an extra jive. They yeah, can control right. the where, where India and Malaysia needs to do an extra jive. So uh, interesting what's coming up here because India, they jived a little bit too early, but they can also do a bigger angle now. And that's maybe why they're losing momentum because South Africa, 12.4 knots of speed, India 10.2. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you can also see on the medium measurements, South Africa coming in with speed now. Yeah, that's, I mean, really I interesting to see. So they're, they're definitely working on that uh, tactical side, uh, thinking about how many maneuvers they get. They have to put in. Remember, every single maneuver that they're going to have to put in is a possible, you know, accident waiting to happen. So uh, they're sort of playing it safe right now. Like we said, we're not even halfway through. Once we get down to the gates, we'll be halfway through this this uh, this first round. Twelve knots of speed, though. They are cruising. Yeah, and now we're going in to have a really interesting battle. We're going to have a rule number 10. We have talked about it, starboard port side. We can see South Africa, they're speeding up. They're taking the lead against India right now. But when India needs to do an extra jibe, and it looks like South Africa is also caught, either they need to change their angle or do an extra jibe. They mistimed it a little bit, meaning that India will have to ride away if they jibe to the opposite side on South Africa. And that's yeah, that's right, but uh, remember, you lose speed when you jibe, so they're going to be losing speed as they jibe. Right now, it looks like India is bearing down, is trying to go down, and uh, that's, you know, they're, they're actually sailing slower. South Africa does not have to do that. They just have to make sure they keep going straight, and they should end up in the middle of the two gates, um, which means that all they have to do is a drop, and then uh, they'll probably take that right-hand gate in order, if the wind hasn't shifted, they'll probably favor the right-hand side. So um, it looks like, you know, India is going to have to make, uh, even though they will have the right way, I'm not sure that they'll be able to pass in front of South Africa. But 15 meters is not along uh, when you're doing these jibes and they're so close to each other. Uh, Look at the yeah, gain. And, and Look at the difference yeah. in speed that South Africa has right now. See there, we, India oh, is and going India to is doing the jive now. So now it's it's the rule number behind. ten now. So imagine how they are getting close to each other. You can almost see the lines, but South Africa winning momentum 40 meters, 46 meters. As you said, yeah, they're yeah. slowing down 50 meters almost. Even though they have the, the right away, coming, India yeah. has right away. Like you said, um, you know, uh, oh. South Africa is passing out in front, so they won't they won't really need it. Now, where is South Africa going? Are they doing a a jive and a drop? Uh, they did a jive and a drop. So. Either we are going to see a split. India going to the left hand, uh, to the right hand side. South Africa to the left hand side. And when we saw the last upwind lake, it was the right hand side where where the where the the battle was. That was where the wind was. So South Africa going into lighter wind conditions, and India going into stronger wind conditions. And this is uh, quite interesting how they're coming in. And um, so we're really looking forward when we're getting these pictures of the boats. But right now we have the battle of Malaysia coming in with speed. So let's see India to the right, South Africa to the left, side by side, zero. Only six, six seconds, seconds between, in between, them, between yeah. uh, South Africa and, and uh, India. Uh, 
and then Malaysia speeding up. And now we, we need to look a little bit on the data. Who's do, doing the right thing, India or South Africa? It looks like South Africa are in the lead. They're splitting up right now. But speed-wise, India 7.8, South Africa 7.6. So right now, India is winning momentum on South Africa. So let's, uh, let's see how that wins. And again, it's not that good news for Team India because they had a much better uh, advantage when they were going upwind last time, so they lost the downwind. Malaysia, they can cross their fingers that India is having a worse downwind again, because then, um, then they are back in the race and can push India out of, uh, out of the battle before the Golden Day tomorrow. It kind of looks like we're getting a left-hand shift right now. Um, if you look at the tracker right there on India, you see how they have just been getting a, a, they've just been getting a, a lift uh, as they were as they were going up, um, following those little dots, uh, which sort of, I, I'm thinking it's pretty shifty out there, and it's really difficult to say, um, you know, what exactly is happening. I know uh, because I'm uh, sailing on this lake, uh, the wind should shift slightly more to the right as the day goes on. We'll be getting a, should be heading a little bit more east. But that's really not something that's going to influence these guys uh, as as they're sailing for this this particular race right here. Yeah, and Rachel, we are a little bit blind here in studio and also the viewers because the network went down out on the lake. Something happened there, but it doesn't matter. Rachel, what's happening out there? Is South Africa doing a great thing or is India doing a great thing? So I don't really know it's uh, tricky it's like uh, throwing the dice out here as uh, shifty as it is as it's always been and like Jan said it might be a little better on the right like it does uh, going on with the days uh, I don't think India did a bad move uh, going uh, around in the left hand uh, mark because they were much closer to that mark rather than the other one. So it was a matter of, uh, you know, doing more meters or going where they wanted to go. So uh, and once they found themselves on the right hand side going up, then I think they decided the wind wasn't bad there. So they stayed a little while, but now they're tacking and they're going to catch up, I think with South Africa. South Africa is going so left that it's almost uh, uh, going to hit the shore. So I think uh, soon enough they're going to have to tack. Hey, and, Rachel. Uh, I don't see Malaysia because it's covered by Team India at the moment for me. Hey, Rachel, I, you know, you saw what went Line here, Rachel. Uh, Rachel, can you yeah. hear us? Rachel, can you hear us again? Yes, very well. Did you yes, hear my question? Did you hear you my? Don't hear me? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, uh, yes. We yes, can Jan. hear you. Yes, yeah, and I heard it. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Tell us about that. We so, didn't see anything. Uh, at the gate, what happened? At the at the at the gate, Team India, uh, Team South Africa had a perfect drop of the kite and a perfect mark rounding. Uh, Team India had uh, a little bit. Um, uh, had a little uh, swim for uh, for the Janaker, uh, but it wasn't that bad, honestly. It wasn't that bad. Like I said, they chose the left end mark because it was much closer to them rather than uh, uh, the right one. But uh, I think, uh, from my point of view, that uh, Team India might be taking South Africa, actually, because I think there is much more pressure here in the middle of the lake rather than on the left where South Africa is now. So they've just tacked uh, right close to the, um, our guest boat. And Team Malaysia is following on South African steps and they're not gaining much. We're gonna see a tacking duel here because now Team India has just tacked and we're gonna probably see a cross with Team India having the rights to go being starboard. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. Yeah. Rachel, thank you for these observations out there. We are back in studio. We have Team India in front of us, and we can see there behind them Team Malaysia, and way out there, 
Team South Africa. They are the leaders, but India is now approaching them from starboard side, where South Africa is going on port side. So that's interesting battle coming in here. Yeah, what's really interesting about this is, uh, remember, uh, before we had these little camera issues, we, we were seeing that there was a, a slight difference, about 40 meters uh, in, in, in difference between uh, South Africa and India. Now, we'll really be able to see who's going to cross out in front. Now, if India has come back and is really on the tail of uh, South Africa, then we'll know the right-hand side was better. If uh, South Africa is far in front of India, then we'll know the left-hand side is better, better. So no matter how much information we're seeing on our screen, what we'll really be able to see right now is going to be the cross. What's happening between that cross between South Africa and India? Was it the left that paid or was it the right? And, and looking into the data we have right now, South Africa is the fastest team with 7.9 knots, India 7.7 .7 knots, but Malaysia 8.3 knots of speed. So they are coming back into this race. So everything is very open in this race. And with that said, we can see South Africa going in front of India. So they didn't manage to do it. So let's see a replay of the, of the, of the gates there. See what happened down there. Oh, beautiful. There we have it. They, 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 did a, they did a split, Jan. Yeah, very nice split. We Like uh, Rachel said, uh, just a little bit of uh, that Jenica going into the water, but not, not bad. They're having a little bit of a tough time here, putting in that, uh, that jib, uh, you know, a little bit late on uh, uh, putting, pulling the jib in. But all in all, it doesn't look too bad. We see a Malaysia right there in the middle with a nice spinnaker drop, everything coming down onto the deck. Uh, so, yeah, it's looking like the maneuvering is, is uh, uh, quite well done and uh, no big issues, uh, exactly uh, like uh, Rachel said. No big issues like Rachel said, and now we can see how they are battling it out here. Really great uh, performance by them. We are still in the, in the replay, but when we go into the, the overall graphics here, we can see South Africa survived that attack on India. But India and Malaysia, they're, they're doing attacking duel. So Malaysia, they're attacking away from India all the time. They're afraid of getting uh, captured behind Team India. So they, they want to see if they can sneak away from that battle. So India, they need to do something. They need a second and a victory today to stay in the golden, uh, in, uh, to the golden day. So right now, they need to defend that second position. That's right, they need to defend, like you said, the Golden Day. So let's explain to you what the Golden Day is just a little bit. Uh, like we said, two races today, one race tomorrow. Tomorrow is Golden Day, which means that all the points count double. So right now, as we're seeing in this, uh, in this group right here, um, first place, you get three points. Second place, two points. And uh, last place, you get one point. And so um, tomorrow, it'll be double. So it'll be six, four, and two. Now, uh, it's really important to set yourself up for that day. And uh, for India to be able to stay in the game, the worst they can do today would be second place. And then they would need to win the next race. So either they stay in second for this one, or they win the next one. Mat or they win this one. Mathematic. If they get to second places, they need to have Malaysia losing both races. Then everything is open for the grabbings tomorrow. Then they are battling. But then South Africa is already qualified. Then we will see a match race tomorrow between those two boats. So, so if we were to stay like this right now, yeah. we would definitely be in... in uh, we would have, uh, as this provisional overall right now, we would have much more of a tied game. Um, then we would need also uh, Malaysia now. It's not what we're hoping for. But if Malaysia is to be last on the next race, then we really will have even points and it'll be a full out battle tomorrow. And right here we are seeing the captain of Team Eat, uh, India, Johal. And one thing that's very important to know about this guy, he was at the Olympics 2008 in Beijing, but more important, he's doing so much for sailing in India. Do you know what? He's really growing the optimist, the youth. He really wants to grow it up. And in December in Mumbai, they have this huge, huge optimist event in, in India where he's going to grow the youth and create the interest of sailing. So he's, he's already been having his really good time, still performing in a high level, but he's giving back now to grow the youth. But here we can see South Africa still in the lead, India in second and Malaysia in third. Yeah, we, saw, we also saw the girl on, the, on that boat uh, with her hair sort of flying all over. Uh, that was uh, Ramya Sarabanan and uh, with her brother, which was two, uh, two sitting uh, just a little bit further behind her. Now, Team South Africa, 
they must be very pleased after a, a, an okay start controlling the race but According to me, the tactic view from my side, when they followed Malaysia, they lost the lead to Team India. But I have to say that downwind, um, uh, downwind duel they did, the first downwind leg, they did it uh, spot on and winning momentum. And now they're going upwind. There we see uh, Hankin and Lioto uh, right there were, were uh, uh, the number five and uh, number three that were in your picture right there as the trimmer and the floater in that previous shot. Yeah. 34 minutes into the race, we are approaching the top mark for the second time. 400 meters left, Team South Africa uh, is in the lead and then Team India coming Inge, in close. Inge Shabort uh, won gold right there, it just says, uh, you know, she's multiple uh, national champion uh, and uh, uh, she has the position as uh, being uh, in the pit. So you see she's got uh, those protections on her knees because uh, she's uh, basically diving down there and uh, she's setting up all the lines. So everything that you see when uh, the, the sails are being dropped or, uh, or, or when the, the bowsprit is uh, coming out, um, uh, she's, doing, uh, she's doing all that. She's also making sure uh, that the, uh, the check stay, back stays and, uh, and all that uh, is, is in check. And uh, there's the pressure. If, uh, sh if she messes up, she could potentially have the mass come down. So a really, really important position she has. It's really the, the timing of the team uh, in that pit position. And it's not for fun, we are saying it's in the pit, the battle happens, so they're fighting. And there we have to tack towards the top mark, South Africa coming first. And if they're doing such a great downwind leg as they did in the first downwind leg, then it looks like a clean victory for them. But see here two boats from behind, Malaysia and India, and it looks like they will approach the top mark almost at the same time. And that will mean that we are going to have a really tight downwind battle coming up. And that's one of those India needs to win. Yeah, now let's take a look at here what's going on. We just saw a class uh, number one on, on this boat going up uh, into the front and uh, setting themselves up here. We say, see them all staying at the windward mark. At one point, as soon as they get to that yellow buoy, they're going to start going down there. There we go. We see uh, Shabort uh, in the pit. She's uh, going down. There we go. We see Klaas. He's going up towards the front. He's taking that spinnaker out, and uh, we see that Shabort, she's uh, pulled out uh, the, uh, the, the, the spinnaker pole right there. The spinnaker is, is uh, going up, and uh, look on, on the we have uh, Nankin, which is uh, uh, the trimmer, along with uh, Will Cox, uh, making sure there they are, grinding away, getting that spinnaker up as fast as they can. And they're really bearing away in order to for, for that spinnaker to not fill up that immediately. And you see how they just uh, luff a little bit, and bam, there it goes. The spinnaker is up. Now, that's quite a lead they have over India. Now, we, let's look at India. This is really a very, very crucial moment for India because they are getting hunted down by the Malaysians. Yeah. And now we can see here they're getting ready for the launch of the Spinnaker. This is where they have been having the toughest battle in the AC, uh, in the SSL 47. This is where they want to be. So let's see how it's going. So for we them. have Singh right there, which is in uh, you know mid bow, and he's uh, or, or in the pit, as you say. We have uh, Sekar, which is the number one right there. He's uh, pulling out the Spinnaker right there. You see him. Uh, pulling really hard as fast as they can. There we go, the grinders are grinding as hard as they can. Number 11, Diopo, and uh, right in front of them should be number uh, 14, which is Noble. And it looks like a great launch of that Spinnaker. It looks like a clean one. Look at that <laughs> shot, that camera shot right yeah. there is amazing. That camera is just underneath the boom and is, uh, is, is showing us just a, a really great now. They're going to pick up some speed mm -hmm. and uh, we should be seeing some great but bow waves. the Tigers is just behind them, getting ready, launch the Spinnaker. And you can almost see there's no distance in between them. Yes, there is. According to measurements, there's 100 meters in between them, but downwind battle we saw it before india was 200 meters in the lead yeah the indian monsoons yeah. they have to make sure that they are uh, you know they keep they keep uh, going as fast as they can it looks like uh south africa uh, Mubuntu yeah. are uh, you know getting out there and uh they're really they're speeding really up in the lane. 400 meters yeah, they're winning wow. momentum now and according to data they're sailing 12.4 knots again india 10.3 and malaysia only 10.1 knots of wind speed so see how they're cruising away look at the speed that yeah. they have right there they're just oh, you, you can just see it they're all swaying back and yeah. forth as they're making little decisions 
decisions. Yeah. But you can almost also see on the boats behind that the angles that the boats are choosing are different. So this angle they are sailing with here on the Team Howard. South Africa is very, very good. Howard Lioto right there. You yeah. see on the bottom of your screen, he's the floater. Uh, he's uh, a national champion uh, several times. Uh, he has uh, the number three. We were seeing him earlier. There he is right there, and he's uh, he's just flying that spinnaker. Now, that work that's happening right there in the middle of your screen uh, between Lioto and the guy who's uh, grinding right now, Lioto basically, he's constantly releasing, and as soon as the other is grinding, the grinder, then he's pulling that back. So it's really a, a lot of work between those two to make sure that spinnaker is flying, and then in the back of the, you know, the driver of the boat, he's gonna be telling those guys, okay guys, I wanna, I wanna luff, uh, you know, I wanna bear away. And uh, so really a lot of teamwork, you, you can see nobody's talking. Uh, the only person that's talking on that boat is the person that's in the back, uh, you know, the helmsman who is uh, giving. And there's a tactician right there. He's checking out the angles, telling, uh, you know, talking to the, uh, to the helmsman, telling him, okay, you know, maybe if we tack now, etc. And they did a great job before avoiding all those drives. So it's looking like they're sort of having the same idea. They're going back to the left-hand side of the race course, and uh, they're just waiting to only put in one jibe in order to get them down there. And then we have the two teams behind. It looks like a clean victory for Team South Africa, but Team India and Team Malaysia, they're battling it out. And it looks like on our data, India is in the same trouble as last time going downwind. They are one knot speed slower than Team Malaysia at the moment. So we're going to see a battle. I know it's 200 meters, but 200 meters halfway down the lake is also quite some issues you can see malaysia is approaching them big time now so what will team india do i think right now what team india needs to do is make sure they keep their speed up because if they start bearing away uh they're gonna lose speed and uh, malaysia is just gonna come right back on top of them and then uh, if malaysia gets close enough they'll steal their win so really uh they've you know they've got to put on the uh the afterburners here india and they need to make sure they keep that boat going as fast as they can because Malaysia back there is coming in fast. Yeah, now a jibe from Team South Africa. They're jibing towards the finish line, almost going to the lay line, actually a little bit early, so maybe they need to do an extra jibe. But they are so much in the lead that they're quite comfortable. 400 meters, I know they can still lose it if they're doing a mistake, but they, it, it looks quite comfortable for them. At I'm the looking at Malaysia and look at the distance. 635, 632. Malaysia just keeps on coming. They were at 660, just not too far. Look, 628. So Malaysia getting going faster than India, and uh, they're 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 definitely going. Uh, they're they're bringing in uh, the distance. They're closing in the distance. Yeah. And again, it's it's this this chess battle about how is the wind acting, but also the angle of the boat. And when I'm looking at the data, India is doing a bigger angle than Malaysia right now. So Malaysia is capturing the wind much better. They're also sailing faster. Right now, India is only 8.2 knots of speed, where Malaysia 8.7. So Malaysia is actually better finding that wind and capturing. But we will see both of them jibe in towards the middle now a little bit early because it looks like the wind disappeared. Um, yeah, it's, it'll be really interesting because the battle right now is South Africa. Yeah, they're out in front. But what we're looking at right now is can uh, the Tigers come back and attack the monsoons yeah. and uh, make sure they, they, they get back on them because uh, Team Ubuntu is out in front and uh, they looks like they're going to be staying out there for, for this one. So here's the battle right there. We, uh, we're on Team Monsoon, uh, Team India. Uh, just behind them are the Tigers, Team Malaysia. Um, and we'll see what happens. If they can get a good shift, then uh, Malaysia can perhaps, you know, bear away and, and, and get a little bit closer. Now, distance to the mark says 1,200 meters. Uh, so they're still uh, quite a ways. They're only about halfway uh, but this is the last. This is the last run. This is it. If right now they're going to be going through the finishing line. 1,150 meters left. It's India versus Malaysia. It looks like South Africa is doing it well. You can see the angles on the boats here. India. Uh, you can see Malaysia is doing a bigger angle than India. They're trying to speed up. Yeah, they might, be a in a, they might be in a little bit more pressure yeah. right there, and they're just trying to uh, trying to get closer and closer and closer and closer to India to cast that wind shadow. 
But frankly, 200 meters distance between the two of them, it's going to be really tough. Even though they're only halfway down, there's still quite a ways to go. Um, Malaysia right now is going to have to find something. But you never know. We've seen the craziest things happen in these races. Um, provisional overall right now? Provisional overall right now is that the South Africa, they are going to win two points on the Malaysia, and Malaysia is going to lose one point on India. So there will only be uh, two points in front of India after this race, Malaysia. But South Africa, they can be satisfied with a second position in the next race, and then they're qualified for Bahrain. So India just need to keep Malaysia behind them in this race and the next race to have a very interesting golden day. And that's very good news for South Africa because if they continue doing what they're doing today, then tomorrow they can practice, literally practice and make sure that it's the two others battling it out. Yeah, and you can be sure that when, they're, when they don't have the pressure on them, they'll actually even sail better. So yeah. uh, they, they might end up by winning tomorrow and, and be uh, the, the clear leaders. So, uh, yeah, really interesting uh, what we've been seeing today. And some clean racing. I was expecting a little bit more drama um, uh, with these uh, spinnaker hoists and drops. Uh, but it looks right now uh, they're just cruising 500 meters left uh, in order to get uh, to the... Oh, do we have a jibe that is going on in the background? I think uh, yeah. it looks like uh, perhaps uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we Mal have Malaysia something that's... jibing in. Yeah, they're, they're trying something. If they keep going like this, nothing's going to happen. They yeah. got to they gotta roll the dice. So they've just decided to jibe. And, and perhaps uh, have a little bit more angle. Uh, perhaps they're waiting for India to have to jibe as well uh, before they cross the finishing line. And, uh, and, and maybe it's going to play out really at the last moments here. So um, it, it's not over. Uh, 320 meters uh, for the, between, uh, to, to the line. Uh, that's 320 meters for South Africa, but a lot more for the others. Yeah, you can see here behind the battle behind Malaysia going to the left-hand side of the race course, India going in towards the middle. And nice it, job. I, I really think that Malaysia is crossing their fingers that India will do a, a mistake in the driving because that's where they've been having the hardest, the hardest time. It's the spinnaker when they're going downwind. Every time they jibe or, or launch it, India have been having trouble the other days. So we saw it actually in the battle between Chile and um, and Puerto Rico. They were also f hoping for that. And there we yeah, actually had a mistake. mistake. And there we have to finish. Very Team nice. South Africa, South Africa. Oy, winning it out there. Uh, and what a comeback. Uh, they can be happy. Yeah, what a comeback, man. They sailed really well, really good, really smooth and fast. Um, not too many jibes, didn't lose. Really smart sailing right there, uh, Team South Africa. Remember, Team South Africa, last time they were here was last year, and they were here for the uh, uh, practice events, um, and uh, they won those events. So uh, they're, you know, they're, they're quite, a, quite a strong team right there strong team winning it and now we will see Malaysia versus India and to make it a little bit more exciting Malaysia is sailing two knots faster than team India at the moment so they are speeding up India doing a jive so will there be a oh there was no mistaking that jive but you can see Malaysia coming in with speed but it looks like India is going to take that second position it's a very important point for them here winning one point on team Malaysia yeah they can be really happy with that one wow what a what a nice race for them uh, they didn't uh, make any mistakes and uh, they can they can really be happy now they're setting themselves up uh, for uh, for a nice race uh, this second race here is going to be very intense Malaysia is going to have to uh, it's gonna have to come back fighting yeah they have to come back fighting so next race it's both good and bad South Africa they can uh, they can race for themselves if India and Malaysia are starting their match race already so they can take another victory but they need just to take care of not losing it here you can see Malaysia the Tigers sneaking in over the finish line uh, they're not standing up they're not cheering that much they know okay that was a bad race for us now we need to speed up because we need to win the next one or get second or at least win over India to be able to uh, not come in a very, very bad position for tomorrow's golden day. Yeah, definitely uh, right there on that boat, uh, full concentration right now, you know, making sure that uh, that second race, they need yeah. to be back out there. For them right now, it's sort of a do or die. They, had, they were in a very comfortable position, yeah. uh, and that right now they're, uh, you know, India, we're seeing India come back. So there you go with the race results uh, right there. That was race four. 
uh, of, uh, of this last group here uh, with three points uh, for South Africa, two points for India, and one point for Malaysia. And uh, one more race with these guys today. One more race with those here, but let's see the overall score now. Let's see if our mad in studio is good. 10 points for South Africa, eight points for Malaysia, six points for India. So India, the, now let's just talk about next race because it's going to be very exciting. If India is winning, they will get three points. Then they will go up to nine points. And if Malaysia is losing next race, they will get one point, then it's a tie. And then South Africa will have 12 points. But if South Africa is losing, they will have 11 points. Malaysia, if they're winning, they will have 11 points. And if India is getting second, they will have eight points. So India needs to stay in second position and keep Malaysia behind them or win it. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of it's good. It's great because we're gonna have a tie, whether it be between the first and second place boats or the second and third place boats. It's uh, mathematically looks like you know there's a high probability that we'll have a tie uh, between these teams. And you know this is this is what we want. We don't want just one boat running away with it. And uh, as we see, all the teams that are coming over here are fighting. They're fighting hard. And uh, we've always seen some really great battles with these SSL 47s. These boats are just unbelievable and uh we really you know we're really looking at what the sailors can do it's not a, everybody has exactly the same boat and that, you know that's something we need to yeah. we need to talk yeah. about as well because yeah. uh you know if everybody has the same boat then what's really going to be important are the people that are sailing on that yeah. boat yeah and then rachel let's go to you on water you have the winners with us it's uh, team south africa so how are they feeling down there Yes, I'm here with Mark Sadler, the tactician on board and, uh, well, a tactician that uh, saw something on the left-hand side of the course and uh, strictly wanted to be there. Yeah, we, um, we, had a, 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 we won the right uh, out of the start uh, with the other two boats and we saw that there was quite a, a left-hand uh, shift. Um, so uh, downwind, we certainly uh, it was very important for us to get the left, which we did and made good gains with pressure and angle. When do you think you won the race? I mean, uh, Team India was uh, leading um, up until the first half of the downwind, the first downwind. Yeah, certainly the second half of the downwind. We stepped more to the left-hand side of the course, more pressure, got a little lower and managed to get the right-hand uh, side of the gate and back out to the left-hand side of the course for the, for the upwind, and that was the key moment. So tell us, because you know better, how do you think it's going to evolve the weather throughout the day? Well, I think it'll be pretty stable from here on. Uh, I can't see it getting much windier or much lighter. So it uh, should be a good race. The next one will be a good race. Okay. Have fun. Yeah, thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you for that. Very, very good news from out there. Expecting the weather will keep on this day. But with that said, let's see the race replay of this fantastic race. Some money on the line, you better put it here. Rolling in and doing that work. Check priorities, I'm doing that first. Checks big and I'm sure that that hurts. But it's checkmate, we ain't selling short, no to work. Ain't nowhere to hide. You ain't gotta see me come and keep me on your mind. Cause I'll be on the way. And welcome back in studio. You're watching the SSL Gold Cup qualifying series. It's the last round. We are in the African Asian group right now. And we are in, in the first race of today where we're having three teams, India, Malaysia and South Africa. And right now it looks very good for South Africa. 
Yeah, it's looking very good for South Africa. And uh, really interesting to see that, uh, you know, they saw which side of the race course they, they wanted to go on, and they really defended it hard uh, on the windward side and as well uh, as they were uh, sailing downwind. So um, really uh, very good, uh, tactically speaking. And um, we've got quite a race going on also uh, just behind them uh, between uh, the other two teams. Yeah. And if you just watched the last race, oh, um, and, and never been watching sailing before and said, oh, they were just sailing and there was so much gap in between them. Actually, it was a very exciting race because what you need to look at is how they are crossing, how they're splitting up, how they're doing these battles, reading the wind. And one team that's really good at doing that today is South Africa. Yeah, definitely. It's very interesting. And, and, you know, even if you don't know all the rules and everything, you can always what you can always look at is how the boats are mm -hmm. crossing back together. If one boat is far out in front of the other, then, you know, they've probably gone to the correct side. If if the, the boat that was in the back, you know, catches back up, then, you know, they went to the correct side. So, um, you know, you can always check check out and see how the boats are doing, whether they're getting, uh, uh, you know, a bigger lead or whether they're coming back and things like that. So very simple things to be able to look at. And another simple thing that you can see very well on the screen is, you know, is that spinnaker? Is that spinnaker going up properly or is it going into the water as they're dropping it? You know, these are simple things, but they can make a big difference. And we're looking at a big difference. Let's look at the team comparison, if we can go in and see the teams, because we have three teams with us in today's group. One team couldn't be here, that was Team China. But Team India, the India, Indian Tigers, they're ranked 40 on the SSL ranking list. They have a total weight of 724.95 kilos. And in the lead, it's Johal. And, and he, he's been actually doing a great race in the last one. Yeah, Naktar uh, Johal. Yeah, he's uh, really yeah. leading his team on. Uh... Yeah. And, and then we have South Africa, Team Ubuntu, really doing a great job. They're ranked 43 at the moment, but they are much lighter team than all the others. So there we have a really routine captain, Ian Ansley, and the t a tactician there, Mark there, doing a great job because it's all about steering the boats in these great wind conditions. But we talk about, hey, it's also about the weight. The team with most weight might have a... A, a very good uh, yeah, that's right. advantage it's, it's, today. Yeah, obviously it's weight and it's also, you know, reading the race course because uh, like you said, South Africa is the lightest team, but you know, they went to the right side. It, you could be the heaviest team, but if you go to the wrong side of the race course, you'll still be behind. And one more team that we have to talk about. Yeah, it's Team Malaysia, the Monsoons. And um, you can see they have a tiger over there. Um, and they are they are actually attacking a little bit from behind at the moment. They are, they are actually the underdogs in this group. If you're looking into the ranking list, they only rank at 60 on the SSL team ranking. And they have a weight almost the same rate as India. 721.8 kilos, but uh, Daniel uh, Migat, he's having quite some issues out there today. Yeah, not really easy. So it all started off at that start where uh, they they were sort of stuck between uh, the the two, uh, you know, between the the Indian Tigers and Team Ubuntu. Uh, the, the, the monsoons were just you know getting ping pong back and forth, making it that they actually had to do more attacks than the other. So we know each time you do attack or a jibe, you're actually losing a little bit of distance because of you know because of the maneuver you're doing. So uh, it started off not so easy. Then they had to sort of defend their place uh, out and back um a little bit of a tough race for them and it all started you know from the starting line so uh now it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what's going to be happening in the starting procedure yeah it's the starting procedure that's important but let's see uh, the provisional overall let's see what we're into let's see the math we're going into race number five and it's going to be a very interesting race we can see south africa they've been winning three races out of the first four ones and losing one race malaysia have been winning one race two second place and a loss and then we have team india two losses and two second places and if we look into this there's two points in between of them south africa 10 malaysia 8 india 6 india and needs to win if they can over Malaysia with one point or they need to have to have two points winning the race and have Malaysia losing it to get a tie so so that's what's coming up and they're fighting for the best position for tomorrow's golden day and with that said let's have an interview with team India and hear what they have to say about today's races 
Uh, I'm very happy with the performance of Team India because this is the first time, you know, we all are dinghy sailors and uh, sailing a big boat for the first time. So the team is combining well. The decision to come one week early has been uh, a very good move. And uh, I'm actually very happy with the performance of the team on water. Uh, South Africa is the winner of Test Event 1, but uh, starting with race number one, you know, we are up with them. And even with Malaysia, the racing is very close. The boats are very similar. And uh, I think we, my team is doing a good job but uh, we made some mistakes maybe you can say you know because we are the beginners as compared to them uh, just one mistake in two races and you know uh, that has cost us uh, probably three points uh, plan for today is very clear uh, we uh, there are some very minor mistakes which we have done in the first two days which we are not going to repeat today first aim is to have a very clear start uh, yesterday we we were late for the start and uh, after the start we will see with respect to the position of the other boats but my strategy is very clear as to where i want to be so we'll try to be where we have planned uh, I think the concept is really nice and it represents a huge opportunity not only in India, Asia, I think in the world, especially uh, the countries, you know, where it is difficult to mount a campaign. I mean, primarily, you know, sailing uh, off late is a lot about only Olympics and Asian Games, which I think SSL has the big potential to change and reach almost every country possible in the world. Wow, with all that said here, he's really looking forward to it. And Team India is under pressure. They're going to battle Team Malaysia. But Rachel, how is it on water? Are we still having a, a hard breeze? 12 knots of wind and what are the teams doing? Yes, the breeze is still blowing strong from the north, uh, slightly northeast, uh, and uh, boy, would I have lost that race uh, uh, beforehand. I think I, what I saw on the right, it was just hopes for Team India because I saw them so concentrated and doing so well, finally, with their maneuvers. Um, so I think we have the very same conditions as earlier on. So I see more white tips on the left-hand side of the course, so very close to shore, very close to the um, side of the coastal line of uh, Canton Vaux and Canton Neuchâtel. Um, I see certainly more breeze up towards the top mark because there is right now a sailing boat, like a, like a familiar sailing boat, and they are very, very um, healed. And um, still blue skies, a little fog still up in the north. And some um, and Rachel, we need to cut clouds, you off a uh, little bit. Up in yeah. the south. Rachel, oh, yeah, sure. we need to cut you off because now the start is coming up. There's one minute to the start. And, 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 and Jan, last time we saw actually a slow start. Some of the teams coming too fast to the starting line. And that was good for South Africa because then they could slow a little bit down and speed up. They really need to time this start. They yeah, need we to had come the Indian Tigers behind. that came up really quickly up on that. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to block everybody else. The only problem is they couldn't get back into it a quick, uh, fast enough. Oh. Uh, so let's see, 42 it's seconds here. Of it right now it's looking like they're blocking <laughs> everybody. So they've got a, they're really aggressive, and uh, that's very nice to see. Oh, 35 oh, oh, seconds. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, here we go. This is now Malaysia can luff them immediately, and they need. Uh, oh, he's protesting. He's protesting. Uh, absolutely what he's doing. not. No, Malaysia. Yeah, is. yeah, Malaysia is protesting. India is protesting. Yeah. Now they're oh, fighting off between themselves. There's a red flag oh, from red the referee, flag. so let's see who gets the penalty. I think it's Malaysia, actually, but we will see afterwards the start. But let's Ten see. seconds left to go here. Both nope. of these... Uh, no, no, it's got to be India that didn't reply fast enough. And uh, so they're doing their 360 right now. So this is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing no, for India no, right now. No. This is not what they needed, and they're starting out on the back foot. They'll be taking uh, 12, 20 seconds. Uh, after everybody else, and look, and it's look, not looking like they're going to be managing to get to the line either. They're going to have to tack. Ah, uh, it's just a very, very disappointing start for uh, for Team India. Now they're going to have to do. They're going to have to pull uh, pull a rabbit out of their hat or do something in order to be able to come back because right now uh, they are dead last place. There we go. They've just had to tack over, and they are stopped. Oh, oh yeah. What a start. And this is also what sailing about. We will soon see the replay of that start. Then we can explain a little bit more about the rule. But India, they, they tried to, to, to lock up the other teams. And then Malaysia managed to just go on the inside of them. Uh, and then lock up Team India. And India didn't reply on it. They really tried to, to cover them up. But 
too late. Malaysia yeah. had an overlap. Yeah, exactly. So uh, um, before the start gun starts, uh, a, a team can come from behind and just directly love uh, because the rules change once the start the, the, the start the start of the race begins. And what we saw right there was Malaysia being very aggressive and trying to love Team India. Team India did not reply. Generally, we say they have about three seconds in order to be able to reply, and then they must reply. Uh, and uh, Malaysia cannot go further head to than head to win. So it's a little bit technical right there, but s something must have happened because the jury boat was right behind them, and they pulled out that red flag. Now, we can talk about that also in a little bit. Yeah. But two, two complaints, one from India, one from Malaysia, but Malaysia won it, so India needs to do that penalty. And that's a tack jive, or if you're new to sailing, it almost looks like a 360. They need to spin around and then come back again. That's right, uh, they have to do a 360, and a 360 is one tack and one jive. So, um, you know, if, if, they, if they don't do that, well, that, they'll get another penalty. And let's see that start again so we can see that penalty. Here we can see, oh, it's a little bit early there. See, Malaysia, they need to maneuver away. They're almost touch. Oh, there, oh, there is. Touch. There is a touch. They've Oy. collided. And that's why India is getting that one. And that might also give... Uh, that's why the penalty is coming in. They actually reacted, but they're reacting by hitting Team Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, I could understand also why India is putting up their red flag right there saying, hey, listen, they didn't give us room to be able to, to love. Uh, they, they squeezed us and uh, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, we're going to get uh, we're going to get more information from that. Uh, yeah. We're going to have the referee do, uh, do, yeah. do a, a yeah. jury call. And, and one thing I'm very interesting is, hey, you saw there was, was a black area on Team Malaysia's boat. Maybe they caught a hole in the boat, and if that's the case, they will get in water during the whole race. Yeah, and that will slow oh, them down. That would be terrible. Oi, oi, oi. So this is not over yet. So India, they got a penalty, but it, it, there might be a hole in the boat. I just saw this black area on the boat, uh, on the, the replay. Yeah, that's right. These boats are made out of carbon, and yeah. that gold that you're seeing on there is nothing more than a sticker that's put on the, on the <laughs> side of the boat. So uh, if you're seeing black, that's uh, very, very bad news. Yeah, that's very bad news. So right now, if, if uh, Malaysia, they are, yeah, they are look, going into look, the one. It looks like yeah. uh, you were saying there's a hole in the boat. There's a hole in the boat. Yeah. I just saw right there the, the, the helm uh, you know, showing uh, the jury in the back. Uh, we've got a hole in the boat. Everybody's looking over the side. Uh, what's going to be happening now? The only ones that can help uh, them are the jury boats. They're the only boats that can actually uh, actually come in, in closer to them. So let's see what ha what's happening because right now that hole is out of the water, but as soon as they tack... Oh, then uh, there yeah, will yeah, come yeah, water yeah, into yeah, the yeah, boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but just saying, it was a very good start, but an unlucky start because if there's a hole in the boat, then they are in trouble. Yeah. I mean, they had to huh? be aggressive. That's huh? and it's it, they oh, did it right there. there it, is, it is there. It is oh, and it's below water surface. It's just above no, the water no, line, no, but no, it, as no. soon as they tack, it's water is gonna get in there. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Is it just uh, superficial or has it gone all the way through? Now that's. Uh, I guess we'll have the number one going inside the boat and seeing what it's like. Yeah. Um, if it is, they're not going to be able to race. I mean, they'll uh, they'll sink the boat. Yeah, then they will sink the boat and <laughs> they will not finishing. So, I have to say, th it was bad news for India. But now it's good news for India. But it's all about what the rule says <laughs> about this because they were fighting for it. India p protested because the other ones, Malaysia, didn't make room for them. India, they, they reacted and went away, but they're getting the penalty for touching the other boat. So, um, yeah, interesting what the Jews will do tonight, because yeah, this will not yeah, yeah, be decided exactly, now. No. It will be decided later tonight. Hopefully we'll get a jury call, we'll get a little bit of information as yeah. we're racing uh, on this. But uh, Malaysia, you know, uh, the, the Malaysian monsoons, they had to be uh, very aggressive uh, in order to be able to sort of kick the Indi Indian Tigers out of there and make sure that they're, that India does not go through tomorrow or at least set themselves up for tomorrow but maybe it was just a little too much a little bit too much a little bit too aggressive it's the first time we see in the African Indian group 
uh, Asian group, how they are battling it out. They have been very polite to each other the first three days. And now when there's something on stake, they're battling it out and they were not ready for it. And then we have this collision, uh, collision here. And that's actually Malaysia. They can still brace right now. But when they tack to the opposite side, they will have water inside the boat. Yeah, I could tell you one person I know who's watching this isn't very happy right now. It's uh, probably uh, Juan, uh, which is uh, the you know responsible for the, uh, the shore team. Uh, he knows that uh, now he's going to have to be doing some uh, some carbon fiber work. Yeah, all night long because we have a fantastic shore team at the SSL Gold Cup, making sure that all the boats are exactly the same, are fit for racing. They're fitting them all night and ready, ready for the morning. So when the teams come, the teams are re the boats are ready for racing. Yeah, these guys are unbelievable. I mean, the team that just gets oh. these boats ready. Oh. Now it's going to be interesting. The tack yeah. is coming in. Malaysia Order. is coming in with attack. Now they will get water into the boat if they have not done anything to to seal it beneath. Yeah, maybe with a little bit of luck that hole is just superficial and doesn't go all the way through the hole. Let's hope so. Now uh, I'm sure we'll get a we'll get an answer. Look we could see them uh, checking out what's going on beneath beneath the hole. It looks like they're tacking again now. They're not tacking because of that hole, they're tacking because South Africa tacked on top of them. So uh Oof. It's, it's a very hot, tough call here. Now they're dropping to second. India is coming from behind. Malaysia, they need to figure out, can we continue racing or not? They need to make sure they can survive this race, keep that position, keep India behind them. But India is racing all by themselves in the right-hand side. South Africa and Malaysia is battling out. This is the luck of the Indians, actually, because now they have a chance to come back in the race, keep Malaysia behind them. Yeah, <laughs> just there's so much going on right now. It's uh, you know really interesting. Now let's see what's happening over here. It looks like these guys are. It doesn't look like they have the same energy mm -hmm. as they had in, in the beginning. Are they? You know, I think uh, mentally right now they're probably quite worried about this uh, this hole. And we see uh, the boats that are right there in the back. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that the shore team is not too far away uh, with a big roll of tape. Um, you know, a, as soon as this race is going to be over. Now, um, I'm pretty surprised I haven't seen anybody either gone inside the boat to check it out. Um, or maybe they are in there already, uh, putting their hand over it, making sure no water is coming in. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. Somebody just ran inside the boat to check it. So right now there's one inside the hole checking the boat, seeing if they're getting water in. But we can see one thing, Malaysia is losing momentum, India in second. The, uh, South Africa copying up Malaysia, India all by themselves in the middle of the race course going towards the top mark. It's the first leg up, everything is on stake, it's the battle for Bahrain, the finals, and India needs to win over Malaysia to have it all open for tomorrow. Hey, I'm wondering if, if there's a guy inside the Malaysian boat, you think he's just down there with his hand over the hole, just making sure there's no water coming in? Oh, that's pretty hot to do, that's pretty hot to do. That means they're one man down. Yeah, maybe. But let's see, it's all about finishing the race so they're not losing all the points because not finishing the race is giving zero points and that will give Team, in team India uh, two points. So then there will be a tie for tomorrow. Yeah, and look, I mean, there's only a 10 meter uh, lead that uh, the monsoons have over the Tigers uh, right now. So uh, it looks like India is coming back. They had a really tough race, but look at that. They're 10 meters back. So they're there, they're there, they're back. They, they've been doing wonderful windward legs yeah they won the first one and the last one and uh they're, they've come back now after taking a start 20 seconds after everybody uh with the penalty and uh, things like that um wonder if their boat is okay as well yeah but they they hit it with the back side of the boat so that might be okay but if we're looking into it and looking into the tactics india is keeping themselves at the middle of the race course where are the two other boats south africa and malaysia going to the left hand side of the racetrack and in the last race we saw that left hand side there was less wind it was the right hand side in the middle the wind pressure was so um right now india is actually speeding up going in for it and you can also see they're winning momentum at uh, South Africa and uh, Malaysia 
and they are battling at the same time. So this time it's India coming back. Yeah, India's coming back right there. Look, they're in second position right now. So, uh, yep, definitely uh, on their way back. It looks like... Uh, Oh, it looks like uh, the monsoons right now. I, I don't know. I, I was, you know, body talk, body language. Uh, it, it just, it looked like that whole really sort of shocked them. Shocked them. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. Is it because that boat is taken in water or is it because, uh, you know, they've, they've, they've just uh, been a little bit um, yeah, but, shocked. But looking on our data, they're sailing the same speed as South Africa. They're sailing a little bit faster than Team India. So Team India is just sailing a shorter race, a uh, shorter course towards the mark and, and sailing a little bit slower. And you can see right now, they're actually on the tack where the hole is. So right now they're getting water into their boat if they unlock. Let's count how many people are on the side of that boat. I, I, I got to get this clear because if he's still... So one, two, three, four, five, six, six... Uh, six, no, we can't, we're not seeing them. Oh, yeah. there's a guy oh right there. Boy. We've seen he's, One in he's the down there. The hole, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe he was bailing. Is he coming out with buckets? Yes, oh buckets. Boy. Buckets of water. So there is water coming into that boat right now. Uh, there, They have a hole. There is water coming into the boat. Uh, they are, they're not quite sinking yet, but uh, they definitely have one guy down there. So he'll be bailing. Every time these guys are on a port tack, then uh, they're going to have to make sure that uh, they're, they're getting that water out. So, uh, so on a down. port tack, they're one down. On a starboard tack, they're, uh, they're back to normal. Oh, 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 this is exciting. They need to finish the race. India in the lead right now, but you can also see how Malaysia oh, there's gotta is be two down. There's got to be two people down there because yeah. I know those holes are quite deep. They can't, unless he's got water up to his thighs, but then that boat yeah, wouldn't no, be moving then, anymore. Then the boat will not move. Oh, All right, so we do have a hole in one of the boats. We have a hole in one of the boats. So today we are going to see some water battles <laughs> in one of the boats. This is a battle. They need to survive. They need to fight for it. First of all, they need to fight with the tactics and the strategy, but at the s and also making sure that their boat is not sinking. They, they need, need to, to fight finish. for everything. They, they need to fight the yeah. float. Yeah. The only thing that can be worse for them right now is India winning the race. But if India is in second and they just finish the race, then there's still one point in between them for before tomorrow, and that will be a good thing because then. This then it's not a tie. This is uh, we saw, very we, crazy we, today. We knew we would see yeah. some actions right yeah. now. So I'm guessing also we're going to have to have the spare boat coming out here because remember, uh, we switch boats. We okay, switch boats race. and uh, for, for, for the next race. So. And, and while you're coming in, if you just joined in watching the SSL Gold Cup, the Football World Cup of sailing, you are in race number five <laughs> in this fantastic group here we have today. South Africa, India, Malaysia in the battle. Malaysia just needs to finish the race to keep the lead in front of India. India, if they're winning over South Africa, then they are in a tie position with Malaysia and also pressing South Africa for tomorrow's golden race. We had a touch, we had a collision, but according to rules, they need to continue sailing. If they're Here bailing out, India they're getting zero tacked. points. India just tacked, and they're on a <laughs> starboard tack, so they have the right away over uh, South Africa, which uh, looks like South Africa is clearly in the lead mm. right now. But look at that comeback. Mm. Wonderful comeback from Team India. Back into second place, uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it looks like Malaysia is still struggling back there just to keep themselves afloat. Yeah, they're trying to keep themselves floating and you can see they're dropping down. They've really lost momentum also on South Africa. They were almost side by side there. So India just needs to finish here and Malaysia needs to finish the race overall. Rachel, what are you seeing out there? Well, I'm seeing the teams doing the little offset leg. Um, it was really close, like you said, uh, from South Africa and India. So I'm pleased to see them coming back. But at the same time, it's a struggle on Team Malaysia. So like you say, their motivation at the moment doesn't look at the highest. Uh, there is the highest by South Africa and it went up smoothly. Now India is rounding and hoisting the Janaker. Oh. A bit messy, I have to say. A bit messy, but it's up. It's up and it's almost up to the top. And like I was saying, Malaysia, they seem a little bit deluded. Uh, they're not as happy and cheerful as they were before. Not even hiking that much at the moment. They're hoisting the kite. 
Um, while I think this uh, upwind leg gave some boost to the uh, to the Indians, so they were really happy. I mean, you know, Joal, the captain, is come. Uh, it comes from the military. So what I've noticed is that there is really quiet and silence on board Team India. Is just uh, giving the commands and people are executing. So it's really, it, it was really different. Uh, it's really different from boats to boat, from teams to teams. And it's not just a culture thing, but yes, here at the SSL Gold Cup, we see many, many different cultures fighting uh, on the on the same race course. Yeah. So now they're going downwind. That they're all going on the right. Uh, I don't think uh, Team India is risking again uh, the middle of the course. Also because from what I see now, I think I would also go on the right side, uh, Thomas and Jan. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for that observation. And Jan, while we are seeing them rounding the top mark, it looks like India has very, um, how can I say, it, not well-performed spinnaker launch, but Malaysia also, because they are two men down entering the boat for water. It was like the kite was yeah, not uh, filling exactly. with wind. Yeah, um, there's water inside their boat. Uh, that spinnaker is down there, down in the bottom of their boat. So that spinnaker is probably wet. And uh, like we've seen before, if you drop your spinnaker into the water and then you try to hoist it or, or drop it down, it's like putting on and taking off a wet t-shirt. It's really difficult. So yeah, it's making everything harder for, for, you know, for Team Malaysia. They've got that wet spinnaker now that they're trying to get out there. Um, uh, but uh, we saw Team India uh, putting up, uh, having just a little bit, a little bit slow on putting up that uh, spinnaker up there, and they have a dry spinnaker. Um, so uh, you know, we, we really uh, we expect uh, now to to have the the Indians really, really put the pressure. Yeah, and we just saw the projected results up there. South Africa is doing what they can do. 13 points with this result. They are clear for Bahrain uh, without even uh, doing a great performance tomorrow because they can have a last position tomorrow. The only thing that they can lose it is if they're not racing tomorrow. And then Malaysia, nine points. India, eight points. So Malaysia needs to keep their boat alive and finishing or else it would be a tie and they will have zero points if they're, if they're dropping out of the race. And a dropout will also mean a big thing on the overall result if it's a tie tomorrow. So they need to finish this race. But it's all open. India back in it. They're Beautiful. doing what Look they have this. to do. Look at these waters. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Remember, we are sailing in Switzerland on Lake Neuchâtel. Uh, and uh, all is uh, surrounding the lake are the mountains, the Jura Mountains on the left-hand side of your screen. The Alps are over to, towards the right. And this lake is just funneled in between these two, giving us these wonderful sailing conditions and these beautiful turquoise-colored water. Uh, you wouldn't think you're in Switzerland. Yeah. And maybe if you just joined in, we had a fantastic start with all the drama we could have. India, they need to stay in second to win this race. They had a terrible start hitting Malaysia, getting a penalty. But unfortunately for Team Malaysia, they have a hole in the boat. They're getting in water right now. And they are fighting with two people entering the boat for water while the rest of the crew is sailing the boat. Yeah, and their sails are line. getting wet and they're missing yeah. two men on, on their board, uh, you know, on, on top of the boat because they're down there bailing. And uh, like, like uh, you know, Rachel just said, uh, they're, you know, see their motivation. They're really just, they're down. So uh, they, they really, these guys, they need to come back. They need to focus, you know, they need to be. Oh, they're switching the people now. They cannot stay down in the, in, in, in the hole all the time. So you can just see a switch there where they, where they put a new one down to put up buckets. So it's pretty hard work emptying the boat for water, sailing the boat at the same time. So where to focus? What will the captain do? What will the tactician and the helm do? Because right now you can see this is the crew sailing it. There are seven out of nine persons, two entering the boat for water. Yeah, it looks like uh, the, the distance between India and uh, Malaysia are, is staying the same right now between those two boats. I believe right now in India is uh, should be attacking uh, South Africa. This is uh, India needs to attack South Africa. Here we go with a jibe right here. Uh, jibe for Team South Africa. The Ubuntu's, uh, there, there they are. They're, uh, Good job. 
everything looks uh, looks pretty well. Pretty interesting. They've kept uh, the jib up, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, generally, the the jib uh, goes down. Now, uh, is that because uh, they don't want to have any uh, any issues? They don't want to risk anything. Oh, we can see in the reflection. It looks like there's a jibe as well going mm -hmm. on for the other boats. Yeah, they are falling into as pressuring right now. Uh, Team South Africa, but. Even under pressure, Team Malaysia is pressuring Team India at the moment. So there's the same distance in between all the boats, meaning that Malaysia can actually attack India, India can attack South Africa, and doing the wind shadow downwind. Yeah, this is turning out to be quite the battle, as we see here, right here from this uh, onboard camera just beneath the boom. Uh, we're getting a glimpse of Malaysia every once in a while. That's uh, trying to come over uh, Team India, which is stuck right there in the middle. So uh, this could be very, very interesting. This is there's that hole. Yeah. There it is. That's uh, on Team South Africa. No, no, that's on the other one here. That's an old hole we have. Ah. That's for formal race. But here you can see the mirroring coming in there from uh, Team South Africa. They are they are just sailing downwind, but they are a little bit in trouble. When I'm seeing the data, they're going towards the gate mark. They need to time it. Right now, Team South Africa is timing it so they can go to the opposite side without doing a jibe. India and Malaysia need to do an extra jibe going towards the gate mark. And that's quite interesting because now they need to fight it out. And when we are looking into the data, India is sailing 10.3 knots of speed. South Africa, 10.2 knots of speed. Malaysia dropping down with 9.7 knots of speed. Yeah, these boys really have to stop putting holes in these boats. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, the thing is that um, the, the other teams that are going to be sailing this afternoon are, are going to be using the same boats. Obviously, the one that's taken on water is going to be replaced by the reserve boat. But, uh, you know, they, they, we need to see a little bit cleaner racing. Uh, we haven't seen any holes really uh, in all the the, the previous uh, qualifying uh, series. So um, uh, yes, we have more wind. It is aggressive, but uh, remember, uh, you're not allowed to touch each other's boats. That's one of the main rules of uh, safety rules. Yeah, and it's interesting what happens later today at the jury meeting because there can happen something there. But right now, South Africa in the lead. And here we can see uh, India, they are really fighting. You can see how they are approaching South Africa. But it looks like South Africa is putting a better angle than Team India going downwind. Uh, again, India is having, you can see it here on the graphics, is having issues downwind where, where Malaysia and South Africa is really nailing that one. So if India is going into the next round to the finals in Bahrain, or I just have to say for tomorrow, if they keep this points here, then they have a chance to qualify tomorrow then they need to focus on the downwind. Upwind, they were doing a great job in both races. Yeah, I agree. But downwind, terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Every, time, every time they're going downwind, they're getting caught up. Yeah. So they need to find a solution there. Here we have Ian Astley. See how calm he is talking with the team. Where's his tactician right now? He was in the front watching. So um, Yeah, keeping uh, cool, calm, and collective. Uh, not too much uh, talking going on onto that boat. Really staying concentrated. They also know they're in the lead, so, you know, it's a, they feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and the two other boats uh, have yeah. holes in them. But this victory gives them a fantastic uh, cards for tomorrow because if they just finish their race tomorrow, they are qualified for Bahrain. So for them, it's all about finishing first today so the two other teams can battling it out tomorrow. And that's why we might see them also go for a victory tomorrow because they will have more time. There will be more, how can I say, nice out of jibe. pressure. Are they and doing just, it? No, yeah, they're, no, they're no, just they're doing a drop. they're continuing to the opposite side. Uh, no, they're jiving. Oh. Yeah, just, just did uh, a windward drop. Very nice windward drop right there. So that was very clean. Look at that. Uh, all the sails are, are back together. That's a very, very nice drop. Uh, every The spinnaker did not touch the water at all. And then they just smoothly went around. The jib was set. The main was set. Good job. But really well. Turn. Good boat handling. And now, now we are seeing the same tactics as last time. Now let's India, see India going opposite once again. And uh, interesting, if they would do attack straight away, this might give Malaysia a chance to come back in the race because this is where ah, India almost lost it last issues time. putting in that spinnaker. Now, yeah. it's been several seconds that the spinnaker 
as is still not inside the boat and is hanging out. So uh, this could give a chance for oh, Malaysia to come the, back. The, it looks the like sail Malaysia's in the water from sail Malaysia. Into the water, yep. yeah. Looks like though they're coming back. Oh, is that? I think it's. I think it's a lot more than just in the water on the Malaysian boat. I have the impression that they have stopped their boat at the lured gate. Let's hope that's not the case. Maybe we'll get a picture of it, it looks but like it looks like on the graphic it really stopped. They slowed down, they lost momentum. Uh, and and that can be very costly, both with water in the boat, but they are only seven people. Tough, 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 tough. Yeah, come on, guys. Put your heads back into the game. You guys can come back. You know, we, we I always like to root for the for the underdogs here. And uh, right now, uh, it looks like, uh, you know, they're having so many. They've got, they've got a bunch of issues. But mentally, right now, they got to get back into it. That's just, just a, that's an, that's an unfortunate mistake, but that's just because they're not, they're not into it. They're mentally, you know, they've they've uh, they're they're thinking about other things, and they they really got to get back into it. They really need to get back in it. And now we uh, uh, we see them here from inside the boat. There are still only seven people, so uh, some of them are inside the hole, still <laughs> emptying the boat from water. So let's see how they're doing. But they are only 17 meters behind Team India. We see South Africa going towards the middle, India going to the right-hand side, Malaysia going to the left-hand side. Right now, that's the side they want to be in because they're not taking in water when they're on this side. So maybe they are trying to survive by going to the left-hand side. Yeah, and you know, we're talking about their mental state. You really have to think that, you know, there are nine people sailing on this boat and they all have to work together. And if one of them, you know, uh, is not in sync with the rest, uh, then and, and no puns intended. Um, then you know they're not going to be able to, to, to do the maneuvers correctly. And so really, uh, this is this is when it gets really tough. This is the mental part of the game. You know, uh, sailing is it's not just all. It's not just about pulling on ropes. It's not just about hiking. It's about working together, teamwork. You know, making making the dream work. Team India going to the right hand side, hiking over here, nice and slow, but. They're losing a little bit of momentum on South Africa, but they're winning momentum on Malaysia because Malaysia is going all the way to the left-hand side. You can see Team South Africa just there behind them while, while they, are, they are hiking here. So Yeah, Malaysia having to go to the left, having to go to the left. Uh, if they go to the right, I mean, they're, they're on that side with the hole. So, uh, but, but, but still, I can see they just did a, did a tag on the, gra on the graphics. So they are still trying to fight it. They won't, won't, won't lose it. If they can fight and win over in and there's up wind leg and down yeah, leg. South Africa and Team it. India right now are attacking over, so kind of looking like uh, the left-hand side should be good. Now, this should be interesting. We were talking earlier about looking at how the boats cross. Now, let's look at how Team India and uh, Team Malaysia cross to one another, and uh, we'll see which one went to the correct side. Now, did Team Malaysia only go over there because they saw something or they were forced to go over there? Uh, really interesting to see what that cross is going to be like. Yeah, and here we can almost imagine. Imagine the boats are crossing inside each other, draw a line in front of them, and if they're hitting each other, we have some rules they need to follow. Malaysia, they're going in towards the middle. India is also trying to cross into the middle. South Africa is in the middle of the race course right now. It's the third leg, it's the second upwind leg, and this is defining who's having the best position when they're racing towards the finish line. Yeah, exactly, and it's just, a, it's really a, a waiting game now. South Africa is just, you know, making sure they're keeping their speed and they're gonna be placing themselves correctly. What they need to do is place themselves between their opponent and the windward mark and if they can do that uh then they have control over their opponents so well let's see what happens here are they going to tack on top of a team at malaysia and keep control over them or are they deciding to go further to the left just like they did in the previous race because they're seeing something I'm pretty sure that they don't care about Team Malaysia. They just need to do their own race. If they keep themselves in the lead, it's looking very good for tomorrow. 
They just need to race tomorrow and then they are in for Bahrain. And the best case they can have is Team India and Malaysia battling each other for that second position today because then they will do a match race tomorrow. The winner of that match race will qualify for Bahrain. So actually, this couldn't be better for South Africa, but it couldn't also be better for us and the viewers because tomorrow there will be a battle between India and Malaysia. Yeah, that's great. And then we see uh, Team uh, South Africa that's just tacked over. So uh, looks Ooh. like uh, they are uh, attacking on top of their opponents right now. And so they must still think that they're but, a little but, bit worried about. But, but let's see the cross. I want to yeah. see the cross between uh, Malaysia and Team India. Yeah. And then we can really tell who went on the correct yeah. side. Remember, uh, Team India had, had, had quite the lead. Uh, and now they are only 19 meters in front of Malaysia. Malaysia is fighting back even with water in the boat. They're doing it. You can see here on the graphics, they're coming into it. Right now, we have India needs to... Wow, oh, they tacked away. Now, this is quite interesting because if I was India, I might keep them behind them, uh, keep uh, Malaysia behind them. But now we have attack battle. Malaysia is tacking oh, to the left hand side. We're going into attacking duel right yeah. here. So uh, Team India uh, obviously uh, wanted to. That was a kind of a strange thing. I mean, if they did that, they could have. Uh, they could have put a. They, they had the red way. They were on the starboard tack, yeah. uh, and now they've made. Uh, they've made Team um, Malaysia attack to the left, and the left side was the good side to go on. And now we see Team South Africa attacking right on top of Malaysia. It looks to me like the favorite side is the left side. I don't understand why tactically India favored Malaysia by letting them go back to the left-hand side. I think it, it, it's because they are so close to each other. When they're approaching the top mark, India will have to ride away and Malaysia needs to go behind them. You can see another attack from Malaysia here. It's a great battle. India going in again. They are trying to use this rule number 10, this right of way rule. And now Malaysia either needs to bear away, go behind them, or do attack to the left-hand side one again. I think Malaysia is going to attack uh, just underneath them because we said the left-hand side was the better side. So tactically speaking, now Malaysia... Now let's see this. Let's, let's stay on this image. Uh, is Malaysia going to attack right underneath uh, India? Uh, or are they going to uh, duck behind? I don't think so. I, it looks it, to me like they're trying to stay on the left-hand yeah, side. And look, see. Team South Africa, we don't see them right now, but I'm telling you, Team South Africa is just staying on top of their opponents. They're matching the jibes that uh, Team Malaysia is. So we're having a three-boat uh, duel right here. Let's see what's yeah. going on with Team Malaysia. You can right see here. India here. They do another attack. They do, do the same maneuvering again, going on top of Malaysia, and Malaysia tacks away again to the left-hand side. So, Jan, why will you continue doing this? Because Malaysia can actually bear away or going on the opposite side of it, and India continuing in. It's because they want to keep their right-of-way rule? Well, Malaysia has no choice. They have to tack because they'll just be in such bad air that they'll, they'll just stop moving forward. Now, India is, uh, is tacking because apparently they want the right-hand side. So they're seeing something that we're not seeing. Uh, right now uh, but to me I think there's a left hand shift it, uh, it would make sense to go to the left but hey India decided they want the right they might have they might have a little bit more pressure over there and it looks like they're actually managing to stay out in front so yeah, and uh, another right now, attack another attack from team India Rachel you need to help us a little bit how is the weather conditions out there is it the left hand side or the right hand side or in the middle where is the wind so I would think uh, the left hand side. Uh, also because India, it, it's you know it's fighting to keep that right hand side, uh, sorry the starboard advantage, but they're basically sailing also on the left side of the race course. So what they're doing here, I think it's match racing 101. So they're just pushing the opponent um, on the port side to keep that you know advantage when they will be on ley line. So this is what I think is happening. And I think that upwind, um, Team India is doing well, they're maneuvering well, but I have to say also Team Malaysia, with all that they're going through, it's really doing all right. Um, out of this match racing in the back lines, of course, the, the one gaining advantage and margin is Team South Africa. They're going smoothly up towards the uh, top mark, which is still quite far away, I have to say. And South Africa is also tacking now. So, I mean, it is the left-hand side, but not as close to the to the 
uh, coast as it was earlier on. So it's more uh, left and middle, I would say. Thank you, but Rachel. But I think uh, what Team India is doing is match racing. It's match racing, and that's also what we're seeing in the studio, Jan. It's a small match race, but again, quite interesting. If the pressure is on the left-hand side, India, they're, they're just protecting their right away right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's, uh, like she said, uh, you know, basics, uh, you're trying to, to, to protect, trying to set yourself up, actually, for that windward, windward mark. Yeah, and now it is soon running out of racetrack. Soon they will continue towards the top mark because they are approaching the go. ley look, line on the left side. Look at this image. It's just wonderful. We see Team India right there. Uh, well, we don't see them anymore. There they are. There they see are. See how close they're getting. Yeah, now let's see what they're going to they're, they're surely going to attack right in front of the Malaysian team. Uh, they have to ride away either. Malaysia needs to attack away or to go behind them because they're approaching the ley line. What will go. they do? India continues. Oh. India is attacking right in front of them. Great in Malaysia in a here. terrible spot. Now they're getting close to the ley line. Uh, so uh, perhaps Malaysia will attack again, or maybe they're just going to ride this out. But um, it's a long way to ride it out. It's a long way to ride it out. They have water inside the boat. They had a collision in the start. They are battling their way back. It's like the monsoon. It's very terrible in the start. And then you just adapt to the monsoon. All the water, all the rain. And now they're battling with India. If they're winning this battle against India, they will be in a position where they can have a tie tomorrow and just uh, keep one point through India. That's very good for them. So they're fighting for everything. If they have to go out of the race because of the technical issues, then there will be two points in between them. And then India will have the, uh, the best conditions for tomorrow. But right now, it's a match race between two countries to go to the finals in Bahrain. Yeah, I mean, that hole is, you know, that hole is just sucking all the blood out of there just like a vampire you know it's such uh, <laughs> unbelievable what's happening uh what's happening for this team is really unfortunate but uh they're still in it they're still look at them you can see them back there it's, it's team south africa really has gotten much much further out uh and and they're they're having a clean lead look look they seem they're all very focused and composed and uh, all hiking out and getting that weight out and making sure that boat is, is straight. That's a beautiful shot right there. Oh, here you can see actually Malaysia is having the boat more straight up than India. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like is they that are the water supporting them right now, <laughs> or, or <laughs> what's happening? The, right now, India is setting 0 0.1 knots slower than Malaysia, so you can almost see that on the pictures also here. Yeah, I think that you know probably right now what the, what uh, what's happening is that. Um, Team India needs to think about the three uh, the three uh, boat length mm -hmm. rule as we're getting up there, uh, close to, to that windward mark. And so they definitely uh, cannot let uh, Team Malaysia have the overlap as they come into the uh, into that three three length rule. And probably what they're trying to do is just make sure they're staying out in front, going a little bit higher. So that might be why they're they've got a little bit more heel on that boat. We've been talking of different rules. Here we have South Africa rounding the offset mark, going downwind for the last time to Fort Lake. They must be very happy because right now they are racing towards the finals of Bahrain the day before the Golden Day. So great job by the captain there. But we're talking about different rules today. There's two rules we're talking about. The starboard port side rule 10. Uh oh, uh oh, we've got an issue here with South Africa on their spinnaker. It looks like oh, we've got a knot in the middle. Is it coming out? Yes. Woo, that was a close one. Good thing they're far out in front. I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, no, that's saying. really good. But here we can see they're coming to this mark. Then imagine three boatlands is showing uh, some different rules in here. But they are clear stone, so they are free. India rounding that mark. But Malaysia just behind them. Yeah. So now we're going to see a downwind fight also. Yeah, this, should, this is going to be a, a battle. I think a battle of epic proportions right here because Malaysia really, really needs to take, uh, you know, take action and and attack as hard as oh. they can. See that See that bow? How deep is in the water? There is a lot of water in that boat right now. It's deeper in than the rest of the fleet, so they are still fighting with water. See, he's trying to pull up the spinnaker. It's wet, 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 but it needs to go up. Yeah, tough work right there. There goes uh, India with a dry spinnaker, putting it up. Come on, boys, let's keep it going here. Have a clean hoist. Looking pretty good, looking like they're struggling. Ah, oh. Not bad yet, doing a good job. Here we go. 
Team Malaysia with their wet spinnaker. That's really tough right now for them right there. Oh, they got they're it fighting. You can almost see it. In there. Yeah. And it's up, but you can see how Those wet this spinnaker is. Yeah. You can see it on the colors. <laughs> yeah, it almost looks a little transparent right there. Yeah. It so looks, they look like body language right now. They look like they're back into it. It looks like, uh, looks like they're sort of like on a, on a sort of a warrior sort of mentality right now. Um, and that's really, that's, I'm really glad they, uh, to see that. I, I want these guys to, to be able to come back. I mean, uh, it's always great to have, uh, have the underdog be able to, you know, to come back. And they weren't the underdog when we started all this. They were the underdog against India and South Africa. But one thing is for Malaysia, they need to finish the race. But if they finish in front of India, they will have a two-point lead for tomorrow. And that will give them actually the upper hand for going into Bahrain. But if they go in third, there will only be one point in between them. Then it's the team that's winning tomorrow or getting the best position that's qualified for Bahrain. So for the viewers, it's best India ends up second. And for uh, Malaysia, it's best that they actually winning over India. So now the battle down win is, and there's only 70 meters in between these two boats. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we're in race number five. Uh, this is the fourth leg, the second downwind. And uh, we're seeing here a very nice battle uh, that's, uh, that's, that's going on. For the time being, uh, I think uh, uh, Malaysia is just trying to set themselves up in order to be able to cast a wind shadow over India. We might be seeing some jiving, jiving duels uh, a little bit later on. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, and you can see the projected results as we're talking about. Malaysia right now and India, there's one point in between them. South Africa, they're clean. They're four points to, this, to the newest opponent. So no matter what happens tomorrow on Golden Day, where points can't double, if they lose, they're still qualified. But Malaysia and India, they are in a, in a match race tomorrow. Another but if Malaysia winning over India, they will have, uh, have 10 points. And India will have seven points. And then India really needs to fight it tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And as you were speaking, uh, we saw another bucket of water coming out of that <laughs> boat. Uh, you notice how the guys are... There's another bucket. Yeah, notice how those guys are, are sitting a little bit further back. If, if you guys have been watching the other qualifying sessions, uh, we, we saw everybody sort of leaning, sitting on the on the front of the boat. Like you know, like you said, you know, they're, they're not just sitting there, you know, lizarding and doing nothing. Uh, they were they were there because they wanted to pick the back of the boat up and make it go faster. Well, now we have more wind, and everybody's sort of sitting further back in the boat to make sure that the bow is not you know planting and into planting the, in the water, yeah. planting into the water. <laughs> so uh, we're seeing different positions now from see we got three guys there in the back uh, uh obviously the tactician but we also have probably the number one who's uh sitting out in the back there and uh these boats are very very sensitive to the weight so even though you know we're talking maybe about a 10 15 kilo difference between each each uh team uh, it, it can make a difference it can make a difference, and Malaysia and India is almost the same weight. There's only four kilos in between them, but Malaysia, they have a lot of water in the boat right now. Yeah, so, so that's a lot more than four kilos. So that's more than four kilos. I'm pretty sure they might have 100 kilos with them right now extra. And we can see on the speed that they're losing momentum. They're now 100 meters between Team India. And it's not because of the angle, it's more because of the speed. Malaysia dropping down 9.1 knots, India 10.3 knots. So they are trying to find this losing, jibing in towards the middle. And there we go. And it doesn't look like India has followed them, so they're just doing it to make sure that they will keep some wind, capture some wind speed. Yeah, I mean, India can't just jibe right after them because it'd be in their wind shadow, so they have no choice. They have to go a little bit further. And also, we've seen that by going a little bit further means that down, that, you know, they're probably at this point calculating how many jibes they're going to need in order to pass that finish line. So that's probably why we see Team India on the right-hand side of your screen right there going further off to the left. Or else it's a show-off for the spectator boat over there. They just want to wait for them. No, it's not. They are really fighting for it. There and it I is. know That's there's a huge focus on that. Team India needs this second position to be able to qualify for Bahrain tomorrow in the battle against Malaysia. And this is the best news ever for South Africa. They must be very happy when they're crossing that finish line because they are into the finals if this continue, 
being like this. Lucky for them, there's no whales in this lake, so they, <laughs> they will not be delayed or cancelled because of whales coming up. We have seen that in all the sailing events, but here, South Africa in the lead, India in second, and Team Malaysia in third at the moment. Yeah, Team Malaysia uh, attacked a little bit earlier than the other two. They're going right back into the middle of the uh, of the race course for the time being. Now, uh, they probably saw a little bit more pressure or something that's that's happening. Um, it doesn't look like there is that much pressure. Maybe it's dropped down a little bit. Uh, Team South Africa, right there, are very are very cool. Yeah, and, and Rachel, before uh, before we're coming to the finish line. What's the wind doing? Because I can see on the measurements that they're sailing way slower than the last uh, downwind lake. Uh, there might have been a little shift because both Team South Africa and, and Team India have hoisted the jib. So they're now sailing with Janaker and jib. While the only one with just a Janaker is Team Malaysia and we're very close to them at the moment now. Um, so we are far from South Africa and uh, from Team India, uh, but uh, I can tell you that Team Malaysia is very focused. They keep looking at their um, direct opponent, which is Team India, and uh, they surely understand better where they are because I am in an at an angle where I cannot tell you what's going on exactly in terms of advantages, but you have the tracker. Um, I can tell you that for Team Malaysia, the race is not over. I can see them looking around and uh, um, and trying to find still the best so the best solution. Um, and I don't see anybody at the moment bringing any water out. Their bow is actually not as low in the water as you would think. Uh, it is at the moment, but uh, I've seen it higher. And I think the team also could be, a, my opinion, huh? uh, could be a little bit more on the back to help that bow be lifted out. So if they're right there, it means that they're happy with what they're doing, I think, and with what, how the boat is performing. This is my opinion. Thank you, Rachel. Always good with some eyes on the water and what's happening out there. And, and Jan, quite interesting because right now we're seeing Malaysia going all the way to the right-hand side of the race course. And when they jog towards the finish line like they're doing now, they have to right away. Yeah, they'll have the right away. Right now they're on a port tack. Uh, they're receiving wind from the port hand side. And you see here now they're jiving over and they'll be receiving wind now from the right hand side. So they'll be on the starboard tack. And uh, it's always a question of port and starboard. These are the most important rules in terms of uh, right away. Uh, and then what happens when two boats are on a port tack and the two boats are on the starboard tack? Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a little different, but uh, it's not a question, and a lot of people think that it's a question of, oh, well, you know, I'm going closer to the wind, I'm, I'm, I'm heading into the wind, so therefore I have the right of way, or, or the person who's, uh, who has the wind on a, who's on a run has the right of way over a boat, that's, it's not that at all, it's a question of support and stuff. And right now, it's still the battle, India versus Malaysia, we're looking at. South Africa in this in the lead. South Africa and India is going on port tack, uh, uh, downwind towards the finish line. They are trying to cross the finish line with no extra jibes. Malaysia approaching India, and it's quite interesting. Now we are here with India, and there we have Malaysia. Oh, they are behind India, so it's a little bit too late for them. They're a little bit too far away, so it's only if India needs to do an extra jibe that Malaysia can hope that India is making a mistake. Now we'll see what happens with Malaysia. Are they going to try to cover uh, Team India and, and, and jibe right now? Um, oh, it looks like uh, on that in, in picture look, we have I mean, there too far away. And, what, 220 ah. meters uh, behind? It's looking like it's a little uh, a little too late. Not, not enough. A little bit too late. We can also see it here on the graphics. The finish line approaching South Africa going towards that finish line there we go and they having two wins today four wins in total securing them for Bahrain already yeah four wins out of five races yeah. unbelievable second bullet of the day South Africa very nice and there they're crossing and they're actually very happy out there see saying congratulations and they secured the finals in Bahrain no matter what happens they will go all the way to Bahrain tomorrow. It's only if they can't race tomorrow. So don't drink too much, guys. Don't celebrate too now. You need to finish your race tomorrow to qualify.
<laughs> yeah, I wonder if they'd know this yet. I wonder if they've made the calculations yet, you know? Rather. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, great sailing by these guys. We, you know, uh, that's, we already saw them uh, previously, uh, you know, winning races here. And uh, just uh, good, good teamwork right there. Uh, you know, just uh, as they say, it's an uh, Ubuntu moment for Team South Africa. And now we can see behind the next team coming in is Team India. After that terrible start, getting a penalty, hitting Team Malaysia, they finish second place overall. But there's still a small game after this one because the juries will have a jury meeting tonight where they can decide if there's also going to be discarded a point for, for that collusion because it's written in the rules that you're not allowed to hit the boats. It's safety issues first. So it's all about what the Jews do later tonight. But it's they're put in a position right now where they have a match race against Team Malaysia. Tomorrow there has been fighting. And I have to say, Malaysia coming in here, fighting like giants, fighting against the monsoon and winning. There we go. Malaysia. Good job. Congratulations, guys. Tough race. Really difficult. Uh, difficult conditions. Uh, they, they were really aggressive on the start. Uh, and that sort of uh, that didn't work in their favor. Uh, they were too aggressive and they managed to put a hole in their boats. And uh, yeah, so a disappointing day for Team Malaysia. Yeah, two, two, two times losses in this race opening up the group so it's very good for all of us and now you can see here the shore crew comes straight in they uh, oh do we have a team yeah, going yeah. on look, that look, boat look, look. No, they don't care about talking they need to get down to the bottom that's juan right there yeah. he's the uh he's the big boss of uh of the shore team yeah. uh he uh he's been very worried about about his boat um so he's going straight down there uh, i'm sure he's already got his backpack full of tape full of uh, everything they need and uh, now we're going to be uh, doing a switch here between yeah, uh, the, the teams. These first uh, race, these and, first teams, yeah. And then we have to result South Africa three points, India two points, Malaysia one point, and that will give us an overall score after race number five. That will actually put um, South Africa a little bit in, in, in so much in the lead that no matter what happens tomorrow, look at, they will come in. Look what's happening. There's obviously there's some big discussions going on there with uh, Team Malaysia and the jury and. Uh, yeah explaining what what's going on and, and uh you know what's happening why didn't you give and uh, on the other side of the boat that we've got uh we've got the shore crew which is scrambling to get that boat uh, to not take on any more water so uh there's uh, a yeah. lot of things going on yeah here we have the provincial overall after race number five 13 points for south africa giving a lead of four points tomorrow. Tomorrow is golden day. We'll talk more about that. Malaysia nine, India eight points. So they are very close. Only one point in between them. Tomorrow it's double points. The victory, uh, the winning team tomorrow will have six points. Second place, four points. Third place, two points. Uh, meaning that if India is winning over Malaysia tomorrow, they are qualified in Bahrain. But South Africa already qualified. They can only be four points behind Malaysia. With that said, let's watch the replays of this dramatic race. Rachel, you are on the water together with the winning team, two times winners today, South Africa. How it's going with them? 
Well, we have to be very fast because we see Singapore in front of us. They're already ready to jump on for the swap. So I'm again with Mark, the tactician. Another perfect race sailed by South Africa. You kept out of trouble when there was trouble, like in the start, and then you sail your, your race clear. Yeah, I think we had a really good one. The key was the start. You know, it's a short start line with three boats. It's probably six or eight lengths, the, the start line. So we did a little push on the two boats in front. And uh, as they ran down the start line, they sort of ran out of space for uh, and options. So uh, a nice uh, start to windward. And then it was just clean from there. Yeah, and guys, I've just communicated them that mathematically, if they race tomorrow, they're going straight to Bahrain. How does that feel? Oh, that'll be fantastic. Looking forward to a race tomorrow and going forward and uh, to qualify the country is just, uh, just, just amazing and that's what we're here to do. Thank you. Have you got any questions from studio? No, no questions. Just congratulations to South Africa for these two fantastic two races today. And um, with that, let's uh, go back here to studio because we have a, um, we have a, s a small delay. There's an AP flag up, uh, Jan. And what does that mean? Yeah, so AP basically nope. means <coughs> that uh, we're waiting for, you know, we're waiting for something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, what I'm guessing, uh, there we go, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're realizing now, I think the message has been sent. Yeah, the message has been sent. But one thing is here, let's talk about the incident we just had. Yeah, so like I was saying, yeah. you know, we have the AP flag that's, um, the, you know, that's up right now. And that's probably because there's quite a few things that, that uh, need to happen. First of all, here, look at the incident. Here's the replay right there. We have, uh, we see that there's contact between those two boats on your right hand side. Right there. Here we go. Take a look. Oh, boom. There it is right there. But that that's was a not a hot. hot. Was that a hot? That's, that's quite hard. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty hard. Remember, these boats, they're made out of carbon fiber. They're extremely strong in one you know in one direction as soon as they get hit uh from the side uh they can really very easily have a hole put in put inside them so ap flag uh we're waiting probably for that boat to get repaired and we're also probably waiting for the spare boat to come in yeah. um remember yeah. now we've had three teams racing on the next one we have four teams racing so yeah. we need one more boat to, to to come out there and uh you know all that takes a little bit of time yeah, all that takes a little bit of time. But again, for the first time, a very aggressive start we have. So that was uh, really rude. So, but one thing is for sure, the teams are fighting from one Im important thing, the finals in Bahrain. Yeah. Minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. That was the two first races of today. We just had some quite some battles, some technical f f issues for Team Malaysia. But now we're going into the next group of today. We're going into the other group of Asia, uh, African group, but they have a guest team in there, Team Ukraine. Um, so uh, let's uh, just see the teams here on the screen, who we're going to see in the next race. And there we have South Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Ukraine. What do we know about them, Jan? Well, here we go. Well, let's take a look here at uh, South Korea called the Red Fury. They are SSL ranked number 56 and they're weighing in at 200 and, uh, 725 kilos, uh, which is uh, making them uh, almost the, it's making them the second heaviest team. Uh, uh, the captain for the team South Korea is Jimin Ha. And right next to them, we have the Singapore team, Guardians of the Bay, SSL ranked number 37, weighing in at 580 kilos. So they are very, very light. And they actually, they'll be sailing with 10 people on their boat, as opposed to the others who will be sailing with nine. But yet, they're still... But still so light. Still with so people, light. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, the captain of uh, the team is Jovina Chu. 
Down to your left hand side, we have Team Thailand. Uh, Chang Thai is the name of their team. They are SSL ranked number 42, weighing in at 722 kilos. And uh, the captain here, uh, known as Nai uh, Nopakao Punpat, uh, she, uh, she's, a, she's an excellent racer. Um, we'll talk a little bit about more what she's done a little bit later. And then finally, we have Team Ukraine, Haida Maki. Uh, that's the SSL ranked number 33. They are our best ranked team here this, uh, this whole week. Uh, and they weigh in at 726 kilos. We have the team captain, Ior Matvienko. And uh, he will be seeing him out on the water very soon. And now when we're talking about team weight and sizes, Today, there's a wind out there, and we talked about it in the first two races, how sizes of the sailors means a lot of things. It's like seeing the Vikings from Ukraine. They're quite big, these Ukrainian fighters, according to the other ones, because Thailand and Singapore, not that high and not that big in their body size, and then South Korea in the middle. So is this going to be a very good thing for Ukraine that they have the size and the strength with them? It's definitely an advantage to be heavier. Yes, it is. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that because you're light, you can't, you know, uh, pull pull something out of the pull but, a trick out of no. the bag. But uh, yes, it's an advantage. But let's see the provincial overall in this fantastic group coming up. Four teams fighting for their spot going into uh, Bahrain, and uh, they uh, have been having some quite some close races. To, the last two days. It's Team Ukraine in the lead with nine points, Thailand in second position with nine points, Singapore with seven points, South Korea with four points. And if we're looking into this, Ukraine has been doing a victory. Um, uh, Singapore has been doing an uh, has been doing a, uh, a victory, and then actually Thailand has been doing a victory, but somehow they they lost some points there uh, in that battle. Or it's Ukraine. One of them lost points in race number one. Sometimes that happens because the team registered too late. Then we have South Korea fighting it out, really battling for it. They had a second last and a last and a last position. So they really need to pull up the rapid in these two races to be able to fight for the golden day tomorrow. Yeah, losing points, um, you know, like that is is really unfortunate because we've seen um, we've seen some teams that have just just barely not made themselves qualified uh, because they've lost a point because they've done something you know very very basic stuff you know read the sailing instructions make sure you're on time very simple th things and some of these teams have gotten penalty points because of this and it bites hard and it bites hard right at the very worst moment yeah and with that said let's see the team lineups here of team ukraine is it is it is the ssl gold cup it is the <coughs> qualifying series it's the last group it's two races coming up and now we have team ukraine coming in They've really been fighting for it. Yeah, Team Ukraine here. Uh, we've got um, on, on top uh, on the top side of the um, of your screen here. We see the grinder. Uh, he's uh, he's been to the London Olympics in uh, 2012. He's been sailing uh, lasers, and uh, his name is Kudryashov. Down to the bottom right, we have as the trimmer Matvienko. Uh, he Igor right there. He's was he has been actually three times to the Olympics. He was in uh, the Atlanta Olympics, uh, Sydney Olympics, Athens Olympics, and he was world champion in the 470 class. But he's also taking over the captain's role because Team Ukraine's captain couldn't make it to come here. So he's been taking over the captain's role of this team and then being a trimmer at the same time. So here we see a captain not deciding what's happening on water. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's been tough for them. Obviously, everybody knows uh, the you know what's going on uh, in Ukraine, and uh, we you know we're very pleased to have them here, and they're doing the best they can to be able to fill up the positions on those boats. And right now, they're doing a great job. And the other team they're fighting is Team Singapore. Team Singapore is, is quite an amazing team. One thing that is for sure is here we have a team captain, a female team captain, and it's because of the SSL ranking list, the overall global ranking list here. But what do we know about Team Singapore? 
Well, we have uh, Jovina Chu, uh, which is a 470 specialist at the helm right there. She was at the Rio Olympics. Uh, that would be in 2016. Uh, she also placed uh, fourth at the 470s Women's World Cup. She was, uh, back in the day, she was uh, fifth at the Opti World Championships, which is an extremely good result uh, and uh, most recently she was third at the nation's cup in match racing uh, we also have uh, <clears throat> in the 470 we have uh, Xiu uh, which is a 470 specialist uh, which went uh, to uh, the Beijing Olympics uh, he was uh, also first in the forest 28 category uh, which is the ASAF cup Wow, quite a team, Team Singapore has, but they are not alone here. We also have Team South Korea. They are really struggling and battling for it, but meeting them here uh, this morning, they said, hey, we are going to do our own races today. Yeah, South Korea, um, we have <laughs> an exceptional Helms uh, man who, right there. He, uh, Ji Min Ha, he's been four times to the Olympics. Uh, he was uh, in uh, the 2008 uh, Beijing Olympics, uh, 2012 London Olympics, 2016 Rio, and late in the in the last uh, Olympics in in Tokyo. So uh, qu quite uh, quite a um, quite a sailor right there. We also have <clears throat> that has participated in the 34th America's Cup is the tactician Kim, which is uh, in the back of the boat uh, right there as well mm -hmm. as uh, we have uh, Mr. Cho, who has been two times to the Olympics. He's been to London and Tokyo and not to forget uh, the coach, uh, Mr. Lee, which is down at the bottom right hand side of uh, your screen. He is a 470 coach, which has been uh, which also went uh, yeah. to the Olympics in Rio with uh, some of his teams. So a lot of Olympic experience on this boat. Yeah. And then we have a fast lineup from Team Thailand uh, before we're going into their national anthems. So Team Thailand, uh, we have uh, Nai uh, Punpat uh, that we saw earlier, and uh, should you know that uh, Nai is uh, means boss in, uh, in in Thailand. Uh, in the back we have a tactician. Uh, he's a 49er specialist. He was third at the Junior World Championships. And down at the bottom, uh, we have Dylan Whitcraft. He's a 49er specialist. He was also third at the Junior Worlds and uh, fourth in the ORC World Championship. Quite amazing to see these uh, teams coming in here. And uh, we are looking forward to see them fight on the water. And one thing that is very amazing about the SSL Gold Cup, the Football World Cup, but in sailing, is the national anthems. So let's start with the national anthem of Team Ukraine. Ukraine was here proud representing their nation and next anthem is Team Singapore.
Great seeing the national feeling of Team Singapore. And now, get ready for Team South Korea. Team South Korea fighting for the survival of this SSL Gold Cup and now Team Thailand. And there we have Team Thailand representing their nations. And one thing is for sure, looking at these nations, Jan, really proud of representing their countries. And this is the great, great thing of the SSL Gold Cup. They are here for the nation, not for the sailor. Yeah, exactly. And this is what makes it so different between, uh, you know, all these <coughs> all these different competitions is that uh, actually we have only people that have their passports from their teams that are on these boats. And they're that's how they're representing their team. And talking about representing, let's have an interview with Team Thailand. So the first two days we finished all seconds. So in three lessons we finished seconds. And we, um, I think we are very happy about the result um, because we were training last time in last years. And then we just come back together this year and then we have only a few days for training. Um, we try to focus on our positions and then um, try to work as a teamwork. And then I think we did it well, yeah very happy about that so today is more windy so I think we have to focus more about uh, our position on the boat then we make sure that we don't make any mistake because when we, if we make a mistake it can be like a huge mistake for the boat um, so yeah we have to be more concentrated on the position and work as a teamwork um, but I hope that um, today we can do well and then because today is the second last day so yeah, so if today we do well, so tomorrow can be a bit easier. So in Thailand, um, when they are looking for the SSL event, they see like, oh, this is interesting because it's like a football World Cup. And also we are post many posting many um, things from Facebook, Instagram, so many people can access it and then can see it in, um, in the big pictures. And I think um, many people waiting to see the live stream today. Just hearing Team Thailand saying the SSL Gold Cup, the Football World Cup, are just in sailing. And this is what they're fighting for. We are in the Asian African group with a guest star from Ukraine, battling for qualifying for the finals in Bahrain. Ukraine 9 points, Thailand 9 points, Singapore 7 points, South Korea 4 points. And um, with all that, Rekele or Rachel on the water, how's it going out there? The teams are getting ready for this start. Yes, they're getting ready. They're rounding around us because we're very close to committee boat. I think the conditions are very similar. If possible, the wind has increased a little bit, at least down here and the bottom. Um, 
but I would not be surprised if it was actually more if it was actually stronger also up at the top mark um, it's still choppy it's still wavy it's still very crowded with uh, weekend sailors enjoying their lake because uh, we're actually their guest if you think about it and uh, now I'm looking around there's still no clouds the sky is not as blue as it was so there are some uh, you know some fogs up there um, so it's kind of uh, you know bluish not really blue as we used to see it and uh, yeah here we are it's gonna be a four boat start so even more complicated than the one before so watch out everybody you should know better now that you've seen what can happen watch out the battle is on and Jan the, the wind condition changed there's 10 knots of wind now six knots lower than earlier this morning and and at the same time they, they are saying out there that hey there's coming some clouds uh, Rikila doesn't have her jacket on anymore so what are we looking into now it's midday the wind is shifting yeah, midday. But actually, right now, what we're getting here with these these this wind condition is actually a, a very sort of uh, stable. This is not a thermic wind that, that's happening. We're getting wind out of the north. We've been getting it. It started yesterday. It's going to be going on until a, until about Monday. So we've got another uh, three days of wind coming out of the north, and tomorrow it should be even more windy than today. So we, we wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more wind uh, as the day progresses. As the day progresses, we might see some more wind. As uh, Rachel is saying, maybe there's more wind at the top mark there. But when we are looking into the boats here, here we have Team Singapore, the Guardians of the Bay. And right now they can call the Guardians of the Lake because they need to defend their position because they are fighting against Thailand and they're also fighting against Ukraine to keep up in the lead for the Golden Day tomorrow. So the team that's under pressure in this group is South Korea. So will we see them be more aggressive? Yeah, you know, it, I think, like we said, now that these, now we've changed, we changed groups. They've got three races that they still need to do. We, they've only done half of the races they need to. Um, right now, I think that what we'll probably see is, you know, trying to sail clean, uh, and you know, maybe a little bit of aggressivity. We'll sort of see how things pan out. There's definitely, we've seen Ukraine, you know, uh, sort of at the top of their game, um, uh, sailing quite well. And uh, so I'm, I'm expecting them to, to, to be able to sort of sail a little bit more calmly. And we should, should see a little bit more of a battle between the other boats. We're going to see a little bit battle between the boats. And one thing you can see, now we're on Team Ukraine's boat. See, they are quite bigger in the structure of their body. They're a little bit stronger in the arms, but it's all about boat handling. And until now, it's been on their favorite side that they have this, especially when there's a little bit more wind, that they are a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, because the weight means something. But uh, then we go to uh, Team Thailand, and, um, and, 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 and on Team Thailand, they are not that heavy. <laughs> they, they are the team with 10 persons on, so they, to, to bring up uh, more weight, they put an extra person on, a floater, so they can actually help on all positions. Yeah, that's right, because actually what you have to know is a maximum of 730 kilos, and these boats are only allowed to have 10 people on them. Like, you know, the license of the boat says no more than 10 people on them. So they can sail up to 10 people if they want to, and we've seen that with the lighter crews. Here we see uh, sails heavy, so the front jib, they've changed it. They can put a Jenniker if they want to. I mean, I'm sorry, they can put another jib, a, a bigger jib when it's lighter conditions. We saw that LA2, that tells us uh, the track and, and uh, what we'll be doing, which is the same thing as last time. So two windwards, two leewards. Yep. And then we also saw the direction of the wind. Um, I didn't know if you yeah. saw that we said direction 50, so yeah. it looks like it's shifted a little bit left yeah. from uh, from this morning. And let's just uh, get ready for the start. There's one minute to the start. You can see the starting line out here. There's no boats in here. It's because they're trying to come in with <laughs> speed at the moment. And it's not like I, I saw a commentator once commentating, oh, the boats are going to the finish line. This is the starting line, and it is almost a finish line because it's also a battle for a very good start. Ukraine is on the inside, slowing down. Then we have Thailand, Korea, and Singapore. See the bears away, trying 
trying to go behind the yeah, fleet we'll to see position Ukraine. themselves. Definitely see Ukraine right there. They want to be that lured boat yeah. so that they can stop everybody else. Now, we got to just, they got to make sure that, uh, see, there you go. They're they bearing defending, away. They're yeah. making sure. What was that? Is that Thailand? Yeah. I was trying to get yeah. right behind yeah. them. There goes Ukraine again. 27 seconds. So it's Oof. just really. The uh, gate is locked. Yeah, let's. Ooh, it's gonna be really yeah. tough for those two teams that are closest to us right now because it looks like they're getting stopped by Thailand. 15 seconds left to go. Now Ukraine can bear away, get some speed, oh, and fast. get a super too fast, fast start. <laughs> Nine seconds. See there. There. Ukraine oh. is gonna get a great start out of this. Four seconds. Two seconds. There we go. It's a going? clean start. Thailand. With an okay start, Ukraine coming in, and then we see, is it Singapore? Ukraine bearing away yeah. too far. They weren't on the line. That was, uh, I can't believe it. They, you know, they, they had the uh, time and distance uh, right there. Looks right now, definitely looks like uh, Team Thailand got the yeah. best start. Yeah, and here we see uh, the white team here, uh, South Korea, not the best start, got caught behind all of them straight away tax to the right hand side and um, if you just joined in the channel and you you haven't seen a ssl gold cup before and you're cheering on your team then you need to know they're racing upwind towards the top mark then rounding an offset mark and the way they're doing is they're zigzagging they cannot just sail straight up uh, hill so right now we're seeing south korea going to the right hand side of the race course and rest of the fleet going to the left hand side of the race course so they're splitting up that's right, and don't forget to go on the social media because you will be able to find uh, your team. You'll be able to follow them. You can see a whole bunch of pictures on them. Uh, you know, come to the come to the SSL uh, 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 social media on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. Instagram. Uh, so yeah, we've got a lot of uh, you know. You could there we go. You can follow us right there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. So. That's where you'll see uh, all of the information and some amazing pictures. We have yeah. photographers that have come here that are just absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, and here we see the battle coming up win. We see Ukraine followed by Thailand. Thailand's a little bit in the lead. They're covering up with Ukraine while they're going up win. On the inside, we have Singapore slowing a little bit down uh, in there. And then we have K South Korea, you can see in the opposite side, in the left-hand side of the picture. You can see them going to the right-hand side, losing momentum almost 100 meters behind. But 100 meters in sailing in the SSL 47 boats and here at the SSL Gold Cup, it's nothing. We just saw in the downwind lake in the last races we had today that 200 meters was not a lead. That is a lead you can lose. Yeah, right now it's a drag race, and look, these two boats are very, very close together between Ukraine and Thailand right right now. Uh, I mean, look, they're almost, you know, leaning on top of each other's boats right now. So it's a real, it's a drag race. The advantage right now going to Ukraine as they're casting a windward wind shadow, and we can see slowly but surely Thailand is sort of falling behind. So uh, right now, are we going to see a remake of the first race? Uh, where we saw uh, Thailand or we saw Malaysia that was sort of in stuck between two boats right there. So right now, Thailand in a difficult position. Yeah, in a very difficult position because they are caught in a sandwich. But there is still some distance to Singapore. But you can almost imagine if they tack, turn to the right-hand side where uh, Singapore is here, Team Singapore, then they will hit the boat or they have to go behind the, the other boat because there are some rules from right away. But see, now the tack is go. coming in. So, oh, Singapore is getting ready. Will they tack in yeah. front of them or what will happen? Will they continue the course? No, they tack above them here. They're going to tack just beneath them and uh, casting that wind shadow. So exactly like we saw in the first race, Malaysia getting stuck between two boats. Now, let's see what happens because Team Thailand looks like they've got quite a bit of speed. And if they can just get on top of uh, Team Singapore, then uh, then uh, Team Singapore will no longer have that advantage. So really important right now for Thailand to, to sort of uh, concentrate on, on speed uh, in order to be able to, to stay alive. And this is quite interesting because we have some small battles for positions. South Korea, not the best start. They're coming to the rest of the fleet here. But Ukraine is taking the lead because Thailand and Singapore is going to battling it out right now. So they are outside of this battle and not coming in. There you can see South Korea, they are attacking in, trying to come back to the rest of the fleet here. You can see how they are hiking up, speeding up in starboard. And if Thailand and Singapore is battling too much, 
they will win momentum and it looks like they're speeding up and approaching the others and will have to ride away. Yeah, interesting to see now what the cross is going to be like. As we saw that Team Korea went off to the right-hand side. They've only put in one tack. Uh, same with the two teams that have gone over to the left. Now uh, we'll really be able to see which side was better. Remember, uh, Team Thailand got the best start out of everybody, and Team Korea got the worst start. They were the slowest and the last ones to get through the through the uh, through, through the line. So if uh, Team Korea can come back up to Team Thailand, and we'll know the right hand side was a little bit better. And just to make a little bit more exciting, South Korea is sailing 8.4 knots of, uh, of speed, where the rest of the fleet are 7 to 7.3 knots of speed. So they're speeding up and approaching Thailand and Singapore. You can see it here. Will they approach with enough speed to make sure that the other boats need to tag and bear away, or will they go behind That's them? That's right, because Korea right now has got the right away. They are on starboard tack. They have to right away over the uh, two other boats. Now, if the other boats... Oof, you oh, can almost see it here. Perhaps Singapore can pass just in front of, uh, of Team uh, South Korea, but uh, not sure. Let's oh. see what happens here on the live. This is going to be very interesting. It looks like both the boats will be able to tack to be able to go in front of Team Korea. Uh, but for Team Korea to be able to come back into the game like that kind of tells me the right-hand side was a little bit better. But let's see here, they're coming in here, they're going behind, see how close it is, almost will perform at world time. And they need to go to the left-hand side, where you can see Ukraine went all the way to the left-hand side. They will only have one issue, is that they will come from port side when they're going to the top mark. But they're catching speed in that boat, and Korea is following them, oh, straight away. Team Thailand is following uh, Team Korea right now, leaving Singapore, going to the right-hand side. So yeah. that was a good attack from South Korea. Very good attack, yeah. Very good. And they, they managed to get themselves back into the game. So this is really nice. We're seeing these three boats right here are very close racing. Um, and that's great because we don't want to see a big split in the beginning. Uh, we also uh, were seeing uh, from our screen that Team Ukraine has tacked back to, to come back into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Remember, Team Ukraine and Team Thailand were really neck and neck. Um, so it'll be interesting here to see really is the left yet again better than the right it kind of looks like it. it looks like having gone out to the left just like South Africa did on the last one and they've been gaining but see the meters see the measurements Ukraine is losing momentum on Thailand at the moment so if Ukraine is not watching out and they're not catching the wind and speeding up that boat maybe doing a bigger angle on the wind they will lose their position to Thailand because Thailand has to ride away but everything is open there's only 200 meters in between the leader and the fourth position so there's a huge battle in here here we have team Singapore the lightest team we have 535 kilos yeah that's very light yeah for sure yeah and yeah, Singapore guardians of the bay <laughs> Guardians of the Lake, as you said. Yeah, they're really fighting it up. And right now, they are in a good position, going all by themselves to the right-hand side, to the ley line, where they can tag in, have to ride away on the other boats. So even if it looks like the fleet is splitting up, Singapore is, in my opinion, is one of the best positions right now if there's wind where they're approaching at the top mark. Yeah, I, it's tough. You know, I... I, I, I I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. I, I think that Ukraine is in, is in a powerful position. I know they're they're on a port attack and they don't have the right of way, but it, it just kind of looks like, uh, having gone out to the left, they've got a significant lead, and it just seems like it keeps on shifting, and we, we've been seeing all day from this morning as well, uh, you know, the race course has been shifted a little bit left so. and while talking about shift we just see here behind uh, team thailand how uh, team south korea is going to the right hand side once again going away from that battle they've got covered by thailand and see thailand is watching hey what is singapore doing out there what is singapore doing out there will they tack in in front of us how it's going because we still have the same same uh, distance in between them. Singapore is winning momentum on Ukraine and Thailand at the moment. And Korea is keeping the distance to all the teams. So right now it looks like Singapore is doing a great job. Looks like they're doing a great job and everybody's sort of keeping the same speed. So this is really nice to see. We've uh, pretty similar speeds uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, w the windward speed. 
Uh, Ukraine just passed in front of Thailand. Ukraine went mm -hmm. out to the left, so the left is definitely better than the right, or at least it was. Now let's see if that continues to be the case. Yeah, and just to inform you what's happening, Team Singapore, 8.4 knots of speed. Team Thailand, 7.0. Team Ukraine, 7.6. And South Korea, 8.4 knots of speed. So right now, in the right-hand side, they are capturing the wind speed much better, or they are sailing with a better angle, and it looks like they are sailing with an angle around 35 degrees upwind, where the other boats are opening up the angle a little bit more. So they are actually doing the boat bit, bit of boat handling right now yeah you know those speeds that we're seeing uh, we're seeing them you're not seeing them but uh, uh, it really depends on the mode that they're trying to go into I mean and like you said there's a high mode and there's a low mode and uh, it really depends on, on, on what they want to do uh, generally and, and we saw this with plenty of other teams in the other qualifying series they're always saying Fast is good. Fast is good. So we're, we're really going to be seeing some teams that are going to be maybe having less angle to the wind, but going a little bit faster. And it seems to have paid out. And it seems to pay it out because it's all about speed, speed, and speed. I talked with Team Ukraine this morning, and they said, hey, we only focus on one thing. It's the speed, keeping the speed. And we also see they're not that aggressive with their tacks. They have been doing two tacks. The rest of the teams have been fighting, looking for the wind, going to the middle. No, Ukraine, left-hand side, up towards the middle, one tack towards the mark. Great job by them. They're keeping the speed. And one team that is having the speed right now is Singapore. Thailand might be in trouble when they are meeting at the top mark. Yeah, we'll see what happens between these three teams. Uh, remember, we said they had pretty similar speeds. Now we see that uh, team, what is it, Team Singapore has tacked over, and uh, so they'll have one more tack than uh, Team uh, Korea, uh, which makes me think that if they're catching up and if they cross, they will have the right away. Uh, they're actually much faster. Yeah, they are much, much faster. Korea coming with speed, South Korea there. But Singapore will be above them in a starboard port side. But I'm looking at Thailand over there because Thailand is coming in port side also. South Korea, uh, Singapore is speeding up a little bit. I know it's 50 meters in between them, but we have seen 50 meters doesn't mean anything here. It's 50 meters towards the top mark. It's not 50 meters in between the boats. That's right. And it, all we need is just a small little shift to the right. And uh, those 50 meters are going to go from 50 to zero. So. Um you know, anything can, can really happen, and, and you're right, what's going to be interesting right now is going to be that cross between uh, Thailand and Singapore. And here we have Ihor, the captain of, of Team Ukraine. He was winning gold at the Olympics, and right now it looks like he's leading his team into a lead here in the SSL Gold Cup qualifying series, and they want to go all the way into the finals in Bahrain and representing their country, doing the tag towards the top mark. This is only their second tag upwind, and that's towards the mark. So keeping the speed, keeping a simple racing this time. So that might be a good, good decision for them. Yeah, and they look very composed, you know. They look very, like, you know, concentrated. They know what they're doing. They're not rushing. They're not jumping out of the boat. Uh, you know, very uh, methodical on what they're doing. So uh, great to see that team. Uh, <laughs> You know, calm and collective. See those pictures there. Thailand going in between Singapore and Ukraine. Singapore missed time to top mark a little bit. See, they need to do a double tag. And that's opening up for South Korea to come in and pressure them. So right now, Ukraine in the lead, Thailand in second, Singapore. Oh, see, now they're turning the boat up towards the mark, losing momentum, but, but sailing up to it. So, Rachel, what are we seeing out there? Where is the wind and how are they fighting up here at the top mark? So the fight is on, uh, but the wind, I don't want to get into that game because if a very <laughs> talented uh, uh, tactician here don't know exactly where to go, I am not even getting in there. What I can tell you is that it's not as strong as it was during race one and two of today, um, but it is stronger than down at the gate. So I would guess we're about between eight, ten knots, something like that. Um, Team Ukraine is uh, showing once again they are um, probably the best of the fleet, they're superior to the rest because they had an amazing tactical first leg and now a beautiful maneuver 
at the top mark. Uh, behind them, it's uh, Team uh, Singapore. Um, they did a, sorry, Thailand. They're very similar, the jerseys. Uh, they did uh, not such a good maneuver as uh, the Ukrainian. And now it's uh, Singapore. They're the lightest of this fleet. Um, so maybe they're happy that the wind dropped a little from uh, the first part of the day. Um, they're hoisting now and they're not actually. So this, the kite is going up, oh, oh, up, yeah. up, up, still a little bit to go. And now it's up, but uh, behind them, South Korea did a better job. So they probably gained some seconds there because their kite was up earlier. It's going to be a fight downwind uh, to keep this position for everybody. And the first jibe is by Team Singapore. Yep. Rachel, uh, I Rachel, think they're going to stay on the yeah. right. Yep. Thank you very much from the eyes on the water. We, we just saw an interesting battle here at the top mark. First, we saw Singapore mistiming the top mark rounding, where they did almost like a race car, just come into the mark, go to the right, go to the left. Luckily for them, they had speed enough on the boat, but they lost momentum, and that's why South Korea is so close on them now. Yeah, <coughs> what happened is uh, they actually they tacked a little bit too early when they were uh, before they were setting themselves up on the on the ley line, and uh, so sometimes that can happen. And so exactly, they kept their speed in order to, to sort of. Uh, uh, do a, a broach maneuver so that they can head straight into the wind but then the problem is it stops the boat so uh yeah obviously when you stop the boat the, the guys behind you are going to be ca catching up right and this is also why we are seeing singapore going in towards the middle we see ukraine and thailand south korea going to the left hand side of the race course like we saw in the last race going out there but ukraine are a little bit in trouble thailand can almost attack them now is this the same conditions when we saw cuba battling um, um, against, um, I can't remember, it, it was Oman, where Oman was coming in the same position as Thailand, and then used the rules to pressure Cuba way out of the, uh, of the ley lines, and then tag a uh, jibe above them. Yeah, you know, like we said, the teams look very nice and composed, but once, uh, if they can start to get on top and, and, and put a little bit of pressure on them, uh, then it, you know, it changes the whole game. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see if they can keep their composure or if they're going to be uh, starting to make some mistakes. Thailand is winning momentum. That's very exciting because right now they have to grab some Ukraine. Ukraine only have one thing they can do, continue their path to the left-hand side or take a jibe and get jibed above. And now we're seeing, is that jibe coming in from Team Thailand? It looks like it, so maybe uh, they're doing a little bit earlier than uh, Ukraine. That's quite interesting call. And see they're speeding up there. Yes, 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 yes. And there they're coming in. Great one done by them here. Interesting, and it looks like they have been following Team U Ukraine. So they actually putting wind shadow on team Ukraine right now. So they need to go a little bit closer to Ukraine and then they can pressure them a little bit more. Yeah, we were just seeing right there on that onboard shot right there with uh, the grinder. Uh, his nickname is Bang, and that's, I think, a very good uh, nickname uh, for, uh, for a grinder because he really does have to put in that power in order to, uh, to make that, uh, that, that spinnaker change yeah. size. And here you see team Ukraine talking together but you can also see the tactician how he's looking to the side all the time what's happening thailand coming in they're approaching 30 meters it looks like thailand is going to attack ukraine they're going maybe to take the lead ukraine on the inside uh, thailand on the outside you can see it here and soon thailand will throw dirty on ukraine if they don't jibe another time and then ukraine will lose momentum but ukraine has a little bit advantage because they can pressure thailand uh, all the way to the to the opposite side. Yeah, what's really interesting right now is to look at the boat speeds that we are seeing. Uh, we're, we've got both Ukraine and Thailand are the fastest boats right now that are sailing in, in the downwind. And the reason for that is because Ukraine does not want to get taken over. They don't want to get passed by Thailand. So they're sort of heading up closer to the wind. So they're going faster, but they're also now adding distance. And it's a great way for the rest of the other two teams, Singapore and Korea, to be able to come back because of this fight right here. So you see Ukraine is sort of turning left, going closer to the wind in order to block Team Thailand. 
In Thailand, what are they doing? Well, they're going left as well because they want to be able to catch up. So really, they're sort of having their little battle. These two have got to make sure that they don't, you know, have such a battle that the, the other guys are going to come back into the into yeah, the war. But the interesting thing is who jibes the first because right now they can just continue their path and if Ukraine keeps that distance to Thailand and keeps speeding up here and not getting caught in which you see how close it is then they will, can raise almost two watts the finish line and then it's all about will they do a split or will they jibe or yeah. will Thailand slow and jibe behind it well, because Singapore is now coming from the opposite side. Yeah, right now they've got a lot of speed and we were seeing from the, those onboard shots, I mean those are just awesome shots because uh, they're defending right now and look at, look at the bow waves, look at how fast those boats are going into the water right now. You know, they're, the, yes, the, the wind has dropped a little bit but they're still at like about 10 knots and uh, they're just cruising so we're getting some really nice images right now a really nice battle between ukraine and thailand and uh they're battling it out and it's just giving room for singapore and korea to come back into the game yeah and come back in the game and i'm watching the overall graphics right now it looks like singapore might come back in the game but let's uh, just stay here on thailand because see they're really focusing shall we attack ukraine even more or shall we slow down and go behind ukraine because Will they do attack at the gate mark or will they do attack before and then coming into the gate mark the opposite way? You see the angles of the boats has changed. You can see Ukraine's. Yeah, Ukraine is away. trying to not, you know, constantly be going upwind. And uh, if he sees that uh, Thailand is, is coming back on him, he's going to love. So right now he's, he's going to love. What's going to happen is, is uh, Team Ukraine is going to push Thailand as far as, as they can. Uh, on the ley line before they jive, so that that's that's definitely what's going to be happening. If we, but if we go back and we look at uh, Team Thailand, uh, you know, at the helm, we said we had a uh, Nai right there, and uh, her, like I said, her name means boss. But you know, you got to understand something about her. She's the Opti World Champion, and uh, so she's a, you know to become an Opti World Champion, um, it, it's a it's a big thing. She's also a 29er World Champion. Uh, and she currently sails on TP-52s. So, you know, she might be uh, a small woman in there, but she, she's, a, she's a big woman in terms of what she's done uh, in the sport of sailing and uh, in terms of her leadership skills as well. You know, that's, that's why she is the, the captain uh, of that team. So, um, Thailand, look, here we go. They're trying to push Thailand as far out as they can towards the uh, ley line. And uh, they've probably jived now because they want the left-hand side. Yeah, it's all about the thing. You can see Thailand is keeping a little bit more uh, there she is. To, to, to the right-hand side of the race course. Ukraine going towards the left-hand side. And it looks like Thailand is following them. So they're going to to the left side the, uh, and on the right side you will see uh, the gate mark there you can see they're going there but it looks like ukraine might have mistimed it and that's huge trouble because then thailand will have to ride away and ukraine needs to bear away so good maneuvering by thailand bad maneuvering by ukraine if this graphic is coming in so um so that's uh, that's what's coming in so there we go um so there we go. Ukraine is on the right. We can see uh, see uh, Thailand coming in here uh, also. Uh, and now they're coming. They are coming in. It looks like Thailand is pressing Ukraine. Ukraine missed time that. They had to take the spinning go down. Thailand coming with speed. There might be a red flag here. Ukraine has the spinning go in the water. They are inside the thing. They need to give room. Let's see Ukraine. Thailand or oh, Thailand needs to bear away because of the mark rounding zones here. Ukraine just managed to clear stern coming in with, with Is three, that three boats right coming now? in. Yeah. Look, they're going too far. They're going yeah. a little bit further down than uh, th than the uh, th than the uh, th than the buoy right there. It looks like looks like Ukraine actually did it on purpose in order to be able to head downwind and have no problems taking down their spinnaker, even though they took it down early. And it looks like Thailand was very eager. To be able to uh, to come back into the game, but they uh, they had a little bit of a problem. They went too far. They went too far, but but the, the biggest problem was when we're seeing the replay afterwards. Now we can see. Let's just see here South Korea uh, coming in. Looks uh, pretty smooth right now. Yeah. Oh, they got some line in the waters, but that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks great, but they lost momentum. Can you see that? 
And then uh, yeah, Team Singapore coming water. in. They need to do a double job. But the, going back to the bat, Ukraine versus Thailand. Ukraine versus Thailand. The reason why Thailand was coming in with so much speed, they were overpowered. But Ukraine was clear stern coming into the mark zone. So there's three boat lens in there. And and they were clear stern. That means that Thailand needs needs to give give the room for it. So maybe the replay is coming up here. Uh, there we can see here. See there, Ukraine is inside the mark rounding zone. They're clear stern. So Thailand needs needs to bear away, or they will have the penalty. Yeah, there's, well, I think there's two things. You're right, absolutely. They had the they had the right away. But another thing that's really important, right? When you have this much wind, one thing that's very important when you have this much wind is that you have to be able to make a clear good rounding. Now look at what's happening to Thailand. They came in very fast, really hot, but they missed the buoy. So uh, sometimes being a little, you know, cautious as you're coming into these uh, lured gates and lured buoys, taking it, your spinnaker down a little bit earlier, being really on a run is actually a big advantage. And we saw Team Ukraine do that. And look, look at the results. You know, they yeah. still kept their lead. They still kept the lead. They keep the, the they keep the speed into that boat. So Ukraine in the lead, Thailand in second, South Korea in third. Now Singapore dropped to fourth after this gate mark rounding. But but it's quite interesting because here we see the difference. It's a boat handling, and it's all about the rules. And here it was rule 18 slowing down Thailand. So they need to do something. And when they lost momentum, these boats it takes 12 to 20 seconds to speed up again. Yeah, exactly. And this is why you know you've. Obviously, Ukraine, you know, uh, we thought perhaps they had missed their last jibe. No, they didn't miss it at all. They did it on purpose so that they could bear away and really have the spinnaker fall behind the main sheet onto the deck. And they did it very well, and they managed to get around, as opposed to in Thailand, which came in hot, didn't manage to get their spinnaker down, and missed the mark round. Yeah. And, 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 and I also have to say, great job by... Uh, by the captain Ihor. You can really see the Olympic experience here because he came into the mark rounding zone and I would call it a mark rounding trap. A little bit of trap setting up because he slowed down in there, but, but because he was clear stern coming into it, Tana needs to bear away. Yeah, he had the right away. Yeah. So he kept his position, so great job there. And now the waves are coming in. Yeah, we're, we're looking at some it. waves breaking over the bow right there. We yeah. just saw that. So, uh, Really nice to see uh, see those boats. Now they're trying to depower the boats is what's happening right now. So, uh, you know, all this time, these qualifying sessions, they've been trying to power up their boats as much as they can, put the biggest sails out there. Well, today, they're doing the opposite. They're trying to not be overpowered. They're trying to really be able to use that wind to go fast, to go forward, and not to lean over and, you know, and. It's really, really great by them. But this is also giving us a, a, a very interesting scoreboard coming up right now. Protectual, we, we, we have Ukraine will take the lead right now. They will get four points when it's coming in. Uh, Thailand will get three points. South Korea right now, two points. Singapore, one point. And it was Thailand, Singapore, Ukraine that is battling for the best result for the Golden Day tomorrow in these two races today. This is race number one. And it looks like Ukraine is doing a great job. So uh, let's uh, let's see how, how, how they're fighting up. Why we are looking here at Team South Korea? They they need to get a second place to to actually stay in this battle or win the next one. Yeah, it, it, I mean, we see that the wind has dropped a little bit down. We have uh, you, you know the the main sheet track uh, jib track uh, main sheet track, which is quite quite up, and uh, the boom is uh, almost in in the middle of the. In the middle of the boat, and that tells me that uh, now um, the wind, you know, it seems like it's dropping, and they're trying to have to power up the boats a little bit more. So on those onboard shots, you get some uh, really good information about what's going on out there. Really great. Ukraine in the lead, Thailand in second. Ukraine and Thailand is following each other, meaning that Ukraine is covering up Thailand. Behind them, we see South Korea is is tacking to the right hand side. They might be in trouble because they will meet Singapore. And Singapore needs to win that battle against South Korea, or else they will be in right trouble there. tomorrow. At the helm back there with her hat on uh, is Jovina Chu. She's, uh, she, we said she was a 470 specialist. She went to the Rio Olympics, uh, so she's got a, a lot of, a lot of uh, experience. 
Uh, sailing, sailing up there. And number eight right there is uh, Xiu. He's the main trimmer. And he's definitely having a lot of work out there because it can tell you uh, he's, you know, sometimes powering up, powering down. Looks like they got a little bit more twist uh, in their main. Uh, we, we see right there uh, be from the from the positioning of the of, of the boom. So uh, interesting to see uh, some of the different also uh, settings that they have on, on the different boats. But it looks definitely, you know, everybody needs to hike out on that boat, like you were saying. They're, they're, they're a lot lighter. A lot lighter. It's almost 150 kilos lighter than the other teams, so they really need to do something. But here we have an interesting battle, Ukraine-Thailand. And uh, they're side by side, Thailand on the outside, Ukraine on the inside. But because there's 90 meters in between them, it looks good for Ukraine. They are in control at the moment. South Korea versus Singapore. Hmm. They're also doing a small tag battle. But uh, let's see how, it's do how they're doing. Here we can uh, see the, the boats so close to each other again. Yet again here um, we, are, we are here on the teams. And see Thailand really focused. The captain there. I I'm so amazed about how they are fighting, how they're communicating. But also how it's working for them. Is that Team Thailand right yeah. there that we were looking at? Yeah, another attack. Cheng Thai is the name of their team. It's it's really interesting to see the different ways in, in which these teams are working and also, you know, how how they, they are uh, on land um, and as opposed to some of the other teams that we've had. Um, you know, they're very calm. They, they're, very, they're quite quiet teams. Um, uh, all, all these more Asian teams, uh, so some, so, uh, as opposed to, for example, some of the more uh, South American teams that we've had <laughs> here earlier. So it's uh, really interesting to have everybody come over here uh, on on Lake Neuchatel here in, in Switzerland, and uh, everybody's been uh, been qualifying themselves. They've all sailed on these boats and um, really really making it for fair racing. For fair racing, and right now we have some racing on. We have a tag battle between Thailand and Ukraine. We just see how Ukraine tagged in, uh, in front of Thailand. Now ta Thailand reacted tagging to the right hand side. And interesting if Ukraine will tag in front of them once again, uh, they might do or they will continue what they did in the last upwind lake. Yeah, going like to the No, they're tagging in front of them now. So great, great battle here. This also means that the wind disappeared. Ukraine could not do, do a, such a clean upwind lake as they did in the first one where they just went to the left hand side up to the top mark rounding it here there's a battle on yeah it looks like the battle is on we're getting here a little bit of a uh, tacking duo going on between these two teams now these two teams have got a, a, a quite a lead about a hundred and eighty meter lead over their opponents uh, which pretty much means right now for Ukraine the only interesting thing they need to do is make sure they stay between uh, Thailand and the windward mark so in order to be able to, to stay out in front now we have seen some teams that were out in front and they weren't you know they weren't risking anything and then they got overtaken by teams that you know on the downwind on both sides so ukraine good it's great to it's great to defend but they really need to take some risks as well yeah. but now ukraine is a little bit with luck because while they have been battling with thailand south korea is back in the race also Team Singapore. So now Thailand is focused on South Korea. We just see see uh, uh, in our stats how Thailand needs to protect them against South Korea, not losing their spot. Here we're seeing Ukraine really hiking it out, going upwind to the right-hand side. And I think they will not do more attacks before they're attacking in towards the top mark. They are clear of air. They are clear of the other boats. So they can sail all the way to the top mark. Yeah, Thailand, like you said, you know, they're protecting themselves from Korea and they've been doing that the whole time. In the very beginning, they were fighting with Ukraine, you know, and they've been doing, they were sort of in that sandwich position. Uh, here they are again uh, in another sandwich position. They're trying to avoid getting attacked by Ukraine and yet they're defending against Korea. So 
really, really complicated for Team Thailand, and they're just doing a wonderful job staying into the game. Yeah, and another battle coming up is because when Thailand now is covering South Korea, South Korea is losing a little bit of momentum. Singapore is speeding up on the right-hand side. We can't see them. And then we'll do attack soon coming in to the others. So here we can see Thailand. What are they doing? They're just watching forward. They're looking at, at the mark. They're looking at the Ukraine. They need to time it. They're really playing. You see it now. Look at uh, the gentleman right there to the right-hand side of your screen. See, he's got that green rope. He's pulling on it. And that's bringing the main sheet track. It's bringing it up so so he can, he can give a little bit more power when he sees that they're in a lull or if they're in a puff, he can release that track down. So it's constant work. They're not just sitting there and watching their sails. They're really working to make their boats go fast. They're really working to make the boats going fast and they need to speed it up. It looks like Ukraine is speeding up right now. They're getting ready for the downwind lake. Less than 175 meters to the top mark. And then we see Ukraine doing attack going in front of Thailand before the top mark. But let's see if uh, they can manage to aim it into the top mark because we just saw the mark and attacking there. So interesting if it was too early or it's time oh it looks like a little bit early but let's see if they time it up turning the boat into it yeah that looks like uh, they, they they're pretty spot on right yeah. there i think spot on on the mark then we see thailand they've got a in. good lead right now yeah. and thailand is going to be tacking behind them and uh so remember <laughs> you lose a little bit of time as you're tacking so that lead that they have right now is going to get even bigger it's going to be even bigger. And now, Thailand, South Korea, Singapore approaching the top mark. Thailand they lost in a second. Lot of speed on that one. Yeah, speeding down, but. Uh, uh, see how that, that boat is just completely leaned over? It's actually not that fast. You know, when you see a boat that's really leaned over, uh, excessively leaning over, it's not fast. So they're not capturing the win at the moment, as Jan is saying. That may be opening up for South Korea and Singapore coming in, but it looks like they're quite safe at the moment in the second position. We have just seen Ukraine rounding that uh, offset mark. So, uh, Rachel, how it's going out there? What, what do you see? Doing the things as they should. Also, I was just watching how they do the maneuver. They do it very professionally, the hoisting of the kite very professionally with the bowman and actually hugging the, the speed as it goes up. Uh, they're the only one in this round that I've seen doing it. Uh, I mean, they're definitely, I would even guess, the best of the round. So good on them. Uh, Thailand is following right behind them, but Ukraine's got a bit more speed, uh, both the upwind and downwind. And now South Korea is uh, rounding. Uh, and uh, it follows right behind Singapore. Uh, the wind up here, it's, uh, I would say, stable, around eight knots, a bit of uh, waves, a bit of chops, and now we're speeding downwind with uh, the boats. And, uh, I mean, they're close enough uh, for them to be worried about each other, but not so much as for Team Thailand to be too worried about Team Korea unless anything happens or Team Ukraine doubting their leading position. So, I mean, we're going to follow them downwind. But if if they play their um, if they play the cards right, I think everything will stay as it is. If they play the cards right, they will stay as it is. So Ukraine looks like taking a, a, a comfortable lead, but but don't write Thailand out of this one because we saw the last downwind leg how Thailand approaches Ukraine but good skills by Ukraine to defend their position but Thailand they're not just to be laughed off they're really fighting for this one yeah they're really fighting for this one and uh, the, you know they can and they have to fight until the end we've seen a lot of things happen in these races and and sudden and it comes down to the wire so yeah there's a little bit of uh, of about right here we see 120 ish meters uh, difference between uh, between the two boats um, and uh, you know we already saw Thailand attacking Ukraine on the last downwind. I'm sure we'll see it again. Uh, but Ukraine is defending well. 
and uh, you know they're sailing really well. And that's you know also remember we said they're the best uh, team that's that's out here right now in the SSL ranking. They're placed number 33, and that's uh, that is a very very nice world ranking. But right now we're seeing quite interesting here on our data here. Why we are watching here, Team Ukraine battling it out. They're winning momentum. 20 meters they just won in this downward leg. They're sailing faster than Thailand. But what we're seeing is that Singapore. They are sailing two knots slower than the rest of the fleet and sailing with a bigger angle. You can almost see them behind there, how they're losing momentum. So they just lost almost 50 meters. Yeah. It, so quite interesting. It's, it, it's tough to say, you know, because, I mean, perhaps they're getting a puff. Remember, the guys that are in the back are the first ones that are getting the wind, right, when you're on a, when you're on a run. So perhaps they've got a little bit more pressure and they can go down a little bit more uh, and go and therefore get closer to the finishing line. That's what, sort of what we're seeing right now. And it's, perhaps that is what's happening. We see Ukraine that's just jived right now. Are they seeing something? Are they uh, trying to get back towards that puff? Because it looks definitely like Team Singapore has got some speed. It looks like Team Singapore got some speed in there. But, but still, they are the slowest team at the moment. Uh, they're sailing with a whole other angle than the other ones. You can see Thailand and uh, South Korea continue to the right-hand side, where Ukraine going into the middle. So maybe they're looking at Singapore and saying, OK, what are they seeing that we are not seeing? Or they're just positioning them in oh, a look at the comfortable pressure. Look position. At the speed. I'm yeah. sorry to cut you off, but yeah. you see how, much, how, how many bow waves they're, they're yeah. going off? On that right now, I mean, there's, they've they've definitely got some uh, some speed. Look at that! Look at the yeah. speed! They're, they're almost planning. Bow is out. All the guys are in the back. You see them hanging out, pulling out, making sh trying to get that boat flat. They're in a puff. So that's probably the puff we were seeing uh, that Singapore was in. Uh, very very nice. Ukraine just taking off right now. Yeah, and now we see the protective result. Look Ukraine 13, oh. Thailand 12, Singapore 8, South Korea 6. So that's really speeding up there. Ukraine is powering up the boat. They're also sailing 11.3 knots of speed, where the rest of them are less than 10 perfect. knots of speed. This is exactly what we wanted. Yeah, when they got these, these positions, when these guys are like this, you know, they're feeling it. They're feeling the, the, the boat sliding through the water. 11 knots, you know, that's, that's pretty darn fast. Look at them. That boat is just cruising. I love it. This is exactly what we wanted to see since, uh, you know, for these qualifying series. And tomorrow it'll be even more windy, so we should be seeing even more of this stuff. Just, ah, oh, just awesome. Looking at that boat just glide through the water. Beautiful yeah. images right there. But right now when we saw those projected results, where we're seeing Ukraine speeding up, going towards the finish line, 1,350 meters left, Thailand in second, South Korea in third, Singapore in fourth, this means, this result, if this is how it's going to end today, we have one more race, then it, Ukraine and Thailand is a very good position qualifying for, for Bahrain. And if Ukraine is doing like this in the next race, game over South Korea and Singapore because these giants from Ukraine right now is showing how to sail this SSL 47. They want to go to the finals. They want to represent their nations at the, at the Football World Cup, but just in sailing. Yeah, and it's just it's it's great to see them. Look at you can tell there's more people on that on that boat. But uh, look, they're not they're not hiking uh, like like the others were. You know, I kind of want to see them uh, hike out a little bit more. They're just sort of sitting on the side. Uh, maybe they don't have as much uh, pressure as uh, as the Ukrainian boat uh, just had. Uh, but really, what well, we've seen them work their boat. Yeah, but you can see, if you see the meters, Thailand is winning momentum on Ukraine if you're taking, in, taking into the meters. Ukraine is the fastest boat right now. Thailand is almost 0.5 knots slower than Ukraine. And the reason why they're not hiking maybe is because they're sailing with another angle than Ukraine. Ukraine is going more into the wind to speed up and to overpower the boat just to power up. You're right. I think that Thailand is is uh, trying to go straight to the finishing line, and as I think Ukraine has just said, no worries. 
we're going flat out. We'll put in another job and we'll finish in front of you guys. And I think that that's probably the two different strategies. Remember, you said it. There's speed, speed, speed. So speed not only in the upwind, but also speed in the downwind. Look at them. Look, they're all hiking. They're all, you know, there's... And they're, they're definitely picking up some speed. You can see that spinnaker, you know, has been pulled in quite a ways right there. So uh, they're, they're definitely trying to go as fast as they can. And they're not really trying to aim to go for the finishing line. They will have to put another jibe in. Uh, they are far enough in front where they should have no problems uh, passing in front of Thailand. And they'll be the right away boat. Yeah, and most of all, they are the right away boat if they time it well. Thailand is speeding up now. Ukraine, one knot faster than Thailand, but Thailand is getting closer and closer to that finish line. They don't need to do a jive. Ukraine is there jiving we go. now. That's the jive and if for they Ukraine. miss time it, Thailand will win it. So Yeah, now, it, I think it's uh, you can looking see at Thailand the telemetry. Is coming there. It looks good. No, 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 Thailand is going to pressure it. 9, 39 meters, they have to ride away Ukraine. But if they're coming into the mark rounding zone at the same time, Ukraine need to bear away of Thailand. That's one of the rules. So that's how it's coming in. The finish line is coming in. Who Ukraine has the right away over Thailand. So yes, they lost some speed. And, and we see now they're only 20 meters in it. But the Ukraine boat is has the right away. Huh? So yeah. uh, as, as we're coming in, Oh, that was the gate mark, but go. you can see they're approaching each other 20 meters, they're going to hit each other. And Two different tactics yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 but, but Thailand can jibe in front of Ukraine, take that wind, so will we see a, a, one of these cases again? Thailand is on the approach to attack Ukraine, Ukraine speeding up, will they speed enough? I think uh, you, I think Ukraine's got it, Thailand, if they do a jibe, they will lose some speed, looks like uh, Thailand oh, yeah, is going yeah, yeah. behind them. I we saw that they're going in their wind shadow. We're seeing their boat a little bit flatter. Yeah, and now it's, it's coming back up. It's too Here late. Here we go, Ukraine. So speed was the key. They said it. They did it. And now they're out in front. Congratulations, Team Ukraine, taking a bullet on this race number four. And you can also see Dax. He's quite calm, but they just won a race, getting one closer to the Football World Cup in sailing, finals in Bahrain, and there we have Thailand coming in second. Congratulations, and Thailand. That was, thank you, Thailand. You made that very exciting. Yeah, but also, I'm a little bit, um, now, now you know, I'm a little bit aggressive in my strategies. I might have jived above Ukraine, see if I could pressure them taking the wind away and then attack in, but they might be satisfied with that second position because Singapore looks like they're going to lose this race because see who's coming in third, South Korea. After that terrible start, they managed to go up and actually battling their way into a third position. Yeah, I think it's very good for them on the leaderboard. They were sort of down at the bottom of the leaderboard, so this is really going to help them uh, put some points up there and, and, and try to stay in the runnings. Remember, we still have one more race today, uh, last race of the day, and then tomorrow, Golden Day. We'll have even more wins tomorrow, so it's, you know, very exciting uh, weekend of racing. A very exciting weekend of racing. It's Golden Day tomorrow, as I said, double points. And here we have Team Singapore. Actually, they must be very, very unhappy with this race result of this race. They were so close to Thailand and Ukraine. And the only thing they have to make sure today is not getting last. And the first race, they're getting into the last position. So now they need to be aggressive. They need to fight it back in the next race and push Thailand and Ukraine below third position if they can. Yeah, let's, uh, all right, anyway, congratulations. Uh, they're going across the finishing line right now for Team Singapore. Um, but uh, yeah, they will have to be aggressive. Let's try to not have any more holes in these boats. Uh, that's uh, enough damage done for, for today. But yes, we do want to see some aggressive moves yeah. uh, from, from all these teams for, for the last race of the day. Yeah, and now we saw Singapore taking down their, uh, their spinnaker, putting in water before packing it up. That was not the best move, according to us. Ukraine winning four points, Thailand three points, 10 seconds after, South Korea two points, and then Singapore one point. Another very nice race, 10 seconds between the first two boats. Uh, that's, uh, you know, exciting races. Yeah, and with that said, exciting races, let's see the race replay.
And there we see Team Ukraine with Rachel down there. Rachel, how does it feel for Team Ukraine at the moment? It's famous. Yes, I'm with the captain, Igor, and uh, well, Igor, once again, you proved to be very good at this game. Yeah, we like it this win because it's uh, much easier because we win more stab stable and uh, uh, our techniques is enough for like this win because the team is young, you know, the, if the strong guy, maybe we have the, some problem, but uh, like this one condition is uh, perfect for us and uh, just a uh, good start and then uh, just one question, uh, we was uh, for downwind uh, because the, also the team, uh, the mostly uh, people for the first time here and, and for us it was the surprise uh, to put the jeep up. And you do it very well, uh, your maneuvering is the best of the fleet. Yeah, and we will see the fleet uh, selling better than us and we also the uh, lift the jeep and keep the our position and we have but Igor you so felt a bit of pressure down here closer to the finish line from Team Thailand uh, yeah but uh, <laughs> having good technique okay. something yeah yeah thank you yeah yeah and what about next race how are you gonna approach it uh, of course uh, the next race we, we will the maximum uh, our power in the next race it's uh, we will see because it's selling you know it's sport we will see. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Igor. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Uh, just to say to you, it's sailing, it's a sport. And one thing is for sure, what Team Ukraine and also Team Thailand showed us in this race is the sport part of sailing. The tag battles, the jibe battles, how they're using the sails and the spinnakers for all that. Really great. And that's putting Ukraine in the lead with 13 points, Thailand with 12, Singapore with 8, South Korea with 6. And I have to say, Singapore and South Korea, they need to do some matching in the next race, or else Ukraine and Thailand already sleeping away almost to uh, Bahrain. Yeah, they definitely need to, <clears throat> to get out there in front. They need to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and uh, But, you know, when you have teams like Ukraine and Thailand and you look at everything that they've been doing, the, the, the boat handling skills, they're not making any mistakes. They're making this look easy. And the reason why they're making this look easy is because they are very good and uh you know uh when we see all the actions and all that it w w you know it, it's the mistakes i mean it's unfortunate we're sort of waiting for the mistakes um these guys they're not giving us any mistakes and they're just taking it all away look at the points difference yeah yeah and with that said we if we're looking at the score now when we're coming in here looking at the score then a six-point lead after the next race will secure you a final in Bahrain. Mm. But a five-point lead will not secure you anything because it's Golden Day tomorrow where everything counts doubled. Mm. 
Yeah, that's right. Everything counts double. Yep. So uh, tomorrow in this fleet, uh, the winner will take eight points. Second place will take uh, six, yep. and then four and two. Yep. And so uh, you can really we can, we've seen some amazing comebacks uh, on on these um, golden days. Yeah, and one thing is for sure, this is the SSL Gold Cup, the Football World Cup, but just in sailing. And they're doing things in a whole other way. And here is a brand new way of approaching the SSL. SSL Gold Cup is what we were missing to challenge sailors and make it universal. Paul Kayard, Captain, SSL Team USA. Soon you can go virtual with the official game of SSL. Where you from home can join the epic battles from the waters in the palm of your hands. Get ready to race on the SSL 47 against your friends, family or fellow sailors. The boat is identical with the SSL 47 and runs on the real polar diagrams of the boat. Sail on the lake of Neuchâtel in front of the HQ of the SSL in the city of Canton. And later you will continue your virtual races at the finals in Bahrain in front of the shores of the Water Garden City. So get ready when we open up for the SSL Gold Cup and the SSL Team Race League with great prizes, events and live finals. So, if you can't sell the SSL Gold Cup yourself, you can cheer on your team, but soon you can also go virtual with it and fight for your nation. Yeah, I'll be excited to play that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> going to be great. But one thing is for sure, we are going to have a really good battle in the next race. And let's compare the teams again, because a lot of new viewers just coming in. We have four teams fighting for the final in Bahrain. Here we have South Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Ukraine, and Jan, what do we know about them? Well, like you said, Singapore, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. South Korea, top left-hand side. They're called the Red Fury. They're SSL rank number 56. Look at all the different rankings for these teams, and it just shows you sort of where where we expect them to be. Uh, total weight for Team South Korea, 725 kilos, and the captain is Jimin Ha. Uh, Singapore, to the right-hand side of, of, of them, is the Guardians of the Bay, SSL rank number 37, the lightest team we have here, 580 kilos, and the team captain is Jovina Chu. Bottom left, we have Thailand, Cheng Tai, SSL rank number 42, weighing in 722 out of the seven, maximum 730 kilos, so that's not too bad. Her nickname is Nai. Bottom right, we have the Ukrainian team that just took the bullet we just spoke to. Uh, their team name is Hai Damaki, and their SSL ranked number 33. They're the best ranked team that we have here this week. They're weighing in 726 kilos. Team captain's name is Ior Matvienko. And now we're seeing the weight of the teams. We've been talking about it again and again and again. Singapore only 580 kilos but the wind is disappearing out there we're coming into eight knots of wind so will we see them fight back in the next race yeah um being heavy even in light winds is actually also an yeah. <laughs> advantage yeah being heavy is just is being an advantage especially on these boats yeah. you know these boats are uh, are um the the more they're in the water the longer the water line is and yeah. actually it's a little bit better so it's better to be weighty and we can see Ukraine is in the lead with 13 points, Thailand 12, Singapore 8, South Korea 6. If you have more than 6 points to the third position, you will 6 points or more, you will qualify for Bahrain. So Ukraine, they need to take a second position overall, then, then they can relax a little bit more tomorrow. But Singapore and uh, South Korea really have a fighting coming in. They can end up with 10 or 12 points after this racing. And then the Golden Day is all open for tomorrow. Yeah, we hope the whole Golden Day will be open for tomorrow. And as you saw, there are only two races left uh, in this in this championship. Oh, here yeah. we go. Let's take a look at the course. 
Uh, so uh, it's twice around and LA2. So there you see the little uh, arrow is the boat going around Mark 1 and then the offset. Going back down through the gate. They can go through the left and through the right hand side of the gate as they come back up for their second upwind. And then it's back down to the finishing line. Yeah, and if you're brand new to sailing, then let's take it one more time because what we are watching, because you're coming into the last race of today, they're going to zigzag upwind. Rounding a top mark, then an offset mark. There they launch this spinnaker and then they jibe downwind or continue to one side. And then we see them they're choosing a side to go through because then they do it one more time to a top mark, offset mark and race towards the finish line. And while they're doing this, they also take care of some uh, some special some special rules out there. And one of the rules there are in sailing is we just have an AP that's just been raised out there. So that's we're, that red and yeah. uh, white striped flag, and that just means hold on a minute, guys. We're not racing quite yet. No, there's something out there. We don't know what it is yet. So let's talk a little bit more about the, these rules, um, because we have been talking about two rules today. Rule number ten. It's called the right of way. It's starboard and port side, and um, and it's all about which side the boats are coming from, and and to decide that, then we have something with the right side of the boat and the left side of the boat deciding which way is starboard and which side is port side. How is that working, Jan? Do you know that? I do, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, the right side of the boat. Uh, That's right. If, you're, if, you, if the wind is coming in from the right-hand side of the boat, so that would be your starboard side of the boat, then uh, you are on starboard tack, and you will have the right-of-way over yeah. the boats receiving wind from the port side to yeah. the left-hand side of the boat. Yeah. And uh, so that's port and starboard for you. So this is the way we can see who has the right of way in sailing. But one thing that's very important with the SSL Gold Cup is how the captains is chosen. But also one thing that's amazing about the whole SSL rank is the global ranking list. Let's hear more about it. SSL Global Ranking. We all know the ATP and the FIFA World Ranking. It's the way to show who is the best athlete in tennis or the best team in football. With the huge diversity of boat classes in sailing, a variety of roles like helm, grinder, tactician and other crew members, it's hard to define who is the best performing sailors in the world. The SSL Global Ranking most important mission is to offer the first transversal and global ranking for inshore sailors in compliance to all nations and international class ranking established by the classes and federations. But how does it work? The SSL Global Ranking takes the sixth best score of each athlete in the last 156 weeks into consideration. All athletes who has participated in a minimum of one race will have their performance registered of a minimum one ranking point. We are working hard to list every sailor in big or small on our website. The SSL Global Ranking is updated weekly and published every Tuesday at starsailors.com slash ranking. Go check it out and remember to claim your account if you find yourself your name is already on the list. Please fill out your information and update with a beautiful picture of yourself. Who knows, maybe you're already in the list. SSL by sailors for sailors. The SSL is created by sailors for sailors. And one thing is for sure is it's the first time, Jan, we're seeing a ranking list taking care of all these difficulties in sailing, looking into all boat classes, looking into events and giving points. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just um, it's been such hard work for the SSL to put this together, and and I think what the greatest thing is, you watching out there right now, uh, go check it out. You're you're probably on there if you've sailed a couple regattas, uh, y you'll be on there. And then you can compare yourself to your buddies. You can compare yourself to people within your country. You can compare yourself to the world. Um, really interesting, and you could, and it, it also keeps a little bit of a tally of you know the last races you've been doing and, th and, and things like that. Yeah, and the way the captains are chosen is because of their ranking on the SSL list, and then they choose a team after thing. But let's go on water and uh, and see what's happening out there. We are sailing to LA two. We still have heavy sails, and. Uh, the wind is still coming from 50 degrees, a bearing of 50, but the wind is disappearing a little bit. 
eight knots of wind. Yeah, so 50. So, all right, very stable in direction. Mm -hmm. uh, eight knots of wind, really? Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, so it's getting a little bit lighter. That wasn't really ex what was expected, but uh, it is sailing. Anything can happen, as we've been seeing it. Uh, we're four minutes away from the start right now, and, uh, you know, teams should really be starting to think about where they want to go, where they're going, and uh, what is the strategy. I see some of the teams just sort of, sort of uh, relaxing at four minutes to, to the gun. I would uh, be wanting to keep an eye out on what's happening with that wind, seeing it as it's dying. Um, you know, it, it's going to be very important to get off to the correct side of the race course. Yeah, and we're seeing how the, t the boats are putting themselves in a position. They want to battling out at the starting line. You can see the starting line. We have a boat close to us. It's called the committee boat. Then we have a mark on the, uh, on the far end. It's called the pin and mark. And this is deciding where the starting line is, but also the rules a little bit because it's all about, we are, we are talking about being on the leeward side, meaning that the wind, the side where the wind disappears or remove, comes out of the other w sails is, is the, the free side to be on. There you have to ride away to pressure the other boats. So now they are battling out to find this position. Yeah, I think one of the rules that we could talk about, uh, which is sort of interesting and uh, talks really about the beginning, uh, before the actual start of the race, before the gun goes off, is that a leeward boat can uh, luff another boat uh, straight head to wind. And that changes slightly as the race goes on because once the race has started, you cannot overtake a boat from behind and then luff them. You need to be coming from two boat lengths under. And that's a really big difference uh, that we'll see from once the, uh, the gun goes off. So right now, as you're seeing boats that are just coming right behind another one and trying to make them luff, they can do that because that rule changes only once the race has begun. So yes, uh, we're talking about port and starboard a lot, but there are also some very particular rules that happen before racing goes on. So Take a look at what's going to be happening here in the next two minutes. Yeah, and now you can see the boats are approaching each other. They're not sailing into each other, but they are going so close to each other to start controlling each other. You can see Ukraine is going on the leeward side of Singapore because they know if Singapore is ending behind Ukraine in this race, then Ukraine is secure Bahrain. So they're focused on Singapore, Thailand and South Korea they need to raise their own race, and Singapore needs to sneak away if they can. So you can see yeah, straight Ukraine, away Singapore goes Ukraine away from Ukraine. Ukraine has got a lot of a lot riding into this one. Yeah. Uh, they're really important for them if they can secure their spot already today before the golden day. I mean that's a really uh, a, a really important thing. So expect Ukraine to probably be quite aggressive uh, in in this uh, in this beginning. And now uh, we'll see exactly here what we were talking about that rule of being able to go head to wind. So head to wind uh, being uh, you know you can't have the jib go to the other side of the boat basically no you can't have the jib going to the opposite side of the boat here we're going one There's minute the to line. the start the committee boat is close to us the pin and mark is the other boat in the opposite side with a yellow flag here we have team ukraine putting themselves on the outside they don't don't want to go that oh they are approaching no, the no, other they're ones. definitely d look they're protecting their positions they're being very aggressive and they're in in their maneuvering that allows them to lose a little bit of speed seeing the amount of wind there is even though if there's still eight knots yeah. They and can really pick up speed. And out there in the top, are. you Powerful. see the bow. You can see how they're communicating. He's saying, oh, keep an eye on them. Loft them up, loft them up, close the gate. Yeah, slow, slow down, down. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> You're up. too fast. 25 seconds to the start. And this is the way they're communicating. And now you see another battle beneath. That was Thailand versus Korea, it looks like. Uh, no, Singapore. Also important battle. Thailand coming with speed, too fast speed. Will we have Ten the to recall? Go. Let's 10 seconds to go. This uh, looks like it's going to be a good uh, call. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, they're going over the line. Nope, they're not over the line. Four seconds left to go. We see in Ukraine with a lot of speed. Actually, we can't see Ukraine. There goes Ooh. Thailand. Oh, again, a wonderful start by Thailand. Yeah. But and Ukraine with a lot of speed. A little late on the line, but probably have the most amount of speed. Yeah, but That's it, what it looks like right it, now. It looks like a clean start, and it looks like a very clean start. There's no interval uh, callback, but it really also looked like Thailand and Ukraine push it to the limit. They sl slow down, and we're talking about these SSL 47. Some of the, the, the sailors out there call them big dinkies. What a great shot, by yeah, the way. Yeah. It's 
sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Call them the big dinkies. And these big dinkies means that they can maneuver them actually on the spot, really turn them pretty fast. But they only have one thing that's an issue. They're really hard to power up. It takes time yeah, to it speed takes them time up. to power them up. But I mean, you know, every boat takes time to power up. It's just a question of knowing how much time it yeah. takes to power, power them up. And, um, you know, all these teams now have been sailing a couple days on these boats, so they, you know, they can definitely practice to see how much time it takes for them to power up. Yeah, and here you see Team Singapore tacking away from the rest of the fleet. They couldn't have a worse start. This is a very good start for Ukraine and Thailand because if Singapore keeps that fourth position and Korea in third, then Bahrain is waiting for the two teams already today. So let's hope for the viewers, let's hope for us in the studio that this is not the case, but it's only 20 meters, it's not 100 meters as we saw in the first race where South Korea really had a very bad start. Yeah, it looks like uh, right now, like you said, we've got uh, Cheng Tai, which is uh, Team Thailand, which is out in front, and Haidamaki, Team Ukraine as well, uh, out in front. Uh, we, we've been seeing them all day out, out in front. And then uh, following close behind, and we, we sort of, we really want to see them get back into it, you know, is uh, Team Red Fury Ooh. from South Korea. First and attack, first attack. Singapore attacking, South, it, it, they're attacking Thailand. They are just tacking in starboard port side rule, rule number 10. They're coming in and Thailand survived that attack going in front of Singapore. And actually tacking right in front of them. Oh, defending making, it. Making, uh, the, <laughs> making Singapore have an attack over right now. Look. Yeah, and there they attack again. But this means that it's like teams have split up. Thailand is taking care of Singapore. Ukraine is taking care of of Korea and if this stands that way so it's almost two match races but also team races at the same time because Ukraine and Thailand they want to be in first and second and keep the other behind them because then they are in Bahrain yeah exactly I mean that's what really counts for them so now um, we'll, what we'll probably be seeing is that you know <laughs> Ukraine really does not want to get into any very many battles they kind of want to be able to ha go out on their own and and, and not get slowed down by any uh, particular battles uh, for the for the time being and it's definitely Ukraine and Thailand they'll be fighting their own race uh, and making sure that they beat Korea and uh, Singapore, yeah. Singapore and now you see Singapore they went away from that battle they're going to the right hand side and Ukraine is speeding up on the left hand side keeping South Korea behind them South Korea cannot pressure Ukraine in this position right now we saw that last time but they're trying to follow Ukraine to see if Ukraine is really good in finding that win and then see if they can win in front of Thailand. But you can see it's very close. That's Thailand, Jimin Singapore, ha right yeah, Korea, same level. Remember, Ji Ming Ha uh, here on the helm, uh, he has been four times to the Olympics. So even though right now they're sitting down in uh, fourth place, uh, right there, captain of the SSL team uh, South Korea, four times in the Olympics. You know, there's a lot of experience on, on this boat. Uh, remember also, uh, the tactician has been to the America's Cup. Um, so, you know, let's, let's not rule them out of it quite yet. Let's not rule it out of them quite yet, but we can see Thailand is crossing in. Korea is following Ukraine. And when we zoom a little bit out on the graphics here, then we can see Thailand is following them and actually covering up uh, Korea. And that's good news for Singapore. Because now they're all by themselves in the right hand side. Nobody's fighting them. You can see the picture here. There's a battle between two boats, Thailand and South Korea in the left hand side. Ukraine in the lead. Singapore, they can overview this battle and go in and attack them. So yeah, this is a good position. <laughs> okay. Hanging out as far as they can hang out of those boats. I yeah. mean, <laughs> they, they also only 528 kilos, so they need to hang out there. Yeah, they really need to put <laughs> all their weight out there. Yeah, but oh. they're speeding up there. They are the second fastest boat right now. Ukraine, 7 knots. Thailand, 7.2. Korea, 7 knots. Singapore, 7.4 knots. So they are actually doing a great job here. Yeah, now. remember also on this boat, you know, we have, uh, we have people that have, we have two people that have been to the Olympics. Uh, 
Um, so uh, even though maybe a little bit less than the others, uh, we still have some Olympic experience on, on this boat. And if it's not an Olympic experience, you know, it's also big boat racing. So um, really interesting. They, and they are doing their own thing. Really what they've got to do right now is just to find that speed and uh, make sure they can come back into it. They don't really have to... They can actually focus a lot on their speed, as opposed to you know Korea, which is sort of now in a, sort of a sandwich position between Ukraine and Thailand. You see right there, uh, they're, they're in a tough position because if they go faster, they'll fall down on Ukraine, and then they'll slow down, have to tag and tag behind Thailand, and so it's a real difficult position right now for Korea to stay in there and to stay alive. I'm looking at the data and I'm called the mathematic genius or geek in this idea and looking at the data I can see up there that there's only 40 meters actually 30 meters between Thailand Korea and Singapore and every time they do a tag and they're on the same tag when they're tagging to port, for example from starboard to port side they lose around 32 meters so right now Singapore they, they did attack, lost momentum, and now Korea and Thailand is attacking. So interesting how close they will get to each other here. But yeah, look, the at the, look, yeah. At, look in the back, look in the back. Look, the, the, they're checking out, they're wondering whether they're going to be able to cross in front or whether, yeah, I think they're looking at uh, the Thailand boat, whether yeah, they're oof, going they're, to be they're crossing Ukraine in front or in. back. In Ukraine coming this in This is going to be them. tight right yeah. here yeah. between Thailand and Korea right now. We should expect uh, some very close racing. Thailand tax above them. And, and uh, Rachel, what's happening out there? Because Korea, Thailand, Ukraine, left-hand side. Singapore coming from right-hand side now. And they're speeding up. Well, we're right next to Team Singapore with our uh, camera boat. And, uh, well, I can tell you they're sailing well. They're sailing better than uh, what I've seen them sail before. Um, what's happening out here is certainly the temperature, the temperature is rising. Uh, it's a lot warmer. I don't know, Jan, how this can affect it. You're the local tactician. But uh, if I look at the boats uh, far on the left end of the course, I think we're seeing pretty much of the same as what we've seen before. So Team Ukraine going well um, on their, you know, on their track. Yeah. Uh, a track that is uh, taking them uh, very fast uh, on the ley line, uh, even though, no, no, sorry, the okay. mark is still far away. But still, they're doing everything very well, very smoothly. But there is a fight, there will be a fight. Um, actually, I have to tell you, Singapore is sailing well, but they're tacking, no, sorry, they're uh, passing now well behind Thailand and Korea. So. Yeah. Not a big fight in the back lines. No, but thank you, Rachel, for the, those eyes on the water. But what beautiful pictures we just have there from the drone. See how close they are. Here on the outside, Thailand. Inside, Korea. Thailand, when they tack, they have to ride away if they have a steady course. That's right. If they have to change course, then they can protest. Yeah. Uh -huh. if, they, uh, if they don't have to change course, well, then there's no way they can protest. Look at how close these boats are right yeah. here. Great yes. racing. So Korea actually pressuring th uh, Thailand right now. They can they can pressure them way out of the ley line. Well, because right now it's they're too close to each other. Yeah, Thailand right here. You see it's the lured boat um, and can actually uh, cast some wind shadow over Thailand. And Thailand right now is getting wind shadowed by Ukraine. So uh, I expect to see Thailand tacking over very soon because they, they're not going to be able to, s to live very long uh, in, the, in this position right here. But the interesting call, will Thailand go behind Korea or will Korea pressure Thailand all the way to the ley line and then they can first tack when South Korea has tack. You can see they're approaching each other, they're getting closer and closer to each other, so there will be an overla overlap situation right now. But let's see what happens. Ukraine in the lead, this is good news for them. Let Thailand, Korea battling it out. But Thailand are in trouble because if they're losing to Korea here, they are not secure at Bahrain. So th this, is a, this is actually very good for the viewers. And then we have Singapore trying to come back in the race. Took a decision, bad start, went to the right-hand side. Close coming back, but then went far, far to the left-hand side and now losing momentum. Yeah, it, if, when you're switching sides, if you go all the way to the right and then you come back and go all the way on the left, it's, it's uh, tactically speaking, it's, it's, 
not the greatest of ideas. It's uh, if you go on the right, generally you want to sort of stay on the right. It's very rare that you can cross, and you know, unless it's like a flagrant uh, left-hand shift or something like that. But uh, uh, not surprising that uh, Singapore is behind. They, they, you know. On top of it, they're sailing behind the other boats, so they're getting their wind shadows. It's a difficult position to be in. Uh, perhaps they went over there because they're seeing sort of a left-hand shift. And, uh, but difficult to say at this point right now. Remember, this is still only the first of four legs, so right now is more of a drag race. Um, yeah, we'll, let's, uh, let's see let, what let, happens let's at the Let's see what's mark. going in. Right now, Thailand is losing a little bit of momentum to Korea. But uh, Korea is dropping down according to measurements. So if Thailand is getting a gap that's big enough, they can tag in front of Korea and forcing them to go behind them. So Korea lost a little bit their advantage right now. And we can also see on the data that Thailand is sailing a better angle than Korea at the moment. So that's maybe why they're dropping a little bit down. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Korea is actually stay decided to stay where they were in that wind shadow of Ukraine. Uh, really kind of, I don't, I don't understand why they, they didn't they didn't tack. It looks as though there is a left-hand shift, and, mm. and that's probably why they decided it was probably uh, a better, yeah, better maybe, worse decision, maybe, I guess. Maybe, but it's also, again, away. steering this boat, maneuvering this boat. You see Korea losing a lot of momentum right now. But when we're seeing the angle, it looks like they're sailing more straight towards the mark. You can see it here. Yeah, there we Ukraine go. See, sailing straight to the mark. Looks like Korea, a Korea, same shift. thing. And Thailand, they're keeping a bigger angle. Yeah. So they're speeding up. Ah, they're stuck. They're stuck right there. Yeah. They, there's nothing they can do. And they just can sort of... But you see, they're, they've lost distance, definitely. Um, Ukraine has been able to just power away right there. Again, Ukraine sailing well. Speed, 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 rounding the first top mark. Ukraine in the lead. They want to go to Bahrain. They want to fight for their nation at the Football World Cup, but then in sailing. This is the SSL Gold Cup. Ukraine in the lead. Thailand are getting ready to round in second, but we keep an eye South Korea dropping down and then Singapore coming in. So this couldn't be better for the two leading teams at the moment. What a good teamwork on that boat. I mean, they definitely have stuff to prove, and, uh, and they're doing it. They're doing it this week, and they're just getting, staying out in front, and, uh, you know, absolutely great job. They need to ease that main. Come on, keep that speed up. And Thailand coming in in second position right now, getting ready to get the spinnaker up. We have seen them having a little bit issue with it, but still doing a great job. Then we have uh, South Korea coming in, and then Singapore. They had all opportunities today to come in very close on South Korea. You can almost see it here. But they really need to come back in the race. They need that second position, or at least third position, not to be called out for tomorrow. Yeah, you see that? You see what we just saw right there? Singapore doing that really, really aggressive turn. Uh, it's great, you're turning close to the mark, but you lose a lot of speed. And if we see the wind coming down a little bit, you know, that's one of those maneuvers. They've got to really nourish. One of, oh, Spinnaker in water. Oh, no, it's no, no, coming no, 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 also have issues on the last boat. Oh, the last two boats right there with uh, not very good uh, spinnaker hoists. At uh, least they didn't put it in the water, so it's at least a little bit dry. But um, wow, wow, that's uh, that's not going to help their case to be able to catch up to Ukraine and Thailand. And just to say, at that moment, they lost three knots of speed according to Ukraine. Ukraine speeded up to 10.9 knots of speed, and the other teams dropped down because of the spinnaker launch to, to uh, 7.9. And right now, this is good results for Ukraine. 17 points. They are in Bahrain at the moment. They are further into the finals. Thailand, 15 points, giving them a six-point lead to Singapore, also ensuring them a road to Bahrain. So Singapore, they need to win against South Korea. They need to speed up to opening up for everything for tomorrow. But it looks good for Ukraine and Thailand at the moment. Yeah, you know, let's see what happens on the last day. That's, uh, you know, a lot of things could happen and uh, we could have everything go backwards. But it definitely looks, as, as from what we're seeing, 
uh, you know, at least this week, and uh, surely uh, what we've been seeing today, uh, Ukraine, Thailand are just a step above the others. Oh, there's a hole in the spinnaker oh, right there. Oh, that's very costly. So that spin around, that water made a hole in the spinnaker. Yeah, so. now the big problem is if that hole gets any bigger, it could rip the whole entire spinnaker apart, and they would have no more spinnaker. No, and uh, we saw it in earlier races. We saw Team Bermuda having the same issue in their third race with a small hole, and suddenly the spinnaker got, just got tear apart over the middle, and boom, they could only sail with the jib downwind. So this can mean a lot of things for Team Singapore. They just need to, oh, sorry to say this, cross the fingers that South Korea is unlucky on this one. Sendo, they will get third and still have a chance to qualify to Bahrain tomorrow at, uh, at the, 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 the Golden Day. Yeah. But Ukraine yeah, in the lead. See, I mean, this is, we were talking earlier uh, in the last races about, you know, the boats and not hitting one another. But, you know, it's uh, it's not just the boats that can't take on water. It's also making sure that your sails are, are doing well. So you know, a lot of different things, making sure that you're treating your equipment and your sails well and making sure that you're working as a team. Remember, there are nine people are on these boats. So this is what makes sailing complicated is the physical factor of actually making the boat go forward and not ruining it. And then on top of it, you gotta know the rules because every game has a rule, right? And then you gotta add in tactics, a little bit of boat boat handling, and it's a really, it's a very, very complete sort of sport, and it's uh, it's uh, rather uh, fun to be able to discuss this with you guys. It's fantastic to see it, and one thing that's fantastic is to see Ukraine doing their stuff today. Like right now, it looks like they're going to take two victories, but it's only the second leg downwind. There's a lot of race coming up, but they're doing a great job, job, great maneuvering of the handling of the boat. But one, there was one thing that was interesting here in the captain winning the last race saying, hey, we're quite a young team. We have hard times uh, steering this boat and handling this boat because we don't have the big experience on it because we didn't have time for practice because of another situation back home in their country. So, so for them, it was quite a surprise launching the spinning off for the first time. But as you said, hmm, somehow we managed. Yeah, and, um, it's true. I mean, uh, they, they do manage. And, you know, there are uh, some of the guys that are sailing on, on that boat uh, come from uh, the laser class. Um, and uh, they, you know, uh, so, so they are definitely athletes, uh, very good top athletes. And, and really, you know, um, this boat, yes, it's, it's a lot bigger. It really, what it is, is the teamwork. And I think that these guys coming from, from where they're coming from, I think that there's definitely a big cohesion that's working well, and this is really working. It's, it's. Uh, I think that's really what's helping them more than the lack of experience. It's the, it's the quality of the team they have. The quality of the team they have is right now putting them in a the lead in front of Thailand, and Thailand also quite a quality they have there. See, it's like the wind is dying out there, Jan. They're looking, where is the wind? It's looking like a Sunday trip at the moment. Mm. So let's hope the wind is not disappearing too much because that can be very costly. Uh, yeah, well, you know, they're not here to pick flowers. I mean, they're, uh, we, we <laughs> they, need to be, they need to get out there and, and, and really make it go fast. Now, we saw it earlier, uh, Ukraine going a little bit higher, faster, and uh, Thailand going a little bit slower. Um, so. It, it, two different ways of, of, of sailing, and it looks like a higher, faster right now is working out for the Ukrainians. It does, it does. And I have to say, right now, they're doing a great job. But I'm very interested in the battle behind it. Here we see the battle in the lead, Thailand, Ukraine, but Singapore, South Korea. South Korea have a hole in their spinnaker. It can break into pieces, so they can't sail downwind. But Singapore has been taking a decision, putting them 100 meters further behind South Korea. So something is coming in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, what do they call it? Snakes and ladders. That's, it's, you know, anything can happen at this point right now. Look, we're in lake number two, uh, race number five. We're, we're not even halfway through this. 
this race uh, and it's uh, it, you know it's exciting and look at these two just uh, racing together um, you know I, I would I'd like to see all, even though they're a little bit further behind I'd like to see a good battle between Korea and, and Singapore yeah. we, we, we hope for that battle and let's hope not for South Korea that the Spinnaker will break while we're seeing this beautiful shot of Team Ukraine sailing down with almost planning there you can see they're sailing with 10.3 knots of speed. Thailand, 10.2 uh, knots of speed. Look at South how he's Korea hanging on to also the, slowing it down. He's hanging. Look, it looks like he's flying because he's yeah. hanging on to that, to that steering wheel so, so much. But great. You can really tell these guys are, are into it. You know, they're very, very concentrated. You, you, you see how they're sitting sort of with their shoulders a little bit further out than their hips. Now, when you do that on the sailboat, you actually you can really feel the boat a lot more than if you're sitting with your shoulders in. So even even right there, you see the helmsman. He's sort of leaning backwards like that and trying to trying to feel the boat, feel when it's accelerating, when he's riding the wave, when can he bear away and keep that speed. And it's it's really great to see these guys physically in those positions where you can see that they're feeling the boat. Yeah, and now we're seeing Ukraine, Thailand driving towards the gate mark and it looks like they're aiming for the left side of the race course and rounding that gate mark and then you can see South Korea and Singapore coming in with speed and now Singapore is winning momentum on South Korea so they're also speeding up they are Spinnaker almost... in the water for Ukraine yeah but it does that matter that Come much on, for them boys. get it in there get it in it doesn't look like it's filling up with water so no. that's a good thing but there it's Ooh, in a, Ooh, a big one. turn they're doing there it's like they're hiding which side they're going to then thailand oh same procedure as uh, ukraine and then see behind south korea coming with they're speed almost stopped come on love get to the <laughs> but let's see what south korea is, do is doing there behind they are mistiming the mark it looks like that i know the camera angle is doing it oh, a push, but, but see they're mistiming it so yeah. right now a battle between singapore south korea south korea mistiming the mark going into the mark rounding zone it's a downwind so they're pressing out they have to ride away so they're trying to push singapore away ah, what's happening with that spinnaker no, it's not going back in not again, this is not terrible again. Oh no, 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 the whole thing is in the water. Yeah. This could quite literally just stop them. Was that a panic move because uh, South Korea was pressing them? I think it was. I think it was just a, a confusion. They sort of got out of their role. Look, oh, now they're stopped. Ooh. They're going to have issues. That's really too bad because Korea right there, uh, you know, miscalculated it. They really messed up and Singapore could have uh, gone back and, and, and taken over. Uh, they just they just didn't manage to they sort of got out of their groove and and uh, Didn't ah, I thought that whole spinnaker yeah, was yeah, going into the yeah. water But but just to say to you when this happens with the spinnaker, they're losing so much momentum They came with a speed of 9.6 knots towards the gate mark And when Singapore lost the spinnaker in the water, we were registrating 3.6 knots of speed at that moment So that's almost six knots of speed losing because of one spinnaker mistake and you can also see straight away driving in towards uh, attacking in towards the middle south korea is forced to follow them because they want to win that battle but if i was those two i will more focus instead of battling each other focus on battling if they can capture thailand or ukraine yeah that would be great um if they if they could catch up but right now frankly to being 200 meters behind on the windward leg it's going to be really tough so uh i was sort of hoping for a korean um uh, <laughs> south korean and uh, and a singapore battle i guess uh i got i guess i got what i was asking for but uh wow what an interesting um mark rounding uh maybe if we could check that out again then we could sort of see what's happening but i think uh I definitely think that uh, Singapore sort of uh, didn't realize what they didn't know what to, what to do. No, they were sort of found themselves in this situation. South, and South Korea came into that mark round and so mistimed it. So they need, but they had to ride away because both of them yeah. came in from port side. 
that meaning that the inside boat, in th this is a special rule that is at that mark. So South Korea have to ride away, so they need to pair away and give room for them. And because they did that, they panicked while they took down the spinnaker. Yeah, the had time. they taken down that spinnaker correctly, yeah. slowed down, they could have totally passed around uh, Team Korea. And uh, they just didn't manage to do that. So. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can get that replay. No, a bit no, later. we can't show that one because right now we have another battle here. The battle here is uh, we are watching here uh, Team Thailand uh, doing a great job. But actually, we need to keep an eye on Korea and Singapore because Singapore they needs to win over South Korea to stay into the heat for qualifying to Bahrain. It looks like Ukraine and Thailand they did everything they could to sneak away. Ukraine. If they keep this score here, this position, they will be in Bahrain in the finals, in the SSL Gold Cup, the Football World Cup finals in Bahrain here in October. Thailand, they're not secured yet. The Football World Cup in sailing, yeah, in, which will happen in, in Bahrain, yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm wondering, uh, is Ukraine going to attack and, uh, you know, I think they go. will sail their own race. Yeah, they're attacking go. above Thailand now. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're attacking above Thailand. But, but interesting call, we see and Korea. There goes Thailand, Thailand yeah. just attacked again. Yeah. Here we have Korea in, a, in, in division. You can see they went more to the right-hand side and now they're attacking to the left. So they went away from Singapore to get ready to attack with starboard port side. Here we have the provincial overall. Ukraine secured 17 points. Bahrain is coming that way. Thailand 15 points. If S Singapore is not winning over South Korea, they are also secured. But if Singapore is winning over South Korea, then uh, it's all open again. Because if Thailand loses tomorrow and Singapore wins, then it's Singapore going all the way to Bahrain. But here we see beautiful pictures. They are hiking out. They are going towards the left-hand side. They need to cover up Singapore. Thailand going right-hand side. Ukraine left-hand side. Singapore left-hand side. And the speed difference is that South Korea is the fastest boat on the race course at the moment. I think Thailand right there just, uh, you know, is now attacking on top of uh, Korea, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, they're also uh, protecting their position. I think it uh, looks more like Thailand right now is sort of trying to protect their position from uh, Singapore and Ukraine and not so worried about uh, I mean Singapore and uh, Korea and not so worried about Ukraine, which is out front. Ukraine, they will can do whatever they want to do here, also for Thailand. Thailand just needs to make sure that Singapore and Korea, Korea is not coming up and taking their position. Then they have a very good cards for tomorrow. Here we have a very skillful Ukrainian team and you can almost see how relaxed they are but they're still watching the win, still watching the sails out there. They are in the lead, they're also in the lead on the scoreboard and this is race number five. Today. I tell you that homesman right there looking at his body, uh, body communication right there, he is super concentrated right there. He's, see how he's sort of moving? I think you know you sort of end up by doing that once you are uh, once you're trying to feel the boat. He's, he's he almost was trying to make the boat go faster by uh, trying to feel a little something more than, you know. You, you can definitely see the concentration uh, on, on that guy's face. And uh, I think that's, you know, uh, I'm not saying the others aren't concentrating, but uh, definitely, you know, there's a reason why these guys are out front. There's a reason why Ukraine is in the front, but there's also a reason why Thailand is in second. And here we have them racing up towards that top mark and they just need to keep that position they need to keep singapore and south korea behind them and right now when while we have been talking look at the stats korea is losing their position to singapore it looks like singapore is powering up but and korea going to the right hand side singapore to the left so. just before we were looking at the, the tactician which is in the very back uh, and he's sort of like holding something up to his eye um, that's a compass right there and that compass right now he's trying to figure out uh, the ley line and the angles and when they can tag and uh, so right now he's sort of uh, uh, making the game plan uh, so he must have said all right guys let's tag now 
it's looking like the angle is right in order to be able to get to the to the next side. So that's sort of how it works on these boat. He'll he'll be making the decisions as to where the boat is going. He's the only one that decides where the boat is going. Everybody else is working on that boat in order to make it go fast. And the and and the person, the helmswoman in this case, uh, she's just driving the boat. She's not. Make, you know, she's not taking the boat to the left or to the right hand side. She's just making sure that boat is sailing as fast as it can. And everybody else is setting up their sails. And so that's how it works on a boat. The only person that's decided is the tactician. He's in the back. And he doesn't touch anything. And he doesn't touch anything. But one thing that is in photographs is Singapore or uh, Korea. Right now we are watching Team Thailand hiking it out. But if we zoom out of this graphic, Singapore way to the left hand side, Korea way to the right hand side. There's 20 meters now, 25 meters in between them. It looks like Singapore is slowing a little bit down, but when I'm watching the angles of the boat, Korea is sailing f uh, slower than Singapore, but sailing a shorter distance towards the mark. And that's maybe why the stats is making a little fun with us because Singapore looks to be in a very good position right now. Looks like they're going fast, you know. They're bearing away. They're just going a little bit faster, and Korea is trying to uh, trying to head up. They're going in a high mode. The difference between a high mode and a low mode, and we've seen Ukraine all day, low mode, low mode, low mode every day. Yeah. And and when we're coming in now, you're saying high mode and low mode. You need to explain that a little bit more because some of us don't know high mode and low mode that way. So what is high mode? So basically, when you're steering your boat, you can decide, you know say between one and three degrees to be able to, to head up into the wind to get a little bit closer to the wind so you're essentially you're sailing less distance but slower um, as opposed to bearing away so uh, not sailing as close to the wind and then you'd be going a little bit faster you'd be making you'd be sailing a greater distance but you'd be going faster with your boat and going faster with the boat gives you a, a certain advantages. For example, one of the, the, uh, the examples is a boat that's going faster is actually a boat which can actually sort of, the keel will, will be sort of pressing against the water and allows the boat to then pick up those couple degrees. So if you're going fast, you can actually sail closer to the wind. So there's an advantages to going fast. So to make it short, Low mode is when you're t doing a small angle towards the wind, and high mode, a big angle yeah, towards the wind. Yeah, less distance, less speed. Less distance, less speed. The other one is more distance, more speed. Fantastic. And here we can Hell. see it on, 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 if you see on the graphic here, you can see Ukraine doing low mode, sailing shorter distance towards the mark, where K uh, Korea is doing high mode, they are opening more up to sail a little bit faster. Yeah, and that, the difference between that low mode and that high mode is what we call the VMG. Yeah. Maybe you want to explain. Mm -hmm. VMG will come into later because let's go on wa water to uh, Rachel. Let's hear what's happening out there because it looks like they're sailing the same same way all of the boats right now. Yeah, they are. And we are approaching the windward mark, number two. And we're doing it in uh, full speed for the boat, even though the light, the air is a bit lighter than what it was and even up here where usually it's stronger so what i've seen at the gate i think uh, team singapore is not just missing a few kilos but a bit power on the grinder because there are four girls on board which is a great thing but then when you need to you know hoist uh, and drop uh, the kite you need power on those grinders right and i think this is something that it's missing there um while now we're seeing ukraine approaching actually like already tacking and and turning the round the mark um i mean these guys have it all they have uh, they're all very young they're all very powerful they're doing what they're supposed to do and the tactician doesn't uh, doesn't miss uh, a shift so very well done again team ukraine i know it's not job done yet but uh, uh there's a big big margin between them and thailand uh, very impressed about uh, the performance of Team Thailand as well. I mean, they are also young uh, um, to big boat sailing. They're doing another circuit of big boats, but still, it's a first there too. So they're approaching the mark. They, they tacked very far away, very high on the ley line, 
Uh, I don't really know for what reason, yeah. but uh, this is what they did. They just made um, us safe, Rachel. I, I need to stop you because we have a huge battle coming in. Singapore, South Korea coming in. Singapore port side, South Korea coming from starport side. And, and, and now we don't have the picture, so maybe you can say to us what's happening there. It's coming in. We can see it here from behind. Singapore managed to go in front of South Korea. So now it's not open for the taking for Thailand anymore. And interesting if there is a penalty down there or if there's a nut gap. So, R Rachel, what are you seeing there? Yeah, like you said, the Team Singapore squeezed in between uh, Team Korea and the mark, and now they're third. Uh, also remember that the South Korea has a hole in their Jenniker, so, uh, I mean, the downwind for them will be trickier than the upwind for sure. Now, another important moment is the hoisting of those kites. So let's see what they're doing. Let's see. I've just said that Team Singapore is not as powerful, but uh, wow, it was up. It was up in no time, so it's good. It's still not uh, fully blown, but it's, it was up in no time. So very well done. Now, the jeep is a bit in the water. Somebody needs to pick it up or that will slow the boat down. And Team Korea is having big trouble oh, with their oh, kite guys. Oh, 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 big, oh look big, at big that. trouble. Yeah. And let's hope it's yeah. not going to break now. This is now or never. It's it's stuck on the sail. No. Oh, uh, there's a problem with the retrieval line you're seeing down there at the bottom. It looks like there's too much pressure. Maybe there's a knot in the back of the boat, which makes it that the retrieval line is not letting that spinnaker uh, get get um, filled up. Oh, this is uh, this is definitely not good for Korea if they want to catch up with Singapore. You oh, see that right there? That oh, the line is on the wrong side of the. Or is it caught up on the? Uh, oh, what's going on there? Pretty. No, 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 no! It all looks so good for South Korea. And of course, it's right where the hole is. Of course, no, oh, this is terrible. This can end catastrophical and is already they're losing 100 meters already so uh, Singapore the speed back difference in the race right the speed right now for them is 8.4 where rest of them have 9.7 knots of wind speed and you it can looks like see it's, it's stuck on the force there or something yeah. uh, I, I don't really understand what's happening uh, maybe maybe you uh, that jib isn't going down either um, no. is that perhaps part of the problem as well it is. It's like those two sails are stuck together. Oh, it this means that everything opens suddenly up for tomorrow. A slightly mistake. We've been talking about these spinnakers, the, uh, launching them and jibing with them. Yeah, let's take a look here, right here. Look, look, yeah. look. If we're looking at the front sail, it kind of looks like uh, something has been wrapped around the jib. Um, yeah, obviously they know it's game over, and it looks like they're taking it back down uh, in order to hoist it back up. Such a just a small little mistake, and uh, and it's all gone. And it's all done for. There we go. They're bringing the spinnaker back down. They'll try to try to fix it, and uh, and see what happens. And get it up once oh, that's again. Unfortunate. But some teams lose sometimes teams wins and it's all about skills this just makes it more exciting for this group for tomorrow because right now thailand and singapore is going to battling it out for tomorrow who is going to bahrain because thailand is not six points in front of singapore but ukraine has qualified already you can see the drone here while they're battling out so this just makes it more and more exciting for tomorrow. What's going to happen? So this group is not I guess, over yet. I guess it's. I guess you're right. You got to look at the positive side of all this, and the positive side is tomorrow we will have ourselves a battle. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, right now the only ones battling against themselves is Korea, trying to figure out their uh, spinnaker issue. They're just uh, stopped. They're going at five knots right now. Everybody else is at ten. Uh, so yeah, so they're sort of uh, uh, tough to go out like that on the last race of the day, but uh, we still got a race, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at what's happening out in front. Yeah, you can see they're smiling right now uh, here. Team Singapore smiling because they know now it's not over yet. Because of that happened, you can just see how they're smiling and laughing there. It was a small victory for them because now they can actually have a chance on the golden day. 
Yeah, so uh, it's a, a good thing. And, and uh, that move that they made at the windward mark, really, really nice. You saw that coming in from a ways. <laughs> Great maneuvering there, coming up with speed on port side and then rounding the mark there. And I uh, know we have seen them two times at the top marks, rounding it like it was a race car coming in. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, they are light team, but they can also steer this boat quite fast. They can almost spin it on the spot, it looks like. Yeah, and it's pretty impressive how they do that, and then they manage yeah. to, to, you know, to take back off. You would think that they would sort of go a little bit higher and, and sort of uh, turn a little less aggressively, but uh, that's not their style. No, it's not their style, but one thing is for sure, the Ukrainian style is power up, sail as fast as you can, it's speed, 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 and if that means that you don't tag and jive that much, then you don't tag and jive that much. Yeah, and just, you know, uh, just as Rachel was saying uh, earlier, you know, all the guys are young on this team, and uh, so y they've all got, you know, that, that high energy, lots of power, and, um, you know, I'm sure that uh, they're all about going fast, pulling hard, and, and, you know, doing the maneuvers, and it's working out really well for them. I love watching these guys sail downwind. It makes me so happy to see those boats just cruising. And just, you know, catching those waves and uh, they're, they're getting some pretty nice surfs in. Um, yet again, 10.3 knots of speed. Yeah, they're, they're Ukraine hauling. is nailing it. They're powering up. And now we also see Singapore is powering up and Thailand is not powering up. So Singapore only 150 meters behind. And we saw uh, earlier today that 200 meters downwind in a half leg downwind is not enough. So Singapore is not out of this race. No, no, no. They're definitely not out of this race. I mean, if Thailand messes up and has a spinnaker issue, well, <laughs> we're going to see Singapore coming back to the second place. Thailand, remember, they've been going low and slow. Uh, Ukraine high and fast. And it looks like right now Singapore is also in a high mode. Uh, going high and fast. And uh, if they continue like this, they're going to be making a big, big attack on, on Thailand. Yeah, and it looks like Thailand is losing a little bit to Singapore also with the measurements. You can't trust the meters up in the top left corner. You need to look a little bit on the speed and everything. It's just an indicator because it's how close they are towards the finish line. Singapore and Thailand, both of them need to do an extra jive to cross the finish line. Will they do it before they're entering the finish line area or will they do it at the finish line area? That is the question here. But one thing is for sure, Singapore after seeing South Korea with that malfunction yeah. is speeding up. They're taking the yeah, battle to Thailand. Are. Look, and it's unbelievable because really the one in the powerful position right now is Thailand. They're a little bit lower. They could go faster. And it doesn't, it just doesn't look like they are uh, going a little bit faster. Singapore is coming back and attacking them. 700 meters left. Uh, there's only uh, a couple hundred meters left uh, of dif distance between the two. They both still have to jibe. Uh, it's not over. Yeah, 650 meters for Ukraine towards the finish line. One third of the lake back until they're crossing that finish line and can crown themselves winner of this group and qualify to Bahrain even the day before Golden Day. But behind them, the battle Thailand-Singapore keeps giving us something. And I think Thailand might take the second, Singapore the third in this race. But tomorrow, wow, yeah, tomorrow. they will battle for it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty good here. The Guardians of the Bay, Singapore, making a comeback over Chiang Thai, Thailand. Uh, it's not over till it's over. We are on the last leg. Only a couple hundred meters left to be able to, to get to the finish line. We see the final jive for Team Ukraine right now. And uh, it's looking like they're going to be taking their second bullet of the day. Second bullet of the day. And there we see Thailand coming behind them while Ukraine is cruising in. And South Korea is back in the race there behind. But see how close Singapore and Thailand is on each other. It's almost wind shadow time. So if Singapore continues doing this, they can slow down Thailand. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Th Thailand is, is not going to, is going to pass in front of Singapore. I think they're a little bit too far out. 
But uh, it, great to see Singapore come back, uh, you know, and, and because they, they made up quite a lot of distance, uh, Singapore. They were quite far back. Yeah. And here point. we see Team Ukraine, the winner of race number five in the Asian Af Af African group. They are here as guests and they're, they're doing the hard thing, winning this race and also <laughs> qualifying for the finals in Bahrain yeah. one day before <laughs> congratulations and Ukraine congratulations second bullet of the day making them getting themselves qualified for the finals in Bahrain before the golden day yeah and no matter what happens tomorrow they will stay in second position overall except if they are not racing yeah, but we don't see how that could happen. No, 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 no. Always getting disqualified. Here we see Team Thailand. They must also be very happy with this one. Opening up for the qualification for Bahrain. Good, good, getting the best possible position before the Golden Day. And let's see if they are happy there. You can see they're coming in. Yeah, not the same joy, but when they might see the results later on they might be happy of what they've been doing today yeah for sure i mean it, you know at least uh that perhaps they didn't get a win and i'm sure they really wanted to get that win in but you know look you're you're placing twice in second place that is very consistent obviously it'd be better to be twice first but it's still very consistent and uh you know that that's that's a good very good job consistency pays in the end and then we have singapore crossing in third they're not that satisfied, but they're still smiling and happy because they, they won over South Korea up there at the mark. And that's giving them the chance to qualify to Bahrain tomorrow. So it's not over yet. The battle is Thailand-Singapore tomorrow in this group. Yeah, they they had only made one mistake, and that was with their spinnaker. Uh, fortunately for them, the other team made a bigger mistake. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's what led him to, to be able to come back. And then, uh, and then unfortunately for our Team Korea, it was just uh, a little bit too much pressure. And, and then they, they crumpled under the pressure. And that was uh, it, it's unfortunate to see. But hey, you know, that's racing. And there we have the Spinnaker is still alive from Team South Korea coming in over the finish line. And even with that mistake at the top mark, only finishing around 50 seconds behind Singapore and one minute behind Thailand and two minutes and four seconds behind Team Yeah, Ukraine. so that's just really unfortunate. You know, you see that they have the spinnaker there, so it's not an issue of something breaking or a mechanical failure. No, it was just a, a crew mistake. Yeah, just a small crew mistake. But that's how it is. This is how it is sailing. It's teamwork. They're fighting for the nation. They're fighting for everything. And here we are seeing the boats racing in towards uh, Kansong, where the HQ are. Ukraine, Ukraine winning this race with four points. Thailand, three points. Singapore getting two points. South Korea getting one point. And that is giving us an overall score in this group uh, that's coming where Ukraine will be in the lead. Thailand in second, Singapore in third, and Korea in fourth. But we, we need to see that distance in between the points with them. That's quite interesting. If you want to know more about all this, then you can always follow the social medias. You will see a lot of things coming in today and also during the race. You see here, Ukraine 17 points, giving seven points to Singapore. So they are sh sure no matter what happens tomorrow to qualify because Golden Day is double points, eight, six, four, two. So they will always have six points. Uh, two points, so maximum six points in between the leader. Thailand, no. 15. Singapore, 10. So Thailand and Singapore needs to battling out. Singapore needs to go for the victory. And then they need to pressure Thailand to lo lose it. <laughs> and, uh, but with that said, let's see the race replay of this race here.
Wow, what some races we have today. And we have our on-water reporter, Rachel. She's getting ready on the water with uh, Team Ukraine. And they must be very happy down there. Igor is smiling, a big smile. Because uh, you guys are going to Bahrain after winning this one. Yeah, we are happy that uh, two races we are win. It's uh, good for our team. And we now they keep it the leading position in the group. And we are happy, but uh, we must be remember about tomorrow because tomorrow there are twice points, and uh, we are feeling like the for tomorrow must be fighting also the full power. So you want to win until the very last race, but mathematically, if you just finish the race tomorrow, you are already qualified. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we will be see. <laughs> <laughs> who is who here? <laughs> Sorry, I like this one. So as you can see, he's happy, but very grounded. He doesn't want to celebrate too much. He's thinking yeah. a lot about next race. So, uh, I mean, if you say like today, I think you have no problems because today was the perfect day for Team Ukraine. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, the weather is uh, nice. Uh, the wind is uh, was good. Uh, not too much shifting, not too much... Uh, Gusty and uh, every like the you know like uh, we have the like the control by fleet it's it's all it's uh, it, because you know the uh, uh, to win in the race it's very easy to lead in the race much heavier if you start in the back yeah. Yes, that's very fair against towards the other uh, opponents, yes. But tell me, you're very proud of your team. This is such a good team. Yeah, this is the best team of the Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. I mean, it says this is the best and because it's the national team. Yes, yes. So we can't wait to see you tomorrow on the water, Igor. Yeah, see you. Yeah. Fantastic seeing that interview, <laughs> but also hearing Ihor saying, hey, we want to fight all the way. Even if we are qualified, we want to show that we are the strongest. They can actually relax, but they can also fight it home tomorrow. And that's uh, very, very good for them. But they, they're fighting for one big thing. They're fighting for going to the finals in Bahrain. And they're already qualified. So let's see what it feels to come to Bahrain. day we have been having on the waters of Lake Neuchatel here in Kranzong and we are going to have another day tomorrow we're going to have the golden day so let's see what the race schedule is for tomorrow and Jan what we're coming up with us well you see uh, tomorrow is going to be a race uh, number six for both of these groups uh, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, to seeing some uh, battles out there remember uh, today we started off the day with about uh, 12 to 16 knots tomorrow we expect even more wind even more wind so remember to follow us on the social medias there's a battle tomorrow where we will see india f trying to fight against malaysia for getting the last button for bahrain then we will have a U uh, thailand fighting against Singapore for the last spot for Bahrain. So everything is for the taking. And with all this said, Jan, it's been a beautiful day. And thank you for, uh, for being here in studio with me. And also thank you for all of you watching us. Yeah, thank you, everybody, uh, wherever you're watching uh, from all across the world. Uh, thank you for joining us. Remember, you can always check out all of our social uh, media uh, inf information. And remember to go check out the, the global ranking. Come back tomorrow. It's going to be the golden day. We're going to have more wind. We're going to have more action. It's going to be crazy. And this was Thomas Bianlucci and Jan Dorset saying goodbye to you and looking forward to see you live with us tomorrow. Just enjoy this race replay of today's racing.
for main engine start. We have main engine start. Four.